The meeting of the Committee of Public Accounts is called to order. On the part of the Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability, this meeting is called to order. May I request everyone to please rise for our short prayer. We offer this prayer, our dear Lord, for the reposal of our dear friend and comrade, Congressman Jun Datol. Congressman Jun Datol has been very active in all our committee hearings, even during COVID, especially that of the Public Accounts and Good Government Committee, and also of the Committee of Health. During COVID, Congressman Datol has been going around giving support and assistance to our senior citizens, providing them with uh, vitamins, alcohol, food, and face masks. And uh, in many occasions, we have individually warned Congressman Datol that because of his age, this might affect him. And so this committee hearing, and uh, to all our colleagues who are here right now, we offer this to him, and we pray, dear Lord, that you guide us, that we will be able to thresh out what is good for our country and what is good for our people. We ask this to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please rise for our national anthem. Thank you and good morning to everyone. Before we start, let me just recognize the senior uh, vice chairman and our senior majority deputy leader, the Honorable Boeing Rimulia, who's here with us on the floor. Let me also recognize our deputy speaker, Dan Fernandez. May I now request the committee secretary to recognize uh, the members of uh, the committees of public accountability, public accounts, and the committee members of the Committee on Good Government Public Accountability who are in Zoom. So directed, Gomsek. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, via Zoom uh, are the following uh, members of both committees. Uh, the Honorable Ted Aresco, the Honorable uh, Elpidio Barzaga, the Honorable Carlos Zarate, Honorable uh, Enrico Pineda, Honorable Sol Aragones, the Honorable Stella Kimbo, the Honorable uh, Maricel Nagano, uh, the Honorable uh, Gabriel Bordado, the Honorable Crispin, I'm sorry, the Honorable uh, Bolilia, Honorable Robert Ace Barbers, uh, Honorable Janet Garin, Honorable Coco Nograles, Honorable uh, Lollipop uh, Juan Odizon, and uh, the Honorable Franz Castro and uh, the Honorable Benny Abante. And also uh, the Honorable Marcoleta, Your Honor. Maraming salamat, Komsek. Uh, Kumari din pong kilalanin ang mga guests po natin ngayon na nasa plenary at yung ating pong guests na nasa Zoom. Komsek. Uh, Your Honor, joining us uh, in plenary are the following resource uh, persons. Uh, and uh, in... Uh, sir, uh, via Zoom. Uh, the representative of uh, DOH and uh, 
a representative from Department of uh, Justice. We also have uh, Administrator Hans Leo Kakdak from OWA. We have uh, President Morales from the PhilHealth. We have uh, Executive Vice President uh, Arnel De Jesus from PhilHealth uh, via Zoom. And uh, uh, Brigadier General Augustus De Villa, uh, Renato Limsiaco, Dennis Mas, Attorney Rodolfo Del Rosario Jr., Israel Francis Pargas, Nerisa Santiago, Rustico Jimenez from the Private Hospital Association of the Philippines, and uh, Commissioner Michael P. Cloribel from Governance Commission. Uh, we have a representative from the Department of Budget and Management. We also have a representative from the COA and uh, Dr. Jaime Almora from the Philippine Hospital Association, represented by Dr. B. Castro. We have a regional director of the NBI, Olivo Ramos, and uh, Vernon Firmalino, an investigator from the NBI. Your Honor. Maraming salamat. Uh, una po sa lahat, nais ko po lang pong ilinaw na... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Comsec. Can you recognize the, our guest in plenary? And uh, joining us in plenary, Your Honor, we have uh, Vita Limsiaco. Uh, Nerisa Santiago. Um, Maria Graziela Gonzaga. Uh, Mr. Ruben Padua, uh, Dennis Mas, and uh, Mr. Uh, Calixto. That's all your honor. Uh, maraming salamat. Uh, una po sa lahat, nais ko lang hong uh, ilinaw na ang committee hearing po na ito ay hindi na lang po sa committee ng public accounts kundi po pumasok na rin po ang Committee on uh, Good Government and Public Accountability sa kadahilanan na titingnan na po ang kabuang problema sa ating pong sektor na pangkalusugan. And so, in so doing, we do not only tackle the uh, operations of the government offices and agencies, pero naging involved na rin po ito ng private sector. Uh, pangalawa ho, uh, just so that the members of the committee, both of the public accounts, and the Good Government Public Accountability para po magkaroon ng ayos yung ating pag-uusap, isa-isahin po natin yung topic na ating i-discuss. Ang una po, dahil nasimulan na rin po naman natin to, ay yung all-case rate na pag-uusap. And in relation dun sa all-case rate, ay yung pong pag-uusap sa interim reimbursement mechanism. Pangatlo ho, at konektado rin po sa finance, uh, yung mismong kabuang Philhet Finance. This was asked by the Honorable Kimbo the last time. No? So, idikit-dikit po natin yon At yung mga lumabas na issue, pang-apat, yung computerization. Uh, pang-lima, yung OFW contribution. Pang-anim, yung testing. At pang-pito, kung sakasakali ho, yung mga maghahalo na rin po to with the all-case rate, ay yung mga hospitals, no? particular na mga issue sa mga hospitals at yung nakikita problema sa all-case rate. So, uh, with that, uh, we will uh, proceed with the discussion, but may I ask uh, the Honorable Rimulia, as regards the disposition of this investigation, ano po ba ang kahalagahan ng investigasyon natin na alam naman po natin kahapon nagkaroon ng hearing ang Senado at patuloy na rin po na nagkakaroon ng hearing ang ating eksekutibo. So, may recognize the Honorable Rimulia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Marami ho nagtatanong kung bakit kailangan pa ng House of Representatives na mag-imbestiga ng PhilHealth gayon man na ando na ang Senado at ando na ang DOJ na nag imbestiga ng mga problema ng PhilHealth. Ngayon, ang humaharap po sa inyo ngayon ay dalawang komite. Ang komite on public accounts na ang tinitingin niya po ang pananalapi ng ating bayan at ang mga pananalapi, pananalapi na kinakailangan bantayan sapagat ito po'y nanggagaling sa taong bayan. At ang pangalawa pong komite na humahinaharap nyo ngayon 
ay ang Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability na siya ring Blue, uh, House Blue Ribbon Committee. May investigasyon na nga ang DOJ, maaari pong mag-investiga rin ang ombudsman, maaari pong ituloy-tuloy ng COA ang kanyang pag-audit, ngunit mahalaga sa proses po ng uh, paggawa ng batas. Uh, pag tayo po ay gumagawa ng batas, ay ang investigasyon po ay mahalaga. Dalawa po ang sangay ng ating legislative department. Meron po tayong Senado at meron po tayong House of Representatives. At ang perspective po na nanggagaling sa Senado ay kakaiba sa perspective na nanggagaling sa House of Representatives. At alam natin sa, na sa bicameral legislature, kinakailangan po magkasundo pareho ang House at Senate para magkaroon ng batas na kalalabasan ang kahit na anong investigasyon. Kaya hindi po ito superfluity, hindi po ito sobra-sobra ng nagpapatong-patong na investigasyon sapagat iba-ibang perspektibo po nang gagaling ang mga tanong namin. Ang abiso lang namin sa aming mga miyembro ay panoorin din po ang Senate hearings at panoorin at uh, alamin din ang ginagawa ng DOJ para alam natin ang lahat ng kinikilos ng lahat ng ahensya nang maging kompleto ang pagtingin sa lahat ng mga bagay-bagay na maaring sumambulat sa lahat ng mga investigasyon. Kaya kung tatanungin po kung bakit sabay-sabay nag-iimbestiga ang ibang, ibang sangay ng gobyerno, marahil ang pinakamagandang sagot dito, ang bawat Pilipino ay miyembro ng PhilHealth. At dapat lang na ang lahat na maaaring magbantay sa kabanambayan ay magbantay na at magtanong na mga kinakailangan itanong upang matapos ang mga alinlangan natin sa ating PhilHealth. Kasi marami hong lumabas na hindi ka nais-nais na balita na ngayon dapat po magkaroon tayo ng closure at uh, magkaroon po tayo ng solusyon para sa kinabukasan ng PhilHealth at sa kinabukasan ng ating health policy sa Republika ng Pilipinas. Yun po ang dahilan kung bakit ang iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno ay maaari pong mag-imbestiga nang hindi naman nagpapatong pa. Kahit na sinasabi nagpapatong-patong, ay iba't iba ang pinanggagalingan naming lahat. Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat, uh, Senior Vice Chairman, our Senior uh, Deputy Majority for our Leader, Congressman Boeing Rimulia. Uh, the Honorable Fernandez, I'd like to yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you so much. And I uh, totally agree with uh, Congressman Rimulia. And at the same time, uh, I agree with the Chair that we categorize the different issues that we're going to tackle today precisely because um, mahirap pong uh, pagsamasamahin yung mga issues and uh, by doing this, we will be able to tackle uh, each and every issue uh, with, cer with uh, certainty. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I sana po ay uh, pakinggan din po natin yung mga presentation ng ating mga resource speakers for today. Ilangan po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Honorable Limulia. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, meron lang ako bago tayo magsimula sa iba't ibang mga katanungan na lalabas po sa investigasyon na ito. Nais ko lang po linawin muna yung isang bagay na bumabagabag sa akin. Andito ho si Nerisa Santiago, Senior Vice President. Kayo po ay naglabas ng, uh, ng isang statement na sabi nyo ang actuarial life ng PhilHealth ay maari isang taon na lang lamang. May di ba hong pakilinaw ito at ipaliwanag sa amin? kung bakit nyo po nasabi ito sapagkat ito po ay nakakagambala at maaari pong uh, matapos po ang usapin na ito bago tayo magsimula. Go ahead. Feel as recognized. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, um, uh, Mr. Um, House Speaker and uh, the rest of the honorable members of the House. Um, regarding po dun sa one year na lang po, at actually it's based on assumptions po projections. That means uh, uh, tinitingnan po natin kung ano po yung probable na papasok na pera at ilalabas natin na pera. So, for this year, we have an actual uh, uh, figures as of June na mapagbabasyan po natin ng actual na pumasok na pera although yung benefits hindi pa rin po actual kasi we have given uh, the hospitals 120 days to submit their claims 
instead of the usual 60 days po. So kung halimbawa po na hospital lang Marso, uh, mabibigay pa po yan uh, uh, four months after. Meron po silang four months to submit yung claims. Kaya po hindi po ganun kadami yung aming basis for the benefit payouts. So, yun po, uh, bali yung uh, projection po na one year is yung papasok po na pera. Uh, so, yun po yung collection na manggagaling sa indirect, which is the subsidy coming from the government for the premiums of the indirect contributors. And yun pong sa direct contributors na collection na manggagaling po sa kanila. So, dalawa po yung panggagalingan natin. Um, so, for 2020 po, um, na kita po namin na for um, April, May, June, bumaba po ang ating collection because of the slowdown of the economy. So, yun po yung pinagbasihan natin for the rest of the year, average po nung, um, nung marireceive natin. So, uh, for the direct muna po, uh, we expect na yun sa government, we will still get what, uh, as an employer, we will still get yung ano kasi hindi naman po sila kumbaga ang gobyerno naman po tuloy-tuloy po po yung bayad so on the on the employed uh, private uh, employed sector ito po yung merong mga nagsara may mga na lay off may mga na retrench at hindi na makatrabaho so yun po yung dahilan kung bakit bababa yung po sa in, sa informal naman po ito naman po yung individually paying so uh, Kung makakabayad po sila, magbabayad sila. So kung wala po silang trabaho, hindi po sila magbabayad. So um, basically, yung pong pasok ng pera, bumaba po for 2020. And for the uh, benefit payout naman po, yung paglabas ng pera for 2020, because of the COVID uh, pandemic, we expect a higher benefit payout. Kasama po dito yung COVID inpatient at saka COVID testing. So... Dahil po, dalawa po yung side na naapektuhan, bumaba ang collection at tumaas ang, ang, um, ang uh, benefit payout for 2020, uh, kakain po to sa reserve fund. Ibig deficit sabihin, may so? deficit po tayo between benefits and collection. Mas okay. mataas po yung benefit payouts natin kesa sa collection. Eso yung so? uh, Honorable Rimunya, Ay, if uh, you recall, dun sa pag-usap natin, kung papayag po kayo, uh, we go to the all case rate ah, okay. uh, and then we proceed to IRM and then ito pong finance that you are asking now. Ano, itutuloy ko sa case rate to pagkatapos. That's the next question ko sa case rate na po. Okay. Uh, okay. Just, just so the, the members are uh, clarified, uh, Honorable Limulia, after you, uh, the Honorable Sarate, Barbers, uh, Marcoleta, and Kimbo will be uh, doing their interpolation. Go ahead, continue. Tuloy niyo po yung sagot niya. Tapos, uh, ano? Uh, pagdating po sa 2021, uh, dahil po meron po tayong recession in 2020, na expect po natin na even in 2021, bababa po yung ating collection. So, may in-expect po kami. Ang in po namin doon is uh, a decrease of to about 25% in the direct... Uh, 25% decrease in terms of direct contributors. Pagdating po sa indirect, uh, we have proposed to the to DBM uh, na 138 po sana, 138 billion ang i-allot sa amin sa GAA for 2021. Uh, kaya lang po na we got advice na they will only give us 71 billion na pareho po siya nitong 2020. So, in that aspect po, mababa po yung makukuha natin na collection in 2021. So, Ms. Santiago, you're, you're a practicing act, act, actuary? Apo. So, you're a math major? Ma yes. Math, math talaga ang... Rin. Yes po. So, pagdating po dito, so let's go to the case rates, no, Mr. Chairman. So, if I may begin. No? Um, how many cases does PhilHealth recognize all case rates. Uh, anybody? Mr. Pargas. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Congressman. Yes, sir. We have around more than 4,000 cases for the medical uh, illnesses and for the surgical uh, procedures, we have more than 4,000 uh, case rates also, sir. 
Uh, you mean uh, 4,000 types of case rates? Yes, sir. Uh, ano ho ang pinakamaraming case rate na binabayaran ng all case rate na binabayaran ng PhilHealth sa ngayon? Uh, give me the top five or top six case rates, all case rates that PhilHealth has paid. Mr. Chairman, uh, if I may, point of order. Uh, did we, yes, go ahead. Uh, um, I move that we uh, take the oath of all the uh, resource uh, speakers oath for today's uh, hearing. Thank you for that, uh, Honorable Fernandez. Uh, with the indulgence of our guests, those who are here and those in Zoom, uh, may we request you to uh, take your oath before you, uh, before we continue with our interpolation. The committee secretary is directed, uh, the Honorable uh, uh, Comsec Marivic, uh, kindly swear in our guest. So ordered. Please stand and raise your hand, right hand. This also applies to those uh, resource persons part participating via Zoom. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this hearing? So help you, God. Thank you. Thank you. salamat. Honorable Rimulia, kindly continue. Uh, the reply on the question of the Honorable Rimulia. Yes, ano yung anim na pinakamatataas na binab... Oh, nang ganyan pito na. Pinakamatataas na binabayaran ng fair health sa all case rate and corresponding amount for the year 2018. Para may sample lang ho tayo sa isang taon. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, sir, the data I have here is for 2019. If it's, oh, sige, 2019. Oh. Uh, for the medical case rates by claims count po, the uh, number one is community acquired pneumonia, number two is dengue, number three is, uh, this is the dengue uh, hemorrhagic fever with warning signs, the number three is UTI, the number four is acute gastroenteritis, the number five is still dengue without the warning signs. This is the dengue one. Then we have the bacterial sepsis of the newborn unspecified. Uh, then number seven is bronchial asthma in acute exacerbation. Number eight is hypertension, stage two. Number one is essential hypertension. And the last is acute gastroenteritis. For the procedures by claims count, it is hemodialysis. Number two is... Uh, uh, obstetric care, this is the normal spontaneous delivery, the newborn care package, then the expanded newborn care package, we have the routine obstetric, which is in the non-hospital facility, cesarean uh, delivery primary, the vaginal delivery with uh, episiotomy, then the chemotherapy, cesarean, and then the cataract as number 10. For the amount, sir, um, for 2019, For 2019, the uh, dialysis procedure is around 10 billion. The uh, uh, obstetric normal spontaneous delivery in hospitals is 2.4 billion. The newborn care package is around 722 million. The expanded newborn is at 1.1 uh, 1 billion. Those in the maternity care package at 2.3, this is in the non-hospital facility. Cesarean for primary is 3.5. Uh, vaginal delivery only at 1.3, then chemo at 943, cesarean delivery at 2.2, and uh, um, uh, for the cataract removal, it's 1.6 billion. For Dr. pneumonia... Pargas, taka, sandali, sandali, Dr. Pargas, sa lahat ng ito, nag-withhold ba ang fair health ng, ng taxes para sa mga doctor's fees? Ang ating pong withholding tax ay uh, naka-charge po sa hospitals at ang sa professionals professional fee naman po ang mga hospitals po ang nag uh, dededuct ng withholding tax because the case rate as it is it is uh, provided and paid to the hospital as a whole package po. It is the hospital who brings or who gives the payment to the professionals. So pagdating po sa sabihin natin no uh, pneumonia, maraming klaseng pneumonia po, di ba? May moderate, mayroong mild, tsaka mayroong severe. Tama ba yun? Yes po. Uh, ang, ang inyong mild pneumonia, 44,000 ang package. Uh, Mr. President, I, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, 
Ah, yun pong sa mild, moderate, and pneumonia. Ah, mild, moderate, severe, and critical is for the COVID packages. But prior to the COVID, we have two for the pneumonia. The pneumonia for moderate risk and the pneumonia for the severe. The mild pneumonia as considered prior to the COVID is not being paid as an inpatient. Rather, it is part of our primary care benefit package. So, so magkano yun? Magkano ang all case rate nyo sa mild pneumonia? 44,000? Well, uh, for be, before the COVID po, wala po tayong case rate for the mild pneumonia. It is being paid or part of the primary care benefit Dr. or the Vargas, outpatient. Dr. Vargas, you have two. The acquired pneumonia, which is 15,000, at saka yung uh, severe, severe pneumonia, which is 32,000. Yes, that is prior to COVID po. Nung dumabas po yung COVID, uh, because the main uh, condition then being attributed to the COVID as part of the presentation is the pneumonia. So yung pong naging package for the COVID with mild pneumonia po is at 43,000. Yun naman po nga for the moderate is at 130 plus thousand. Yun pong for the severe, it's at around 300 plus. And yun pong sa uh, critical is around 700 plus thousand. How did you arrive at these amounts, Dr. Fargas? Uh, Dr. Fargas. Uh, when the uh, pneumonia, uh, when the COVID started, uh, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Congressman, Chairman. when the uh, pneumonia, when the COVID started, po, uh, there were no uh, uh, standard, there were no clinical guidelines then because the the guidelines po are developing and every day the signs and symptoms are uh, changing. So what we did po to come up with the uh, packages for the COVID uh, pneumonia is we ask from one, the data from the itemized billing charges from the hospitals who already had pneumonia cases then because we don't have any uh, experience on the COVID. Then we had uh, based our management or treatment guidelines with those which are being uh, uh, established by the PISMID or the Philippine Society of uh, Microbiology and Infectious Diseases and all the protocols that are coming out with the DOH. So technically the input po for the prices or the costs uh, as we costed it are coming from the itemized billing charges of the hospital. So ano yung ano? I-itemize nyo nga sa amin kung paano nyo, paano dumating ang 44,000? What, paano ho dumating sa 44,000 yan? Magkano ang, pro, ang fees? Magkano po ang gamot? Magkano po ang kwarto? Magkano po ang... Ano po yung ano, breakdown niyan? 44,000. Honorable Limulia, while the PhilHealth is preparing the presentation on how they arrive, kung paano nila nakuha yung bawat presyo dito sa COVID, uh, meron sana akong presentation on the ACR. Maring kung... Pero madami-dami siyang slides. Pero these are all official slides. Na ma, if you want, I'll present it and then... Kun, kun, uh, Just finish this question, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Vargas. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Uh, Congressman, yes, sir. Uh, we had a third party, uh, the Palladium of the USAID, who actually helped us with the coming out of the uh, packages. This would include, again, the uh, accommodation, the drugs and medicines, the supplies, the PPEs, and the diagnostics, which are then... Uh, costed and uh, the amounts or almost the median range of these uh, uh, cases uh, came out as as the package for the same rate by yan, dr pargas same rate by yan sa public hospital as a yes. private hospital yes uh, mr president uh, mr congressman yes po uh, we have the same amount for public uh, and of course the go private hospitals yes sir so um so 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 all case rate mr pargas Ilang percent ang binabayad ng PhilHealth comparatively sa private sector, sa public hospitals, at ilang percent ang binabayad sa private hospitals? Uh, anybody from PhilHealth, baka may sagot na kayong ready dyan. Ilang percent nagpupunta sa private hospital, ilang percent nagpupunta sa public hospital? Uh, 
Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Congressman. Uh, based on the 2019 data, we paid 58% of the total uh, claims payment to private and 42% to government. That is uh, all case rates, lahat lahat yan. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. 58 to 42 ang lumalabas na ratio. So, mas maraming private kayong binabayaran kaysa sa public. Ang COVID testing is in the all case rating yan, di ba? COVID testing. Mr. President, Mr. Uh, Congressman, yes po. We pay po case-based payments also in uh, COVID. Magkano ho ang testing ng COVID sa all case rate ng, um, ng ano, PhilHealth? Mr. President, Mr. Congressman, the uh, uh, testing package po natin for uh, all services is at 3,409. For if the kits are actually uh, donated, if the testing kits are donated, we pay 2,077. And if all the services, including the kits, are actually provided, uh, or included already in the budget of the facility, we are paying around 900 pesos only. Pero yan, binago nyo yan. Ano ang initial na inalaw na fair health para sa cost ng COVID testing? Yes po. The initial uh, case rate or case uh, packages for the uh, testing, for all services being provided, it's at 8,150. Uh, for the uh, donated kits, it's at 5,000 plus. But for the, uh, if again, the, the, the third case, which is the donated and all the services are included in the budget, it is around 2,000 plus, sir. So, nagbago yung rate? Yes, sir. Bakit nagbago yung rate? Ano nagyari at binago niyo yung rate? Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Uh, Congressman, Please address yes? Mr. Chairman na lang. Okay. Mr. Chairman na lang, kasi Mr. President is for, for oh, the sorry, Senate. Sir. No? Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, yes, sir. Uh, when we did the initial uh, uh, costing uh, for the packages of the testing kit, again together with a third party, uh, we only had very limited sources of data then, especially uh, konting konti pa lang po yung merong uh, accredited facility at the same time, uh, konting konti pa rin lang po yung merong mga uh, uh, testing kits available then. Oh, then, then Mr. Pargas. How long, ilan ang binayaran nyo ng 8,000 pesos para sa COVID testing? And kanino nyo binayad yung 8,000 pesos na yun? Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chair, for a while. Go ahead. Kailan nagsimula itong nagpagbabago ng rates? Magkano ang binayad nyo sa 8,000 pesos sa isang COVID test? I'd like to recognize the arrival of the President of the NUP, the Honorable P.D. Barsaga, who's here with us. Uh, for the COVID, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, for the COVID-19 testing kits, uh, before the June 25, uh, the total number of claims that we have is at around 12,000, and the total paid claims is around 2,181, uh, and we paid around 9,863,000. For the COVID testing naman po, after the June 25, we have a total number of 38 claims so far, and still, it is not paid and still unprocessed. That is as of July 31. Mr. Pargas, meron ba kayong ano, time limit sa COVID test? Uh, kasi ang, ang COVID uh, test is only re really good for two days. On the third day, wala na siyang silbe kasi wala yung, wala yung information. Diba? Information is the key to COVID, di ba? How long, meron ba kayong timetable na dapat ilabas ang test within a certain period of time? Para ito ay bayaran ng field health. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, wala po kaming uh, 
with regard to those uh, protocols and guidelines, it is under the DOH po. Uh, our uh, our uh, particular function with regard to the testing is actually for the reimbursement for the for the. Pero di ba, you can also put in your own policy as to the effect, efficacy of any procedure. Meron kayo mga iba-ibang departments, di ba? Napaka-top heavy nga ng field health eh. Pag sinabi nyo, di ba, kung alam nyo, ang mawa, sabihin natin, yung isang, isang COVID test, 15 days walang resulta. Lumabas ang resulta on the 16th day. Ito ba, babayaran nyo pa rin ang full ito? Yes, Mr. Chair, because the, the currently what we follow as a guideline, kung sino po yung babayada namin, is the department order, uh, the department memorandum of the DOH of who, was, who are going to be uh, uh, tested. Pero with regard po to the protocol on kung kailan lalabas yung mga resulta, kung gaano po kabilis yung resulta, uh, hindi po kami ang nag-regulate on that. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm asking that question because it's useless for field health to be paying for tests where the result comes out very late in the day. Because these tests have no more value. Nobody is supposed to be reimbursed for a, some, for a service that never really helped the person. Eh, sa ganitong, ano, sa ganitong usapin, eh, para naman nakaka... Parang hindi na ho na bayad tayo ng bayad, kahit na hindi na ho, paso na yung test kung tutuusin eh. Dalawang linggo bago lumabas. Di ba ho, parang wala naman hong visa na yun, Mr. Chairman. Yes. With the, uh, yung dumbo sa puntos na ni-raise ni Honorable Remulia, ang pagkakalam ko, meron na po kayong isang billion for reimbursement na submitted po sa inyo. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I think the one billion that was stated uh, I think by, uh, by uh, yeah, was on the liquidation with regard to the IRM. Yes, pero kasama doon sa IRM nung liquidation, yung COVID testing, about uh, 300 to 400 million, if I'm not mistaken. Yun, opo. Uh, yun po kasing ating pag, uh, Mr. Chair, yun pong ating po kasing pag-process, uh, especially ng liquidation, pagdating po sa IRM, yun po ay nakacharge doon po sa lahat ng claims na pumapasok po sa no, no. health. All I'm saying, Mr. Vargas, is that yung binabanggit ni Honorable uh, Remulia, submit nyo sa amin yung liquidation ng isang billion which includes actual uh, persons na yung mga tao na nagkasakit ng COVID at saka yung testing nandun din yan. Yes. So can you can kindly submit the liquidation ng isang billion dahil yung pala nga nakikita natin sa ngayon sa 30 billion o 30 billion ang binigay ninyong pondo sa mga ospital ay 14 billion. Sa 14 billion may isang billion na na-liquidate. Yun ang para makita ni Honorable uh, Rimulya kung saan napunta yung mga yan at sinong gumamit ng mga ospital bukod dun sa nagkasakit at nagpa-testing. Honorable Barsaga? Yes, just follow up lang for clarification. Pag nagbigay kayo ng IRM sa isang ospital na nag-treat-treat ng COVID patients, yung IRM na binigay nyo, pwede nilang i-charge for COVID and non-COVID sickness. Just to clarify Meaning to say, sa isang hospital, nag-treat ng COVID patient at the same time continuous ang kanilang pag-treat sa mga nanganganak, etc., etc., they can always charge that to IRM. Tama po ba? Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, opo, uh, one, the IRM po... Okay na po. Hindi Basta... na, okay na yun, okay oh. na yun. We will discuss the IRM later on. Kinaklarify labang natin so that yung mga kababayan natin, pati na yung healthcare institution at mga kawani nila ay hindi magkaroon ng misimpression na IRM can be charged only for COVID patients. Even non-COVID patients, as long as they are confined in a healthcare institution, they can claim the pill health. Tama po ba? Okay, thank you. Okay, so an inulit ko po, no? ang discussion natin ngayon, papasok po tayo sa all case rate. Mamaya po, papag-usapan natin yung interim reimbursement mechanism. Kasama po dyan yung uh, finance, na natanong na rin ng, may katanungan rin si Honorable Rimulia. 
Tapos yung computerization, OFW contribution, and COVID testing, kung sakasakaling babalik tayo sa tanong na yun. Doon naman rin niya? Ano na lang muna, Mr. Chairman? Um, isa na lang, no? itong sakatarak na lang. Yung well-met controversy, Mr. Pargas, you're very well aware of that. Yes, Mr. Chair. Magkano yun na uh, involved doon sa well-met controversy? Around, uh, Mr. Chair, around 800,000. 800,000 pesos? I'll confirm. Yes. Yes. Ms. Santiago, kayo na sumagot. Ano yung sinasabi niyo? Um, as far as I can recall po, ang nakita po na, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, na ghost patients, ang na-validate po na ghost patient na walang uh, na, na, ano na, na died, uh, dead na, Patay is na, about 800,000. About 800,000 po. 800,000? Opo. Yung na-validate po na namatay, patay na, pero nagka-claim, nakaka-claim. 800,000 pesos yung claim? Apo. Total, total na po yun. Total claim? Uh, bali, ma, hindi ko lang po alam po ilan yung claims nito, pero yung pong na-validate na patay na, uh, mga sampu po yata, na, mga 800,000. Mga something like 40 sessions, 40 to, ilang sessions yun? Uh, ito uh, na ako po i-verify. 160 sessions? Ma, less in total po, apo, less than 160, yes. Well, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, I will reserve my other questions for later. Uh, I would like to give the give back the floor to you. Thank, Thank you, you Honorable Limulia. Sige po, para po sa guidance ng ating, ah, yes, Honorable Barsaga. Just a follow-up to the well-made case. I have read from newspaper accounts na abas ako sa mga pahayagan na yung well-made case ay na-dismissed sa Quezon City Regional Trial Court. Ang tanong ko lang, ano ang status ngayon? Did you refile the case considering that the dismissal was made way back in 2019? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, I think uh, our legal can answer that. Legal is recognized. May we know... Uh, if we have the attorney del Rosario ba, ang legal natin? General Morales, nandiyan po ba kayo sa Zoom? alam dito sa floor kung meron po nakakalam dito sa atin tungkol doon sa Philhealth case at any rate uh, honorable barsaga may we ask them to answer later on when yes, we sir. have already them or we, we when we already them. have them in zoom sige po uh, sa lahat po ng mga kasama natin dito and i hope general morales is also here magkakaroon lang po ta ako ng maliit na presentasyon Alam niyo ho yung pinag-uusapan na mafia at para ho sa guidance na rin ng mga kasama natin sa komite. Uh, makikita niyo po to sa inyo na rin mga ginawang pag-aaral ng COA at dun sa mga pulisiya na nanggaling sa PhilHealth. Nakakalungkot pong isipin na patuloy taon-taon magmula 2013 hanggang sa ngayon, bilyong-bilyong piso ang nawawala at nakikita po to ng inyong mga opisyalis. Kaya po ko sinabing mafia to dahil mamaya papaliwanag ko rin yung relasyon ng bawat ospital at doon po sa nangyayaring pagpondo magmula sa ating PhilHealth. If I may uh, request the... Mabilis lang po to pero ito po yung mga official na dokumento galing sa Commission of, on Audit. Next slide. 2013, ang sinabi po sa inyo, kasi tandaan po natin, Ang COA reports ninyo or ang COA findings ninyo, random check po yan eh. 3,500 a day ang inyong pinoproseso. Kaya talagang napakarami at hindi kakayanin na COA na i-check ang lahat ng dokumento sa ilalim ng fillet. Anong sabi po, po sa inyo 2013? The validity of benefit payments amounting to 721 million in nine fillet regional offices could not be ascertained due to the absence of billing statements from healthcare providers. Next slide. 
post-audit of the benefit claims of nine uh, field health regional offices, particularly on case rates and no balance billing, revealed that claims totaling 729 million were processed, pinroseso at binayaran ng field health, kahit walang statement of account, kahit walang billing. Ito po'y 2013. The actual amount of benefit payments granted to member patients and dependents. Next slide. Itong po ang mga lugar na chinek nila. Region 1, 3, 9, 10, 12, 13, arm and car. 729 million. Next slide, please. Sabi po 2013 pa rin, our audit of benefit claims filed by healthcare providers, either doctor or hospital, by PhilHealth under the new PhilHealth case rate system showed that the healthcare providers were reimbursed the maximum allowable amount of case rates. At lumalabas po dito yung 46,164,000. Mas mababa ang lumalabas na billing kesa doon po sa mismong binayaran ng PhilHealth. So noong 2014, ano po yung naging problema natin? Next slide please. Ang binayaran ninyo na claimants, number one po dyan, pneumonia na. Pneumonia 1, 495,000. Acute gastroenteritis, 337,000. Newborn care package, 299,000. Ito po, galing daman po sa inyo. So noon pa lang, nakikita nyo na na ang pneumonia tumataas na at 495,000. Next slide. Ito po yung mga surgical case rates ninyo. Ano pong pinakamataas dyan? 929,000 cases dialysis. Next slide, please. Nung 2014, chinek po ng COA. Ito po yung COA reports po to, no? Region 6. Ang sinabi niya, ni-reimburse ninyo ng full amount ang case rates. Region 1, yun din po ang sinabi niya. 1.691 million in 178 audited benefit claim samples could not be validated dahil hindi po ninyo pinapasubmit ng statement of accounts. Region 9, guidelines for the filing and reimbursement of case rates claim lack the necessary documentation and internal control. So ito po yung 2014. Ano po nangyari in 2014? Next slide please. Ito po yung cataract scandal. Magugulat po kayo no 2014, 700 million sa NCR pa lang ang uh, ginastos ng PhilHealth sa Katarata. So ang ibig sabihin no, pag nakita niyo may ganitong problema, tumataas ang bayad, makikita ka agad ng finance kung anong nangyayari. Dahil ang mga regional offices, nagsasubmit sa finance, central office, kung ano yung dapat bayaran. Next slide. Noong 2014 po, pang-apat sa pinakamataas ang katarata. Ang binayaran po ninyo dyan ay 3.7 billion. At hanggang sa ang filial case rate po, case rate din po yan, 16,000 bawat mata. Yung 16,000, isang mata lang po yan. Pagka nagpakatarata ka, nagpatanggal ka ng dalawang mata, 32,000. Ang sabi ng investigasyon noong panahon na yan, Ang binibigay doon sa nagpapadala, dalawang libo ang kanyang balato. At doon sa eye center naman, binibigyan siya ng anim na libo, tatlong daan. Next slide. So ito po yung 2014 nyo, lumabas na yung cataract removal at 2, bi uh, 2 billion pesos lumabas to 2014. Dialysis pa rin ninyo at 4,000. Kung titingnan niyo po yung dialysis ninyo, yung po yung nasa presyo niyo pa ata yan ng 4,500 ang case rate na ibinaba ninyo sa 2,500 uh, nitong uh, kailan lamang na 2016. Next slide. Eto na ho, 2014, nag 7.6 billion na kayo sa pneumonia. Yan po ang nauunan yung kaso. Yung gastroenteritis, 1. Uh, I'm sorry, yung UTI, 1.5 billion, 
at gastroenteritis ay 1.3 billion. Next slide, please. 2015, again, sabi ng COA, report niya to, ang chinek naman niya, NCR at Rizal. Ang sinabi niya, doon sa kataratan ninyo ay hindi nagkakaroon ng prior review. So ito yung review ng 2014, lumabas ng 2015. Pagkatapos, ang sinasabi niya dito na maraming reimbursement not supported with complete document documentation at hindi at ito'y maaring pumasok sa lease allowance. <clears throat> 2015 ulit, next slide. Yung pong 93% or 26 na in-interview tungkol dito sa Katarata Operations. Ang sinasabi, mahaba yung kanilang paghihintay, hindi maganda yung nangyari sa kanila, uh, at merong recruitment scheme. Ito yung recruitment scheme noong araw na binatikos na rin noong 2014. So pasok po tayo, 2015, report nyo po to. Next slide. Umakit na po ang ating community, community acquired pneumonia at 9.7 billion pesos. Acute gastroenteritis, 2.1 billion. Urinary tract infection, 2.1 billion. Next slide. Pagdating po sa mga procedure, ang pinakamalaking binayaran ay dialysis, pero pansin niyo ho, nag anim na bilyong kagad. Ang laki ng itinulon ng dialysis. Dahil siguro, nakita na nila yung kalakihan ng pagbibigay ng bayad tungkol dito, pero tingnan po natin. Next slide. 2016, NCR, 435 claims amounting to 47 million. Out of, 400, at out of 518 claims, or 84% ang walang statement of accounts or billing. Binabayaran ka agad ng PhilHealth nang hindi pa nagkakaroon ng billing ang mga ospital. Magmula po yan 2013, ganyan parating observation sa inyo ng COA. Doon po sa Zay Benefit Package, may package po na Zay Benefit, sinabi niya nag-overpayment ng 7.36 million due to full reimbursements doon sa Zay Benefit Package. Next slide, please. Ito ho. Doon sa case rate, lumalabas, particular sa Region 1, ang actual charges, isang billion. Ang binayaran, 1.4 billion. Sa Region 8, ang actual case rate nyo, 9.5 uh, mi sorry, million. Ang binayaran, 15 million. So, nag-excess amount na naman ng 5 million. Dalawang region lang po yan, at ang tinest ng yan ay almost all 53 cases lang po yan. Limang milyon kaagad ang nakita na sumusobra na bayad. Makikita rin po dyan, 18 claims, 3.83 milyon ang overpayment. 2016, ito po yung mga uh, community acquired pneumonia, totaling 13.212 milyon lack the necessary documentation. Thus, the validity and propriety of the disbursements could not be ascertained. Andiyan po yung mga ospital. 13 million po to. Ang cases lang na to is 868 cases. Pneumonia lahat. COA Report 2016. Next slide. Sinabi po dito, yung hospital charges niyo, additional expenses benefit payments, 5.84 85 million. Actual benefit claim, 15 million. Ang sinampol po nila, 1,375. Ang dapat lang pong bayaran ay 9,570. So the additional unnecessary expense paid by PhilHealth is 5.484 million. Yan po yan. Please, uh, next slide. Yan yung pinapakita niya. So, ang kaso nito is one... Next slide, please. 1,300... 1,375 cases. Ni-review ng COA, 
5.4 million kagas ang, ang, ang excess ninyo na binayaran. E ilan po ang kaso natin? Sa isang araw, 3,500 cases po tayo. So wala pa hong isang araw, 5 million na lumabas na pondong hindi dapat binayaran. Next slide please. Ang pneumonia nyo, binayaran ninyo is 9.4 billion in 2016, gastroenteritis 2.13 billion, UTI 1.8 billion. Next slide. Ang hemodialysis ninyo, nagdoble na ho, naging 1.5 million claims na ho from 800,000. At ang binayaran ninyo ay 8 billion piso. Next slide please. 2017, NCR po at saka Rizal. Ang lumalabas na naman po sa Save Benefit Package ay nagkaroon kayo nung dun sa 2016 sample ng 15 million binayaran, 84 sample benefit, may 0 0.5, 26 million na sobrang bayad. Next slide please. Ito po yung all case rates. Overpayment, 2.7 million pesos. NCR, Region 1 at Region 2. Next slide, please. Sinabi po dyan ng muli ng uh, COA, we reiterated our previous year audit recommendation that manage revisit the guidelines on the all case rate payment system and implement a uniform policy application on the reimbursement of the all case rate claims, which is equally beneficial to the PhilHealth member patients and the healthcare providers in order to efficiently and effectively achieve its objective of providing its members the most advantageous financial risk protection through consistent and fixed benefit package. Ito po yung ZEI benefit package ninyo na ginawa nung 2017. Yan po yung inyong binabayaran. Pinakamalaki po dyan, uh, well, iba-iba po to. Ang ZEI benefit ay special package ng mga may sakit. Next slide. In 2017, ang pneumonia nyo po ay umabot na ng 10 billion pesos. Pero sa, ang cases nyo binayaran ay, ay 700,000 ang binayaran ninyong kaso. Pero ang lumalabas po sa Department of Health ng panahong yan, ay 454,000 lang ang may kaso ng pneumonia. Yan po'y tanong ko rin sa DOH. Bakit hindi po nila nakita? 454,000 ang may sakit ng pneumonia sa Department of Health. Sa PhilHealth, 707,000. At 10.2 billion ang binayaran na pondo para dyan. Gastroenteritis, 1.8 billion. At UTI, 1.5 billion. Next slide please. Ang dialysis po natin, naging consistent na at 1.6 thousand claims from 800 claims in the past. At dito po, uh, next slide. Okay, in 2018, ang sinabi po sa amin ng COA, hindi po nila magawa ang audit dahil hindi po sila makapasok doon sa inyong mga computers. Pero I guess meron na po kayong study para dyan. But at that time, ang sinasabi lang all case rate transaction amounting to 62 billion pesos. 62 billion pesos. And maybe at 2013 to 2018, on average, we are working on 50 billion on all case rates kada taon. Ha? Huh? Okay, next slide. Napansin niyo po no 1.6 billion million ang claims ng hemodialysis noong 2017. Ngayon naging 2.2 million na po ang claims. So from 10 to 14 na 800,000 naging 1.6, ngayon 2.2 na ang dialysis procedure. Yan po isang bagay na kailangan nating tingnan. Bakit ganong kalaki ang kanyang pagtaas? Next slide. Again, 757,000 ang claims ng pneumonia. Pero sa, sa Department of Health ay hindi lalagpas ng 500,000. 
ang pneumonia claims, ang pneumonia cases. Gastroenteritis, 2 billion, at urinary tract infection, 2.1 billion. Panghuli na lang po, ito po para makita ninyo kung gaano kagulo ang programa ng all case rate. Dito sa Pilipinas, pag ang gamit mong PhilHealth, mas mabuti nang may katarata ka o may pneumonia. Kasi pag katarata, 32,000 pesos. Pag pneumonia, yung mild, 15,000 pesos. Pag medyo masama, 32,000 pesos. Pero pagka nagka-breast cancer ka, 11,800 pesos. Pag nag-ectopic pregnancy ka, 7,800 pesos lang ang itutulong sa'yo. Pagka ikaw na heart attack, ang itutulong sa'yo na PhilHealth ay 9,000 lang. Kaya mas mabuti na ang sakit mo, katarata o pneumonia, mas malaki ang bahagi ng pondong ibibigay sa iyo sa PhilHealth. Uh, to the PhilHealth, this is the scheme of sinasabing mafia. Because we know that on the regional level, meron po kayong tinatawag na benefits uh, claim na committee. At yun po yan, dahil nga may case rate setup, ibibigay na lang yun sa finance. Pagdating sa finance, walang tanong-tanong dahil submitted ng region, babayaran ka agad. At pagdating po dyan, lalabas na ang pondo sa mga ospital. Kaya po, kapon, at nung isang araw nagkakausap tayo sa Philip, nagtataka bakit yung ibang ospital napakabilis? Bakit yung ospital mabilis mabayaran? Yung mga ospital natin particular, ang mga government hospitals, ang tagal ng bayaran. Dahil ba dito sa skema o nung scheme ng sinasabing mafia, na pagka mayroong usapan sa isang region o ang isang regional officer sa isang ospital at may usapan sa taas, mabilis ang nagiging bayaran. Ang old case rate policy po magmula 2013, consistent, lahat ng binasa ko sa inyo ay galing sa Commission on Audit. At gusto kong malaman din sa COA mamaya, sino ba ang nakaupo nung panahon na yon at bakit pinayagang magpatuloy? Mr. Chairman and all the members of the committee, Lahat po ng government offices, pag nagkaroon ng bidding, eksakto dapat ang binibid price. Nakita ko po sa inyong batas, under the Universal Health Care Law, totoo. Pwede kayong magkaroon ng scheme. Pero it doesn't mean, hindi po ibig sabihin, na hindi magkakaroon ng tamang pagbayad sa presyo. And I submit to the members of this committee, this in fact is plunder. Yung bilyong-bilyong na wala dito ay plunder. At ang aking rekomendasyon, kasuhan hanggang sa regional level dahil lalabas po dyan sinong ospital ang nakinabang, sinong kakuntsaba dahil malinaw naman po ang records ng Commission on Audit at madali tong investigahan. So with that, uh, we will continue. Mr. 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 Lang for, ah, okay. uh, Sige, Mr. Chair. Uh, we now recognize the arrival of our Chairman of the Committee, on Good Government and Public Accountability, the Honorable Alvarado. And before he speaks, may I recognize the, our Deputy Speaker, Deputy Speaker uh, Elray Fernandez, the author of the Bayanian Part 2. So, the Honorable Alvarado, please. Maraming salamat, uh, Chairman Defensor, at uh, sa ating pong mga kasama, Vice Chairman Rimulia, uh, Deputy Speaker uh, Einstein Fernandez, at uh, Deputy Speaker Villafuerte, uh, kanina po nabanggit ni Chairman Defensor na maraming overpayments na report ang COA sa iba't ibang ospital. Uh, Chairman uh, Defensor, mga private hospitals ba yung nabigyan ng overpayments ng uh, Ah, uh, Mr. Chairman, Dito po sa COA report na, sila, na pinakita ko from 2013 to 2018, iba't iba pong ospital ang nakitaan dito. Pero ito po kasi, katulad po ng binanggit ko, random check po ito eh. Hindi po naman nila matitcheck ang lahat ng kaso sa pong Pilipinas. Pero dahil sa investigasyong to at dahil sa patawag ng investigasyon ng eksekutibo, pwede na po nating isa-isain ang lahat ng mga kaso o pagbayad through the documents of the Central PhilHealth at doon po sa region. At kanina po tinanong ni Honorable Nimbulia, 58% ang private, 42% ang public na binabayaran. Uh, Komsek, uh, naimbitahan po ba natin ngayong araw na ito yung mga private hospital na nakalagay sa report ng COA na nagkaroon ng overpayments ang uh, PhilHealth, Komsek? 
Your Honor, we have a representative from the Private uh, Hospitals Association uh, via Zoom. Uh, via Zoom, kasama natin. Nakalista sila sa mga nabigyan ng overpayments. And again, Mr. Chair, uh, this is the COA report. And uh, meron po kasing mga cases ng iba't ibang uh, ang kaso mismo sa legal ng PhilHealth. In fact, ang kaso po sa PhilHealth ng fraud is about 4,800 cases from 8,000. Yan po ang existing kaso ngayon sa PhilHealth na hinihear po nila. Uh, Doon po makikita natin kung sino mga ospital na nandun. Pero hindi pa ho ascertain at eksakto kung ilan at sino-sino mga ospital na yan. Marami po kasi sa ating mga kababayan, siyempre sa public hospital pumupunta yan, lalong-lalo na kung hindi sila makabayad sa mga private hospital, Mr. Chairman. At ayong staff ko, uh, pinagtawag ko po sa ilan sa ating uh, mga government hospitals, kagaya po ng heart center. Ano po? Sa heart center, ayon sa accounting department, as of April 30, 2020, May utang pa yung PhilHealth o may hindi pa nababayaran ang PhilHealth sa kanila na mahigit 322 milyon. Pero sa naririnig ko nga kay Chairman Defensor, tila ba ang overpayments ay hundreds of billions. Tama ba, Chairman Defensor? Batay po dun sa COA observation na sinasabi nila yung uh, AOM, uh, 20% ang kanilang tinatansya. Ang kanila pong prediction ay about 153 billion. 153 billion. Kaya po from 2013 to present, Mr. Chairman. Napakalaking pera, 100 uh, 153 billion, Mr. Chairman. 153 billion. Pero yung Philippine Heart Center 320 million hindi mabayaran ng PhilHealth. Sa East Avenue as of June 30, may utang na 90 90 million yung PhilHealth. Isabi niyo center po kasi, nandito sa Quezon City, pero malapit rin naman sa Bulacan, malapit sa Pampanga, mga kalapit probinsya, napupuntahan ng ating mga kababayan. Yung Philippine Children's, may 72 million. Philippine Children's Medical Center, hindi pa bayad ng PhilHealth. Perez District Hospital, mga district hospital sa Bulacan, may ilan-ilan hindi bayad ng PhilHealth. Halos tigwa 1 million. At ito po, nakarating sa aking reklamo mula sa Bacolod, yung Corazon Loxin Montelibano Memorial Regional Hospital. Ito po ay mula, mula pa sa Bacolod, sa lugar po ni Congressman Greg Gatsataya. Ang hindi pa bayad ay 134.6 million ng PhilHealth. Sa Jose Reyes po, sinubukan natin tumawag NKT Island Center. Uh, tila marami pang pondo yung mga hospital na ito, hindi pa sila humihingi ng tulong sa atin sa panahong ito. Hindi pa sila nakakapag-submit ng uh, bayarin sa kanila ng PhilHealth. Pero marami po sa ating mga government hospital, kailangan ng saklolo ng PhilHealth ngayong panahong ito. Kay Mr. Chairman, napakasakit na may overpayments sa sindikato pero yung legal na dapat bayaran para sa mamayang Pilipino, hindi na babayaran. Mr. Chairman, mari po ba nating itanong sa PhilHealth, sila ba ay computerized na nitong panahong ito? Yung, yung database nyo, nakakomputerized na ba kayo ngayong panahong ito, PhilHealth? Anyone yes, from PhilHealth? Good morning po, uh, Jovita Aragona, CIO po. Nakakomputerized na po yung claims po natin. Yung mga nagiging dahilan po na hindi na babayaran ngayon, yung tinatawag po natin na RTH kasi meron po silang dapat na i-comply. Ma'am, excuse me po, ang tinatanong ko po ay kung computerized na computerized po tayo Computerized na po. Sorry po. Computerized Maraming salamat na po. po. Apa. Thank you. At uh, doon po ba sa programa ng uh, information technology ng PhilHealth ay full proof na ba? Hindi na ba pwedeng dayain yung uh, technology ng PhilHealth? Uh, Ma'am? Uh, sa ngayon, foolproof siya base doon sa datos na pumapasok. Sa ngayon, foolproof. Ngayon Pero po. ayon sa COA, e pinagdololoko tayo ng PhilHealth. Paano naging foolproof yan? Nakapanumpa ba si Ma'am, uh, Chairman? Yes. Okay. Ma'am, yes, paalala po. ko po sa inyo, nakapanumpa po kayo. Pag po may nahuli ditong kabalastugan sa PhilHealth, 
ma mananagot ka sa sagot Opo. mo. Pwede Ulitin ko po, uh, madam. Ha. Pwede yung ipaliwanag ko, Maari sir. Maaari pa po bang maloko yung gobyerno sa IT system ng PhilHealth ngayong panahong ito? Go ahead, PhilHealth. Uh, pwede pong paulit po, sir, ng tanong para maano ko po. Ma'am, ang tanong ko po, maaari pa po bang maloko ang gobyerno sa sistema ng IT na meron ang PhilHealth ngayong panahong ito? Maari din po. Maari pa po. Mr. Chairman, diyan ko po nakikita yung malaking problema. Kasi yung PhilHealth sakop buong bansang Pilipinas. Tama po ba, PhilHealth? Pakiulit po, sir. Buong bansang Pilipinas? Yes po, buong Pilipinas. Opo. At uh, sa laki ng ating bansa, kung tayo ay magsusulatan lamang o magpapadalahan tayo ng mga papeles mula sa iba't ibang ospital, papunta sa PhilHealth, itatype ulit natin, hahanapin natin yung mga peke, mga totoo na claim sa PhilHealth, aabutin tayo ng santo-santo. Ano po? Kaya nung, nung pinapanood ko po yung uh, mga hearing, kasi hindi lang naman kayo dito nag sa Congress, Meron ding uh, hearing doon sa Senate. At uh, pinanood ko po yung hearing at uh, maraming aligasyon ng katiwalian pagdating sa bagong procurement ng IT system ng PhilHealth. Pero Mr. Chairman, kung may problema doon sa procurement, higpitan natin yung procurement ng PhilHealth. Bantayan natin, tayo naman. Kasama tayo, Blue Ribbon Committee, uh, Committee ng uh, Public account sa pangunan ni Chairman Mike Defensor. Bantayan naman tayo eh. Sunod, kasama pa natin yun sa Senate, nagbabantay rin sila. Para matuloy yung uh, pagdidigitalize ng, uh, ng mga information pagdating sa PhilHealth upang maging maayos talaga yung listahan. Mr. Chairman, hindi ako IT expert ano po, at hindi rin po ako nagmamagaling sa inyong lahat. Marami kong hindi alam. Uh, noong 2016, yung telepono ko, analog pa lahat. Noong pagdating ko dito sa Batasan, biglang maraming Viber group. Sabi ko, ano ba yung Viber? Nagpaturo ako kay dating majority leader pa rin yas kung ano ba yung, vibe, yung Viber, siya naman ang nagturo sa akin. Napilitan akong bumili nung kauna-unahan kong ano, opo na telepono. Pero bago ako pumasok ng Congress, analog pa rin yung telepono ko. At uh, dito po, sa pagkakaroon ng uh, COVID-19 pandemic, mas nabuksan yung kaisipan ko na kailangan pala yung technology. At lalo na po, nung uh, niriribis ako yung usapin sa PhilHealth, kaharap ko po si Chairman uh, Mike Defensor, kaharap natin si Deputy Speaker Dan Fernandez, kasama natin itong uh, si Deputy Villapuerte, napag-usapan namin na kailangan niyang ayusin yung listahan ng PhilHealth, lalong-lalo na kung doon sa listahan nagkakaroon ng lokohan sa PhilHealth. Kung naman mapapatunayan natin na walang lokohan, eh mas gagaan yung uh, pakiramdam po namin. Pero ayusin pa rin natin yung listahan sa PhilHealth. Kayo po bang mga nasa PhilHealth ay naniniwala na mas dadali ang trabaho at uh, mas magiging malinis ang konsensya ng bawat isa sa PhilHealth kung magiging maayos yung IT systems po natin? Uh, kahit sino po sa PhilHealth? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, magandang umaga po. Uh, my name is Renato Limsiaco. I uh, pumasok sa Central Office as OIC Senior Vice President ng uh, July 2018 po. Uh, yes po, naniniwala po kami that uh, we need to improve our IT system para po ang transaksyon natin ay uh, uh, more, more transparent siya at saka kumbaga mabilis maproseso yung mga transaksyonis po natin yan din po yung ginagawa ngayon na plano po ng ating uh, butihing uh, President and Chief Executive Officer, si General Morales po, na yun po ang sinusundan po natin. Uh, sinasabi nga po, we need to have that robust system para po yung ating membership, ang ating benefits at ating, ating collection ay kasama-sama po sa isang, uh, sa isang uh, sistema na mabilis po. 
uh, Mr. Chair, if marapatin po ninyo, kung po pwede ko po uh, kunting paliwanag pa paano po ang takbo ng benefit claims po natin, ang pagbayad po ng benefit claims po natin, kung okay lang po sa inyo. Uh, uh, Senior uh, Vice President, uh, Mr. Luis Siaco? Lim Siaco po. Opo. Uh, pakiparating na lang po, alam ko nasa hospital ngayon si uh, Chairman Morales. Nasa hospital po ba siya ngayon o nagpapahinga sa bahay? Uh, hindi lang po na hindi ko po alam ko na sa hospital siya o sa bahay lang po siya. Oh, kasi po na, na, nabasa ko sa news parang meron yata siyang sakit ano po sir. Yes po sir at uh, nakakalungkot po na lumabas sa social media yung kanyang medical certificate po. Opo. Na uh, kami po ay nalulungkot pero marami namang magdadasal para sa kanya. Uh, Kaya before, before you continue the yes, uh, chairman. Mi minority floor leader is uh, raising a point of order. Honorable Abante is recognized. What's your point of order? Honorable Abante. Pakipindot po, Minority Leader, yung inyong uh, unmute button. Hello, uh, Chairman uh, Alvarado and Chairman Defensor. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I'm not uh, questioning the... Uh, the uh, knowledge that you have on the uh, issue, no? But uh, please take note that we are not the audience here that we're also interpolating. So, marami kami dito, and for the last uh, 20 minutes, uh, 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 kayong dalawa lang chairman na nag-uusap, no? And uh, okay yung sinasabi nyo, I don't have any question on that, but please, uh, uh, I know we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a long time in discussing this, but uh, we still have around six or seven that will be interpreting. I think that I do not want to think I'm an audience in this uh, committee. You no, know? I am very much a part of this, uh, and, and and this is not to offend anyone, but just to be able to raise a point of order. Thank you very much. Uh Thank you. Maraming salamat, uh, Honorable Abante. Honorable Abante, para lang klaro, ano po yung point of order po natin, uh, Congressman? The point of order po, uh, Mr. Chair, is that uh, for more than 20 minutes, uh, kayong dalawa lang po ng chairman nag-uusap. And uh, I feel that instead of being part of the committee where we are going to interpolate also, that I feel that we are the audience here. Mr. Chair, I'm not questioning uh, your knowledge about the issue, but uh, please allow us also to uh, be able to uh, do uh, uh, our job as congressman. Uh, alam yes. po na marami kayong, marami kayong dapat sabihin, but uh, you have been here, you have been in Congress for a long time, uh, Chairman Defensor and uh, Chairman Alvarado, and you know for a fact that Chairman uh, of the committee is actually... Uh, coordinate and supervise the committee as far as asking questions are concerned. Yun lang po ang point of order. Yes, maraming salamat, uh, Honorable Labante. Uh, wag po kayong mag-alala. Medyo naka-monitor naman po tayo dun sa oras para dun po sa mga tanong at uh, lahat ng mga nakapila na mga kasamahan po natin dito. Mr. Uh, Chairman? Yes. Uh, before I recognize the Honorable uh, Villafuerte, uh, are you already done by now, uh, the Honorable uh, yes, uh, Chairman Defensor, gusto ko lang po nga marinig pero maaari po bago natin pagpaliwanagin si uh, SVP Luis Siaco. Medyo hindi ko mabasa yung pangalan niya, maliit po kasi. Pwede po bang pakilakihan sa susunod yung pangalan nila? Lim Siaco uh, po. Meron pong uh, nakapilang katanungan si Deputy Speaker El Rey. Baka pwedeng uh, pagbigyan muna natin. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chair, as... Yes. One of the vice chairman of this committee hearing the this issue on field health. Uh, I, I just have some clarificatory questions based on your presentation. Uh, maybe field health can answer uh, briefly. Ano pa po ang status ng mga COA reports based on your presentation? Uh, can you answer that briefly? Ano po ang status nyo na nakorek nyo na bayan? Na file ba ng case? Uh, if you can just answer that briefly, para I, I can follow up with more clarificatory questions, Mr. Chair. Dr. Vargas, recognize. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, good morning po. Uh, with regard to the uh, uh, COA findings, especially, for example, on the statement of accounts, we have reinstituted po uh, the uh, submission of statement of accounts for all case rates that is covered under circular uh, in 2016 in May 31, uh, Mr. 20. Chair, just a clarification. My question is simply, Ano ba po ang status niyang observation? Because, Mr. Chair, after an observation, if the COA is not satisfied, it becomes a disallowance. Gusto ko malaman, is it disallowed uh, already? Meron na bang uh, adverse findings? Was it subject to a special fraud audit? Uh, please answer briefly lang po. After the observation was made, <laughs> were you already issued a disallowance? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, I will defer to our finance who handles the uh, uh, audit reports. Mr. Limpsiakos, recognize. Mr. Chair, Your Honor, sir, uh, on the part of the case rate, sir, uh, we still have submitted to uh, uh, COA Commission proper uh, request appeal, filed appeal po on the, to the COA Commission proper on the notice of disallowance for all case rate. So, Mr. Sir, Chair, ano po, na disallow na po. Um, oh, oh, sir. That, that's just my question. So, you were already disallowed? Yes, sir. My disallowance po. And then and you appealed based on the disallowance? Yes, po, sir. That was anyway, January Mr. Chair, 22 po, 2018 po, Your Honor. I, I take exception kasi to the, the recent statement of uh, General Morales that even Superman can't solve the field health mess. So, ang point ko lang, it's incumbent upon this committee this body to help resolve the issues surrounding field health, which is very, kumbaga, endemic. Baka nga maging pandemic na. Um, sa, kailangan kasi in the preparation of the committee report, gusto namin dito sa Kongreso, ay maka-offer kami ng solution. So, we are not superman, but we want to solve this issue, no? So, basically, uh, can you answer this question? Are there two types of fund releases to hospital? Yung una ba, those reimburse for medical bills after patients have been released from hospital. And the second is those hospitals given an estimated medical expense for 90 days requirement under the interim disbursement scheme. Uh, can you confirm, dalawa ba ang types of fund releases to hospital? Yes or no? Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, the regular benefit po being paid by PhilHealth is uh, after the uh, submission of claims, by the hospitals, then we will reimburse. Uh, however, we do have a uh, policy under the board resolution. Ito naman po yung interim reimbursement mechanisms wherein in times of uh, fortuitous events and there are declarations of state of health of emergency or calamity, then we can provide or preposition amounts uh, to the facilities. So, you're, so dalawa ba ang... Ano? Types of fund release, yung reimbursement, saka yung base ng IRM, yung ba yun? Yes, sa ngayon po, uh, meron po tayong IRM. Pero hindi po siya regular fund release, only again in times of uh, fortuitous event and there is a declaration of emergency or calamity. So, may we request the PhilHealth to provide the committee yung itong fund releases for at least one year for us to be able to prepare a committee report? Next question ko po. Mr. Chair, as part of our hearings, may we require the PhilHealth to the, submit the list of hospitals, their CEOs, addresses, and the respective amounts given to each of them, and explain who among the hospitals were accredited and who were not accredited prior to disbursements of any amount, Mr. Chair, para lang uh, for us to be able to comprehensively prepare a committee report, Mr. Chair. I, I move that uh, that we require a field health to submit the mentioned documents, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, also, <clears throat> in in uh, in support of the motion of the Honorable Villafuerte, kasi po meron na silang actual cases eh, ng fraudulent cases. Kung pwede lang isabit yun sa mga hospital at saka po yung letter ninyo sa COA. So, uh, the uh, PhilHealth is ordered to submit the particular cases that are pending, fraudulent cases of hospitals 
and personnel, including the COA letter for reconsideration on the rejection of the all case rate approval. So ordered. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I've been reading the papers, and uh, recently, si Senator Ping Lakso has exposed that marami pong nabayaran na hindi accredited. And uh, in the recent hearing, uh, they pointed out a hospital from Katarman na hindi accredited and yet nabayaran. Uh, can you confirm uh, this? Uh, that there are unaccredited, there were hospitals that were not accredited and yet reimbursed by PhilHealth? Uh, yes or no? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with regard to reimbursement on regular benefits, uh, we can pay or reimburse hospitals even if not accredited, but with conditions if it is licensed and only during emergency cases. However, I think, sir, the uh, other one that you are saying for the Qatar ban is on the IRM. Um, so, may I clarify lang, sir? Yes, yes. In sa Qatar man, sa IRM, in fact, you made advances pa nga, eh, hindi nga reimbursement. Di ba po? Tama po ba? The... Uh, the Katarman po, as per record, is accredited. Anyway, while you're looking for that, yung tanong ko lang kasi, so what is the point of uh, accreditation? Kung babaya, ipaparehas mo lang ang, ang pag-treatment sa accredited and, and, and hindi accredited. What's the point of having it accredited? Why, why do it? If, what's the point? Uh, sir, again, um, Mr. Chair, Again, um, uh, Mr. Congressman, uh, the uh, payment for reimbursement, especially for non-accredited, only happens one when it is licensed and during emergency cases. Po. However, if not an emergency case, uh, it is not being paid by the by PhilHealth. Hindi. Yeah. Sige, emergency nga. Ang point ko nga kasi nga is maraming government hospitals na nagsiservisyo, hindi na babayaran, and yet you prioritize private hospitals. So, ang tanong ko lang, ano ang ratio for this pandemic? Ano ang ratio ng uh, binayad nyo as private to so public? In, yung sa IRM. IRM muna tayo. Huwag na muna yung other case rates. Sir, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we will provide po the data. I don't no, wala ka bang rough figure? I read in the papers that you, you paid more to private than public hospitals. Mr. Chair, may uh, I... Si Anos Racing Sun, uh, Mr. Yes, Chair, uh, the Vice yes, President. Sorry. Mr. Chair, Go ahead. Uh, to, add, to answer the uh, question of uh, Honorable uh, Congressman, sir, on the part of the IRM release, there are, uh, as mentioned, we have 14.97 po, ano, and... Uh, Sa figure na po na ito, ang narelease natin sa private ay amounting to... Okay na muna ito. Sanali, sir, ha? 7.7 uh, billion to 505 private HCIs and uh, 7.3 billion for 206 uh, government-owned facilities, Your Honor. Hindi, yung tanong, tanong ko lang po... Uh, can you confirm that you paid more to private hospitals in terms of value as against uh, government-owned hospitals? Yes, po, Your Honor. Uh, yan kasi yung mga pinarating sa amin ng local government, eh, na uh, ang dami yung payable sa public, and yet inuna niya yung private. Bakit? Why is it so? Why do you do that? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, kung marapatin po ninyo, i-explain ko po ng konti ang proseso ng benefit claims processing po natin at saka yung pagbayad po. If okay lang po sa inyo, Sir, Your Honor. And mamaya na lang, Mr. Chair, kasi uh, later we can give time. Uh, and, uh, anyway, ang ano lang kasi, ang tanong ko lang, for example, uh, yung provincial government of Camarines Sur has been... Uh, entertaining COVID patients. Uh, the provincial government of Camarines has set up isolation treatment center since April. <laughs> and it's already August. Wala pang nababayaran maski piso. Uh, yun lang, and it's hard to sustain this uh, operation. And yet, we hear in the news na ang daming anomalia. 
So, yun lang ang nakakalungkot din na uh, si Governor Ibardoni rin of Samar was complaining na ang dami nilang uh, billable sa PhilHealth amounting to over 100 billion if I'm correct, hindi nyo binabayaran. So, what my point is, LGUs are helping in the drive to fight COVID and yet PhilHealth has preference over private hospitals. So, pwede ba pakikorek lang po yan? <laughs> Uh, kasi ang iniisip ng tao, dahil pag LGU, walang, walang anomalia, eh, nagkakaroon ng karamihan ng anomalia, Mr. Chair, if not all, are involved ang private hospitals. Eh. So, ang sinasabi ng taong bayan, kaya nyo piniprefer ang private, dahil doon nagkakaroon ng mga ghost patients. So, yun, yun, yun ang point ko lang, please. <laughs> Since April, hindi pa nakakakolekta yan, saka pinapahirapan nyo. Meron pa ako isang tanong, no? Is it true that you only pay uh, patients na tinrit pag nakakomplete ng 14 days? And if they do not complete the 14 days, they, the hospital cannot reimburse or collect? Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, uh, that is a requirement po for the isolation units. Uh, that is the 14-day uh, payment for the room and board, uh, including the the food, the hygiene kit, the medicines that are provided because, the, again, the isolation unit is partly the quarantine. However, for confinement po, no, ma no sir. Hindi kasi yung, ano, yung uh, Camarini Sur Medical Center was uh, opened up last March to be an uh, isolation treatment center, not a full hospital. So, they, we've been treating patients there since uh, April. <laughs> And wala pa nga nakukollect ni Piso. Then, yung nga requirement mo ng 14-day. Ang tanong ko lang, you have to revisit this policy why. E paano after the 8-day ay, na ano na, tinestinwab yung uh, suspect or probable, tapos negative. So, do you still require the 14-day? Eh, kung punong-puno na yung hospital, uh, I think you have to study that. ba? Yun ang point ko. Kasi kung nga rin, 11 days lang, Ay, hindi kayo makakakulay kasi 14 day, but nisinwab na, confirm na, negative na. Uh, what is your statement regarding that? Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, yes po, currently we are following the DOH protocol with regard to quarantine. Uh, we will review, but we will be asking also the current protocol. Anyway, uh, please review. Tapos itong tanong ko, no? as part of the hearing and investigation, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, para talagang we can really dig deeper and help solve this issue, uh, I think well, we should require PhilHealth to submit all the personnel involved in the processing of applications and approval of accreditation, Mr. Chair. May we request uh, the body that PhilHealth submit a list of P personnel involved in the processing of applications and approval of accreditation, so we can really dig deeper kung yung meron talagang sindikato dito, Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, not only the application for accreditation, pero yung mismo yung pagbayad, uh, yung pagbayad dun sa mga, how the process of payment for claims benefits. So and Mr. Chair, if I may, may add, uh, if they can submit also the supporting papers required by PhilHealth, in support of the application for reimbursement or liquidation of PhilHealth advances. Kasi, Mr. Chair, pag nalaman natin kung sino ang involved in the processing, malaman natin kung sino ang nag-apaprocess, ano yung, sino yung nagli-liquidate reimburse, maybe we can really dig deeper into this issue, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, we will do that. Uh, kindly uh, submit the documents as requested by the Honorable Villafuerte. Honorable Villafuerte, your last question before we proceed to the Minority Floor Leader. Konti na lang po, Mr. Chair, kasi ako talaga very curious dito sa investigation eh, because we don't want this investigation to be media and publicized tapos hindi, no, hindi talaga Ms. masolve because this Mr. issue Chair. on field health has been going on uh, before, even before this administration. Konti na lang po, Mr. Chair, with your indulgence. Yes, uh, again, po. let me just uh, clarify, uh, para po dun sa mga dumating at uh, gusto magtanong mamaya muli, ang ating pong sequence ng topics is, number one, all case rates, number two, yung IRM, number three, yung OFW, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> IRM, finance, ang susunod, OFW, tapos po yung IT and the administrative cases. No, Honorable Villaferte. Mr. Chair, para mapabilis lang, ito yung mga tanong ko kasi 
uh, maybe they can already uh, respond in writing as part of the preparation of the committee report. Ito yung tanong ko. Did the hospital specify the specific names of patients and their respective billings and what specific documentary support were given to PhilHealth for each and every patient applying for reimbursement and what specific documents to support the PhilHealth advances and the liquidation of advances to PhilHealth? Then sec, my, my other question is, who in PhilHealth from each provincial or city offices going to regional offices up to the central office of field health conducted evaluation or audit the amounts applied for reimbursement of hospitals or the ter determination of liquidation and who in field health determines and approves the release of funds to the hospital. Critical po to. Then another, are all these reimbursements and or advances Subject to liquidations of hospitals, subject to audit by PhilHealth's internal auditor, by Commission on Audit. Another, has there been any audit of the financial records of the hospitals to determine whether the entries therein and their supporting documents correspond to the billing submitted to PhilHealth? Please take note po, ah. <laughs> Another, can a detailed listing of all funds given to hospitals with their respective patients to which such billings pertain to and their respective amounts thereof be provided to this committee? Another one, did PhilHealth prescribe standard hospital costs in terms of occupancy, laboratory fees, and other costs? I think yes. <laughs> Are there standard fees payable by PhilHealth for medical doctor's fees? Are the hospital fees are the hospitals free to indicate any amount without a limit or ceiling? Uh, maybe you can answer this briefly. Meron bang uh, power ang hospital to indicate any amount without a limit or ceiling on any uh, case rates? Cases, not case rates. Dr. Barr, yes. Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, yes po. Uh, the, the hospitals or even the professionals, the care providers actually, uh, doon po sa ating forms, nakalagay po doon that they should uh, uh, indicate the actual amount and of course the PhilHealth benefit. So with this policy, has there been an instance na nag-overprice ang uh, doctor, hospital, which led to the loss of government funds through PhilHealth? Uh, what we pay, sir, is the case rates. Uh, no, I, my question, Mr. Chair, is that are the hospitals free to indicate any amount without a limit or ceiling? You said yes. Is that yes. correct? Yes, sir. Has uh, there been an instance na inabuso to? Uh, the, since the, the declaration po for the uh, claims of the hospital are really the actual amount, so the doctor, for example, declares... No, no, my question, Mr. Chair, very percent. simple lang po. The PhilHealth allows hospitals to indicate any amount without a limit or ceiling. Ang tanong ko lang po, Mr. Chair, is, is there an instance na naabuso to at magkano? You're under oath. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, sir, uh, so may, may I clarify Mr. Chair, po? he said yes. My next question is, uh, no, what amount um, was involved? Mr. Chair, may I clarify lang po? Go ahead. Uh, the filing of claims po kasi, nadudun po, for example, yung mga doctors, kung ang actual charge po nila is 15,000, yun po yung nire-require natin na i-declare dahil yun po yung actual na sinisigil nila. However, ang PhilHealth po will only pay, especially for pagdating po doon sa case rates, kasama na po doon kasi yung ibabayad para sa mga doktor, which is only like uh, 30%. Uh, Mr. Chair, mang simple lang yung tanong ko so, po eh. So, allowed po na sila ay magsusulat doon kung magkano ang kanilang sinisingil. Mr. Chair, my question lang is, they give the hospitals the authority to indicate any amount without a limit or ceiling. Ang tanong ko lang, has there been an instance it was abused? Yes, you said yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, sorry po. Uh, the, the, uh, so you're the, correcting your statement? Yes, sir, because it was not, the yes part was <laughs> not on the... Uh, and was not on the answer to the question, but... So I will ask Dr. Again. Dr. Vargas, if I may clarify, yes, Noble Villaferte, yung hospital po pwede silang mag-charge, 
Pero ang PhilHealth, naka-case rate po sila. Yes, po. Yes, so kung kunyari po, chinarge ng hospital 20,000, pero ang case rate 15,000, 15,000 lang po ang babayaran ng PhilHealth. Go yes, ahead, Mr. continue. So my question, are the hospitals free to indicate any amount without a limit or ceiling? Uh, the actual, sir, they, they, they can actually declare, they should declare actually the actual po. No, yes or no lang. Are the hospital free to indicate any amount without a limit or ceiling? Yes or no? Yes, sir, under the actual. So they're allowed no. to Dr. indicate Vargas, any amount? Dr. Uh, Honorable Villaferte, Dr. Vargas, yung pong problema ng hospital sa kanila po yun. Hindi nyo po problema yun. <laughs> Di ba ho? Kung ang ceiling, kung ano man ang policy nila, bahala sila doon. But you have a case rate. Yun yes, lang po sir. yung sagot doon. Go ahead, the Honorable Bill no, Yung tanong ko nga is, has there been an instance na hindi nyo finalo-falo yung uh, case rate because the hospital charged a higher limit? No, sir. We only pay for the case rates. You only pay for the case rate. Are you, ito, uh, ito, Mr. Chair, importante sa akin to lang eh. Kasi, while the public is demanding the suspension, leave, removal of PhilHealth officials, Mr. Chair... <laughs> Uh, we still follow the rule that they're innocent until proven guilty. Tama po ba, di ba, Mr. Chair? However, ang tanong ko sa, maybe if General Morales and the Vice Presidents here uh, can uh, agree, ang tanong ko, if, they, if they're saying they're innocent, the public is listening, it's very important, can I ask fillet officials, If they have no objection, if we will request for an AMLAC verification of their bank deposits and bank transaction, Mr. Chair? May we, uh, do we have uh, General Morales in Zoom? Andyan na po ba si General Morales? Wala po si General Morales. Ano bang, uh, Comsec, ano yung official excuse ni General Morales sa committee? Sir, uh, he was here a while ago, but uh, he's. Uh, I think, sir, uh, he left uh, the Zoom conference. Now, he's not in the Zoom interface. Sir. So, kasama natin si General Morales earlier. Tapos ngayon po na wala, no? Wala pa huna tayo yung information yes, sir, kung ano ang reason. So, uh, pwede hong may sumagot. Si who's the most senior in field health? Nanan dito po sa atin, sa floor. Mr. Chair, maybe all the officials here present and in Zoom. Simple question lang po. If they're innocent and they're not hiding anything, are they willing to uh, to sign a statement that the AMLAC can verify their bank deposits or bank transactions? Kung wala po silang ginagawang anomalia, walang ninakaw sa gobyerno, are they willing with no objection, Mr. Chair? Okay. Deputy Speaker uh, L. Ray, uh, that would be the last question. I will be asking them one by one. Sa ating po mga kasama nandito, isa-isa po, are you willing to sign a waiver for the AMLA? Go ahead. Um, yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay. Yes, po. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. <laughs> so, yes, yes. what about the person so, at the back? So, fit here that all those in plenary, and I would think in Zoom, andyan po ba yung mga kasama natin sa Zoom, lahat po ay pumapayag na pumirma for an AMLAC waiver. So maraming salamat po sa inyo. Honorable Lamy Mr. Mr. Chair, ano lang ha? let's verify. We only heard four persons here. Maybe... No, we all, I saw all of them say yes. Okay. Honorable Villaferte. And what about the field health officials in Zoom po? Uh, para lang clear that, uh, you know, they're doing this freely and voluntarily. Uh, before we proceed, uh, there's a, uh, I see the Honorable Barbers raising his hand. May gusto po bang katanungan? If we can unmute the Honorable Barbers. Before we proceed to the Honorable uh, Abante, go ahead, go, Congressman Barbers. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. At, uh, pasensya na po. Uh, I just wanted to ask the question that uh, was raised by uh, uh, Deputy Speaker Villafuerte is a valid uh, question, uh, including the, the request for uh, the AMLAC to check into the uh, bank records of the persons involved. But The most important, those people that uh, agreed, um, Mr. Chair, are <clears throat> persons at the lower level of the the structure of uh, the field. Uh, sorry to say this, but uh, I guess if we would insist on asking them to waive their rights on their bank secrecy, we should uh, ask General Morales, uh, all the SVPs, and all the RBPs of the field because this is where the 
the the the, the system uh, uh, seems to be failing and uh, which uh, makes us uh, conclude and majority of us conclude that there is indeed a mafia so yun po ang tingnan natin because there are a lot of uh, stories that uh, some of the officials the RBPs and senior vice presidents including uh, uh, that guy Mr. Lim Shako has somehow an interest in 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 uh, uh, hospitals and some uh, uh, interest in uh, in uh, in the claims no uh, marami pong ganyang kwento so i'd like to ask further kung sino po yung dapat uh, ano uh, puntirehin natin diyan sa waiver um, uh, mr chair Maraming salamat. So sa base sa katalungan ni Deputy Speaker Villafuerte, ang uh, follow-up po ni Honorable uh, Ace Barbers, hindi lang po sa senior uh, management ng ating PhilHealth, pati doon sa regional officers na kung saan nagsisimula yung usapin at bayaran ng case rates at iba pang mga benepisyo. So we will ask them officially through this committee, uh, Honorable Mr. Chair, briefly and lang and Barbers. I will already uh, yield to other uh, Kongs. Yung tanong ko lang kasi, the people here, I assume they're, they're well-meaning. The fact that they're facing us, hindi sila nagsasakit-sakitan, uh, and they're willing to sign a waiver, I have no problem with them. Thank you for uh, for being here. No, Ang problem ko po, Mr. Chair, yung wala dito eh. Sana yung nasa Zoom na matataas na official, bago lang po ako mag-yield. Sana, I would like to ask, sino ba po ang nasa Zoom na senior vice president, member of the board, Nah. Comsec, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Ah, yes, before that, Comsec is uh, recognized to uh, please uh, enumerate the field health officials in Zoom. Pero po yung binanggit ni Honorable Barbers, wala po yung iba talaga sa mga regional eh. But we will include them. We will write them officially. But those in Zoom, uh, Comsec is recognized. Sino po bang nandyan? Uh, Your Honor, uh, before anything else, uh, President Morales left the the Zoom interface because uh, he's not feeling well. Uh, and we also have uh, the Chief Operating of Officer, uh, Vice President Jesus, via Zoom. Okay, Vice President Jesus is recognized. Si General Morales daw po ay umalis dahil medyo masama ang pakiramdam. So, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Vice President uh, Desus is recognized. While he's being uh, unmuted, Honorable Fernandez. Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, we also include all the uh, regional uh, directors uh, na mag-undergo din sila sa AMLAC and all the board of directors ng, um, ng Peel Health. Thank you for that, uh, Dep Chair. Deputy Speaker Fernandez. So the board members... <laughs> Exicom and even the regional officers. Vice President Desus, are you here? Sino pa komsek yung kasama natin sa Zoom? Your Honor, we also have uh, Vice President Oscar Abadu. Yes, Your Oscar Honor. Oscar Abadu. Yes, go ahead. Tanong lang po nila, yun lang pong uh, waiver sa AMLA, uh, kung willing po kayo. Yes, sir. No. Salamat. Sino po ba? Uh, sino next? Si Comsec? Who's next? Your Hindi. Honor? Yung sino pa ba yung isang vice president dyan, uh, bago lang before I yield to, to the chairman. Importante po to, the public is demanding this. Eh. And I really admire people who said yes. Uh, we, 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 ano, we love your, yung, ano, your honesty. Who's the other one? De Jesus? Yes, sir. Nandiyan ba po ba si Executive Vice President De Jesus po of the PhilHealth? Sir, uh, he's not uh, available now. Sino nandiyan, uh, Comsec? Vice President Abadu, sir. Si... Yes, but, Your Honor. The Vice... Ayan, go ahead. Uh, yung request yes, po sir. ng waiver. Uh, Mr. Okay, Chair, siya pa po ba si uh, Vice President Jesus? Um, no, sir. K can you state your name, sir, for the record? I'm, I'm Oscar Abadu. 
Sir, are you willing to sign a waiver that you're willing to uh, let AMLAC verify your bank deposits or transactions? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Thank what you. about uh, what about si De Jesus, po, sir? De Jesus. Uh, VP, kung may mga kasama na po kayo dyan, baka pwede na pong sila na rin na magsalita dyan para, yan, mas malinaw na ho. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm the Corporate Secretary, Jonathan Mangawang. I'm willing to give AMLAC authority to inquire into my bank account. Salamat po, Attorney Mangawang. Next. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Uh, Walter Bacaresa po, I'm also willing to be uh, subject to AMLAC. Salamat po. Thank you. Thank you. So, if there are... Oh, go ahead. Ito pa. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Shirley Domingo, and I'm also willing to give authority uh, to, for AMLAC to look at all my uh, transactions. Thank you so much. Mr. Chair, I'm Hilda Diaz. I'm also willing, I'm Vice President, and I'm also willing to be checked by AMLAC. Salamat po. So, do we, if there are no other... Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, thank you for your time. I will uh, yield the... Uh, uh, I will ask later. Uh, I thank the, everyone for cooperating and in the interest of uh, public. Maraming salamat po. Uh, we are all here to, to really find out sino ba talaga ang involved, sino ba ang matitinong uh, opisyal ng PhilHealth. We are, we are here not to harass you, but really solve this issue and problem of field health na dapat talaga patakbuhin natin ng maayos. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. Maraming Thank salamat you. po. Thank you so much, Deputy Speaker Villafuerte. Kanina po, nabanggit na ninyo doon sa inyong motion at sa inyong pagtatanong, uh, sumigunda po si Honorable Barbers at kasama po si Deputy Speaker Fernandez. Yung pong board members, pati mga regional officers, susulatan po ng ating komite uh, for them to, para po sila din, kung willing sila doon na uh, pumirma ng waiver for AMLAC. So, with that, uh, may we recognize our distinguished minority floor leader. Uh, minority floor leader Abante. Comsec, in the next Thank hearing, you can you, Yes. Uh, before you proceed, Thank the you regional very... officers should be invited in the next hearing. Uh, Comsec, so ordered. Sir, Honorable Abante, go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Defensor. Thank you very much, Chairman Alvarado. Uh, gusto ko lang pong sabihin na more than a year ago, the minority block uh, uh, filed uh, a resolution to uh, investigate uh, field health. No? And that's more than a year ago. At gusto ko lang pong sabihin sa ating mga Bill health officials that this is in aid of legislation. Ibig sabihin niyan, eh, aari natin reviewin ang uh, mandato ng Bill health, baguhin, at bigyan lalo ito ng uh, stricter uh, provisions. O kaya naman, eh, uh, ang gawin natin, eh, i-dissolve na ang Bill health at uh, bigyan ng bagong mandato o kaya naman eh, asking the field officials na uh, mag-resign na po sila upang ating Pangulo would have a free hand in, 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 in appointing uh, others who could be able to serve uh, field health more. Sapagkat ito pong investigasyon ito, uh, Mr. Chair, ay ginagawa natin hindi upang akusahan ang mga official po ng field health, kundi upang ingatan po natin ang contributions ng mga million-million na mga nagbabayad ng PhilHealth contributions. Ano po? Sapagkat yan po ay pera nila. Hindi po yan pera ng uh, gobyerno. Hindi po yan pera ng sino man tao. Kundi pera po yan ng million-million mga nagbabayad ng uh, contribusyon. Ano po? O kaya naman, kung dapat na nating uh, uh, ibigay sa private sector ang uh, field health at uh, gawing isang uh, uh, isang korporasyon kung saan ang gobyerno at ang private sector ay uh, partner tungkol dyan para maiwasan po ang korupsyon. Pero uh, ilan po ba ang vice president ng field health? Sa pagkakaalam ko, isa lang po ang presidente 
But I'd like to ask, ilan po ba ang Vice President ng PhilHealth? PhilHealth, recognize. Sino pwede sumagot dyan? Uh, yung uh, Dennis Mas po, Senior Vice President for Management Services. Ang PhilHealth, mayroong isang uh, uh, President and CEO. Uh, below him, meron tayong Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. And then, uh, below pa, meron Sino tayo... Sino po pa. yun? Sino yun? Sino yung uh, Senior Vice President? Uh, yung Senior Vice President, first, myself, Dennis Mas, followed by Renato Limsiaco, by Jovita Aragona. So, ilan, ilan, ilan po kayong Senior Vice President? Pito, Your Honors. Pito, seven. Pito. Okay. Uh -oh. Oh, ilan yung vice president? Yung uh, vice president, si Mr. Abado, si... Apat, no? Apat. May aro tayong apat na area vice presidents. And then... 16 regional vice presidents, your honor. At saka apat na uh, limang branch managers. Yun yung mga salary Patanong grade uh, 26 up, yun yung mga officers na PhilHealth, executive managerial officers. Matanong ko lang po, uh, bakit napakaraming vice president? Ibig sabihin, mayroon iba't ibang function yan, di ba? May kanya-kanyang functions po, sir, your honors. And they are all important functions, as important as all occupying the vice president's position. Uh, yes, your honor. May kanya-kanyang mga okay. sariling offices unique functions sa buong corporation. Okay. Ako yung nagtataka lang ako sapagkat napakaraming vice president and senior vice president. Anyway, uh, meron po kayong uh, accreditation fee. Hindi po ba? Uh, tinatawag po yung accreditation fee meron that po your runs honors. into millions of pesos. Ano po? Meron po your honors. Magkano po yun? Uh, sa details po, Your Honors, ako kasi Senior Vice President for Management Services, HR at saka Physical Resources yung hawak ko. May I turn over kay SBP Ishpargas sa Health Finance Policy Sector. Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, yes, meron po tayong accreditation fee uh, especially for the healthcare provider institutions, pero wala po tayong accreditation fee for the professionals. Um, for the amounts po, um, I will, I, may I, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, may I provide the amount for the accreditation fee later? I'm just asking po. Okay, so if it's today, hindi mo alam at, at this time. Hindi mo alam yung magkano. Hindi ko lang po memorize because we have several institution types. We have the hospitals, we have ambulatory uh, clinics, we have freestanding dialysis clinics, maternity care, animal bite. So we have different institutions po na paying for accreditation fee. Uh, but uh, so I'll get bang, the data po. Pwede po bang pwede po pag-isubmit ninyo ang listahan at amount sa ating... Uh, galang galang na chairman ng public account please committee Mr. Chair Mr. Congressman po yes we will abide po Okay so yan po ba iniipon ninyo o nagagasta taon-taon Mr. Chair uh, Mr. Congressman I will uh, ask the uh, finance on how the accreditation fees are being booked in our uh, financials My goodness you should be prepared in this in, in this hearing, bakit pala na lang sinasabi ninyo yung hindi nyo alam? What's this? Are we conducting a hearing here na wala kayo pwedeng sabihin sa amin? Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, I apologize po because the the amount, uh, the credit... Oh, the, you really have to apologize because you are not well prepared. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. I'm asking po, because our vice, Senior Vice President for Finance is here, uh, sila po yung nagbubuk ng mga income ng ating korporasyon. So I will ask po how Bakit it is hindi po. Lang Why are you the one answering? Why not the Vice President of Finance answering? 
The uh, VP of Finance is recognized. Kindly reply to the Honorable Minority Floor Leader. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, for the accreditation fee po ng ating uh, healthcare providers for the year 2019 po, we received 26.6 uh, million pesos, Your Honor. For the year what? 26.6 million, Your Honor. That is only for the year 2019? Yes, yes uh, Your Honor. For the year 2020? 20, no, sir. Come again, sir. 20. Sorry, po. 2020. 2020. Uh, 2020. Uh, let me check. Uh, as of June. As of June. Yes, sir. As of June. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, the accreditation fee po as of June 2020 po ay 7.9 million, Your Honor. How many years have you been charging, uh, have you been asking a patient fee? How many years have you been doing that? Uh, sorry, Your since Honor, hindi since, po. In, uh, since when did you start uh, uh, asking a patient fee? Since when? Uh, um, Dr. Pargas kindly answer. Uh, uh, sorry, Your Honor. Yes, Dr. Vargas. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, uh, the collection of accreditation fees started even when, uh, when we started the accreditation of healthcare facilities since 1995 po. And just to update... Since, 19, since 1995. I, I, yes, uh, as, uh, as I was informed, sir. Sir, just to update lang po, for level 3 facilities, we collect 10,000. For level 2 facilities, we collect 8,000. For level 1 facilities, it's at 15,000... 5,000, sorry. For infirmaries at 3,000. For freestanding dialysis and ambulatory surgical clinics, it's at 5,000. For maternity care providers, uh, for our uh, TB DOTS packages, uh, we collect 1,000. Oh, they, uh, they, they, the, uh, they have been paying for the past 15 years now. Uh, especially po for the hospitals. Uh, for the other facility, uh, Mr. Chair, for the other facilities po, uh, when they have been start, when PhilHealth started accrediting them, so dun lang po nagsimula yung kanilang accreditation. Because uh, through the years po, we have added facilities, healthcare facilities to be accredited by PhilHealth. But we okay. started with if, hospitals. If you are, if, uh, say for example, in 2019, you have more than 20 million that uh, have uh, given a gradation fees. Therefore, in 15 years' time, it would amount to more than 250 million. Am I right? Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, probably, sir, but uh, we need to check because, again, as I've said, the, from the start, it was only the hospitals. However, the other healthcare facilities, we started accrediting them, accrediting them through the years lang po. Hindi po siya okay. from the start natin ina-accredit. Well, let me ask, are you, are you saving that amount of money or are you using it? Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, uh, pakiulit lang po. Sorry. Uh, are you saving that? Yan ba uh, uh, inyong hindi ginagalaw o ginagamit ninyo? Mr. Chair, Your Honor, ang pera po na nakukolekta po natin sa accreditation fee po from our HCP ay pumapasok po sa account ng PhilHealth. Ito po ay one fund po tayo. Ibig sabihin po, ginagamit din po natin ito para sa
pagbayad ng ating mga benepisyo po para sa ating mga miyembro po. And that is a separate funding, am I right? Mr. Chair, hindi ko pa masyado gaano marinig po. Separate, 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 that's a separate fund. Uh, hindi po siya separate fund po, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Isang pundo lang po siya sa ating uh, uh, pundo po ng uh, korporasyon po. Okay, okay. Meron akong natanggap na uh, tawag nito na message na kung totoo ito, pakisabi sa amin, no? Is it true that these irritation fees are just being shared and divided by field health officials and ex-com officials? Totoo po ba yan? Hindi. Ulitin ko po yung tanong ko. Totoo po ba na ang accreditation fees na ito ay binabahagi lamang at dinidivide among field health officials and ex-com officials? Uh, Mr. Chair, Totoo po ba o hindi? Mr. Chair, ma, uh, Mr. Congressman, I will ask to, uh, the finance to answer because they are again the ones booking this uh, uh, amount. Okay. Who, who will answer, uh, Dr. Vargas? Sino po sasagot? Mr. Demsiaco, can you reply to the... Uh, Mr. Demsiaco, can you reply to the uh, question of the Honorable Abante? Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, may I have the question again, sir? <laughs> Totoo po ba na itong rotation fees na ito are being used, shared, and divided by field health officials and ex-com officials? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, sa aking nalalaman po, ito po ay uh, in, the, in the previous years, in the previous years, Your Honor, ano, ginagamit po ito uh, ginadivide po ito ano uh, the, sa ngayon po year 2018 2019 wala na po ito dahil sa ito po ay uh, kasama po as part of our other income your honor oh so yan po ay bahagi ng income ninyo anong tawag doon yung po ba eh sweldo allowance uh, ito po uh, your honor ang ating accreditation fee po ay part ng other income ng uh, corporation po and uh, no you, you were you were saying that that, that you're, you're sharing it and you're dividing it among yourself so what i would like to find out what kind of income is that yan po ba allowances ninyo uh, sorry po uh, your honor hindi po hindi ko po makuha yung detalye sa ngayon kung ano nangyari po during that time uh I think we need to submit a report on that na lang, uh, Your Honor, if marapatin po ninyo. Dahil po ay... Uh, alam po ba? Alam po ba ng COA ang bagay na yan? Si Congressman Navantes, kung alam ng COA yung bagay na yan, o may report ang COA tungkol sa bagay na yan? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, ito po ay kasama po sa reporting natin sa Commission on Audit po. Okay, As part ng financial report po natin. Oh. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, uh, so totoo na itong accreditation fees na ito that is now uh, uh, for about 15 years na binabayad would go to more than 250 million ay pinagahatian lamang ng mga field health officials and ex com officials as part of their income. Kindly reply, Phil Health. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, ang uh, year 2019 po, 2020 po, ang uh, pagkakaalam ko po ay hindi na po ito 
uh, part ng allowances na binibigay po sa ating mga uh, officials po. Ano? And uh, sinasabi ko nga po, this is already part of the other income of the corporation po. Mr. Chair, I would like to remind our resource speakers that they are under oath. Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor po. And the, the, therefore, in this committee, you are admitting from 1995 to 2018, you have been actually using all of the fees, rotation fees, as part of your income. And only in 2019, you have not been doing that. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, pasensya po, hindi ko po masyado alam sa ngayon yung uh, detalye po ng pagbigay ng uh, accreditation po, fee po na maging uh, okay. allowance po siya ng ating mga field health employees po or officials po. And uh, magbibigay lang po kami ng report on that, Mr. Mr. Chair, kung po pwede po. Ang pinag-uusapan po natin dyan ay pera to the tune of millions. Sinasagot niyo ako na hindi niyo alam. So, Mr. Chair, I would like to uh, demand that uh, the field health official should submit to us the full detail of, uh, of the fees, kung saan po ito napupunta, at kung kanino napunta, at kung anong klaseng income ang pinaggagamitan po ng accreditation fees na ito, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, PhilHealth is uh, directed to please submit the documents as regards the fees. As uh, yung pong uh, binanggit ng ating Honorable uh, Abante, lahat po yan kung saan nagagamit, kumari po magbigay kayo ng report itong ukol dito. Go, go ahead, uh, Congressman Abante. Uh, Pinag-uusapan natin kanina, ah, uh, Nabanggit po ni Chairman Alvarado, nabanggit po ni, uh, ni uh, uh, Deputy Speaker El Rey ang tungkol sa mafia. Ano po? Uh, ang tinitignan ko po eh, ito. Meron po bang participation ang ating mga regional vice presidents and head? Oo. Na... Sabihin po natin involved sa mafia, na involved sa mga payments and they play favorites doon sa mga healthcare institutions, depending if they give favors to it. Felt recognized. Uh, who would be the person, uh, the... Executive Vice President. Yes, go ahead. Ms. Neri. Uh, sorry, uh, just for the, in Mr. Chair, just for the info of the um, honorable members, uh, EVP COO Sir Arnell is undergoing a procedure right now to replace the battery for his uh, pacemaker. So uh, he might be available this afternoon, but for now, he's indisposed. Po. So, nagkasakit na po si General Morales, nagkasakit si Mr. De Sous. Uh, well, Mr. Chair. Opo. Yes. Siguro ma'am, baka pwede niyong sagutin yung... Uh, yes, Honorable Minority Floor Leader Abante, go ahead. Ibig, ibig sabihin, eh, nagkakasakit na po sila. Ibig sabihin, isa lang po nakakaalam nun, hindi po alam ng iba. Uh, dito po. So that they could not be able to answer us, Mr. Chair. Yes. Maybe uh, Dr. Vargas may want to reply to the Minority Floor Leader. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Minority Floor Leader, um, I'm sorry for the question because I'm checking on the uh, other questions earlier. Um, uh, Mr. Congressman, Sir, if you can repeat po the question with regard to the regional vice presidents. Um, when it comes to the involvement of payments, are you playing favorites with the healthcare institutions like hospitals, dialysis centers, depending of uh, who could be able to give favors? The only answer is yes or no. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, the policy po for our reimbursements are first in, first out. So the first claim that would come in is the first claim that we be, that will be processed. So yun po yung uh, ating uh, policy with regard to claims processing. Mr. Chair, I don't think that I am able to hear the right answer. My the answer should only be yes or no. No, sir, we're not favoring. As far as I know, we are not no, favoring. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, I just uh, would like to ask, no? There is uh, Senator Subiri uh, exposed a certain hospital in Davao in which PhilHealth has given a paid more than 300 million pesos. which is one of the highest payments among hospitals. Anybody would like to comment on that, Mr. Chair? Go ahead, uh, Dr. Vargas. Mr. Chair, uh, Congressman Abante, sir, uh, I think what you are referring to is the hospital, which is the uh, Southern Philippines Medical Center in Davao. Yeah. I think you heard Senator Subiri say that, isn't it? Yes, sir. And uh, on the IRM fund, we have, uh, I think that is the number one hospital, uh, or the, high, the hospital with the highest amount of IRM that we released. Okay. Now, Ampil Health, Merong Integrity Officer. Hindi po ba? Yes, Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Uh, I, Sir, Mr. Congressman. Na ang pangunahing trabaho ay bantayan ang korupsyon sa nasabing ahensya at panatilihin ang integridad nito. Am I right? Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, yes. Okay. Andiyan po yung Senior Vice President Legal, no? Uh, La Rosario. Kasama po natin si uh, Vice President La Rosario. Uh, sa Zoom po, sa Zoom. Can we, uh, Vice President Del Rosario is recognized? Andiyan po ba siya? Senior Vice President Legal Rodolfo de Rosario? Sir Chair, are you present? We are checking now, uh, may, uh, Congressman Nabante. Is he there? Kanina po, nakita natin. Ayan po. Go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, okay. Uh, Unang-una, I would like to ask, sino po ba ang integrity, integrity officer ng PhilHealth? Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Good afternoon. I'm Attorney Rogelio Pucalian. Uh, so, Attorney, who is the integrity officer of PhilHealth na ang pangunahing trabaho ay bantayan ng korupsyon? The chair of the whistleblowing uh, uh, committee of PhilHealth is Attorney Rodolfo Del Rosario our uh, SDP for legal sector. Oh, so he's not there? No, uh, you're, you're the yes. one answering? Yes, sir. Okay, where is he? Uh, uh, he left because uh, hmm. he's, uh, blood pressure. Uh, he has a blood, uh, high blood pressure, po, sir. So, nag-break lang po muna siya. Uh, so, minority yeah. floor leader, kanina po nandyan si Senior Vice President Del Rosario. So, ang may sakit na sa inyo, General Morales, Mr. De Sous, ngayon naman hinayblad si Senior Vice President Del Rosario. Tama po ba? Parang lahat yes, na po. Nagkasak Go ahead, the minority floor leader. Okay. So, attorney, baka mamaya mahayblad ka rin dito, no? Okay. Ito, ito ang isa pong question ko. What policies and programs have you done to eliminate or prevent 
or mitigate corruption in peer health? Sir, uh, we have this uh, uh, integrity uh, committee or the whistleblowing committee wherein the uh, employees of peer health are uh, and even external uh, uh, stakeholders are encouraged to report to peer health any huh? uh, irregularity, illegal acts and practices of the employees and officers of peer health. And then the committee will uh, investigate those complaints. Then they will uh, uh, issue a resolution, a report for uh, approval of the president and CEO. Mr. Chair, I would like to ask that uh, uh, the legal department of peer health and the integrity officer submit to us the guidelines by which they base on their job as, uh, uh, you know, uh, eliminating or preventing corruption, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir, we will do we'll Okay. All right. Now, dahil wala po dyan si Senior Vice President, perhaps you can answer this, no? Uh, totoo ba that uh, Ms. Attorney Del Rosario held concurrent positions in peer health, OIC head for Region 1 and Davao? No, uh, no, sir. As far as I know, wala pong uh, concurrent positions. Wala ba? And uh, because of that, he is receiving compensation allowances for both positions? No, no, sir. Okay. Is it also true that... Uh, uh, senior Vice President of Legal, the Rosario, have been found guilty of an administrative offense? Uh, sir, as to that question, I have no uh, personal knowledge. So uh, I cannot properly answer sir, the, the question. You don't have any personal knowledge, Attorney? No, but you, are his, you are his deputy. I was just... Uh, uh, assigned to represent him today. Well, it means, if you are assigned to represent him, you know. Uh, yes, sir, but uh, as to that uh, question, sir, I have no uh, uh, knowledge. Oh. Is it true that Attorney Del Rosario filed a protest with the Civil Service Commission questioning yes. his, appoint uh, his appointment? Yes, sir, but I think the Civil Service Commission uh, up granted his, uh, uh, affirmed his uh, appointment. Mr. Chair, I will be asking uh, the senior vice president to submit to us a letter answering all of these questions. Yes, sir. Oh. Ang Department of Finance ay meron din kinatawan sa board ng peer health. Yes. Na ang tungkulin ay bantayan din po ang financial health ng company. Nandiyan po ba si Treasurer Rosalina De Leon and Deputy Treasurer Sharon Almansa? Are they present in the hearing? Comsec? She's not, she's not present, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chair, if it, they are not present... Are you asking for Ms. Emily Roque, Treasury Department? Is that the person? Uh, Treasurer Rosalina De Leon and Deputy Treasurer Sharon Almanza. Both are not present, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chair, could, could, could we be able to invite them on the next hearing? to be able to appeal to the committee if there's still a next hearing? Because yes. Honorable this, Minority person, Florida. this person are the representatives of the Department of Finance whose primary job is to protect the financial health of their health. They are needed to shed light to various anomalous surrounding field health. We want to know what they have done before, during, and after these issues came to light. 
We would like to find out what have they been doing. How did all of this happen before their very nose? Because they have a lot to answer for. Sige po, with the... Uh... Pointed to these positions precisely to ensure integrity and transparency in field health, Mr. Chair. Sige po, with the, suggest, with the uh, request of the Minority Floor Leader, imbitahan po natin, Comsec, hindi lang po yung ating... Uh, I stand corrected, I thought it was the Treasurer of Field Health, but you were talking about the Department of Finance. Lahat yes. po na mga ex-official members and also the chairman, which is DOH, uh, to be present in the next committee hearing. So ordered. Is the resident auditor for field health present? Mr. Chair? Resident auditor, uh, Comsec? Sir, as of 1.45pm, uh, uh, it's not yet uh, in the Zoom interface. No, uh, the COA auditor was with us the last time. May we also ask for, for him to appear before this honorable committee? Uh, Minority Floor Leader, we will, uh, we're just checking. Kasi kasama po natin uh, ang COA the last time. Nandito po ba ang COA sa atin? Not yet, sir, but they were invited. Yes, uh, Congressman Nabante, we will reiterate our invitation to them. Go ahead. Because, uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, my reason is that uh, if we only have the field health officials, uh, uh, we might just be put into a uh, uh, go-around thing, no? It's good for us to be able to ask these other officials that are not field health officials to appear because they are the ones that ensure the integrity and transparency in field health. Now, per newspaper reports, the following hospitals were provided the following funds under the IRM. You have been telling us uh, kanina, no? About the RIM. Uh, Southern, Southern Philippines Medical Center with 326 million pesos. That is the Dabao Base uh, Small Hospital. Dabao Regional Medical Center in Tagum City with 209 million pesos. Vicente Soto Memorial Medical Center in Cebu City with 204 million pesos. Jose B. Lingard, Memorial Regional Hospital in the city of San Fernando with 201 million pesos. PGH, on the other hand, got 263.3 million pesos. And PGH is a COVID-19 referral hospital and we know for a fact that PGH is the largest uh, state hospital in the country. We also know that majority of the cases is found in the NCR, even until now, and the Calabarzon area. And yet, its IRM is still lesser than uh, the Southern Philippines Medical Center. Now, the question is, what is the preference all about? Field health? Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman. Um, yeah. Yes, Bob. I think the uh, NCR hospital represents around 20 plus you percent. Think before you answer, you think uh, is, uh, uh, is that is that uh, what what are you, why are you saying you think? You uh, must say you know. Yes, sir. The okay. The amount released to uh, NCR hospitals is are, is more than the twenty percent of the IRM that was released uh, nationwide, and the figures can be provided by our SVP for finance, uh, Mr. Limsiaco, on the uh, uh, proportions of the IRM released to our areas and uh, hospitals. I do not know why you're, why you're pointing finger to somebody else. I think that uh, 
who should, uh, Mr. Chair, the one that knows this should be answering. You know, we do not want that uh, nagpapalit-palit dito para kayo nagtuturuan yan eh. So we'd like to find out. Ako, nagtataka lang ako ha. PGH, the largest hospital, a COVID-19 referral hospital, where it is, where they have the majority of the cases, you know, of COVID-19, only received 263.3 million. So, in my mind, uh, may mga preferences po dito. We'd like to find out why. So, Mr. Chair, the one that is knowledgeable must answer. Not only uh, not only that, uh, you begin to uh, start by saying, I think. It's not what you think. It is what you know. Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, uh, the Southern Philippines Medical Center, which is the number one recipient of the highest amount for the uh, uh, IRM, they have the highest number of reimbursements and claims filed also for 2019, which is the basis for the computation uh, for the IRM that is released, the historical claims in 2019 po. So, hindi 2019. po... Uh, yung, yung basis is 2019. Yes po. Uh, so, hindi po ang basis nito ay kung ilan ang na-admit na pasyente na may COVID but rather uh, ang basis po ng computation for the IRM is the historical claims of 2019. I am, I am just a simple man uh, Mr. Chair and I do not actually understand what the, the answer that you have given to us. Now, the rest of IRM figure are National Kidney and Transplant Institute in Quezon City with 179 million Baguio General Hospital and Medical Center with 165 million. Northern Mindanao Medical Center with 150.2 million. Quirino Memorial Medical Center with 150 million. And Eastern Desires Regional Medical Center in Tacloban City with 146.2 million pesos. From the figures itself, this representation does not see any kind of preference or classification. So my question is, how does PhilHealth handle IRM? What is their qualification? Ang yung po ba ay nasa PhilHealth Circular of 2020-0007? Mr. Chair, um, Congressman Abante, uh, the, the, with regard to the, again, the computation for the uh, IRM is based on historical claims of 2019. Pagdating naman po sa pagre-release ng ating uh, IRM, uh, ito po ay nakadepende doon po sa pagsasubmit ng mga requirements, particularly the letter of intent and the MOA assigned by the uh, and the memorandum of agreement assigned and approved by the president and of course by the facility so kung so sino po have, kung si document yes po and kung sino po yung ma makakapag-submit uh, meron din po kaming uh, uh, documents or meron din po kaming data kung kailan po natin nare-receive yung mga MOA at kung kailan po nare-release yung IRM as approved can you provide the committee on those data and documents? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Congressman Abante. We shall. Pro we will provide. Like, po. I would like to ask, Mr. Chair, that they provide the, the, the data and the documents concerning all of this IRM. Yes, feel it is so ordered. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my next major issue ay yung tinatawag nating fund balance and reserve. Feel health uh, incurred. Minority floor leader. Yes. Ang sabi niyo, no? Uh, the Honorable Abante. Yes. Opo. 
Kasi po kanina nag-agree po tayo doon sa point by point na discussion natin. Dito yes, po, yes. Apo, kung papayagan po ninyo, tapusin lang po natin itong case rate, tapos doon sa funds po, balik po tayo dyan. Ah, sige. The... Okay, okay. So, I'll, I'll just go back later, no? Yes, Honorable Abante. Opo, sige po. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chen. Maraming salamat, uh, Congressman Abante. Uh, PhilHealth is uh, directed to uh, please forward all the documents requested by our minority floor leader. Particular po, Congressman Abante, yung uh, doon po sa mga accreditation fees na hiningi nyo kanina. We now proceed to uh, the Honorable Barbers. Congressman Barbers recognized. Nakakalungkot lang dahil yung ating mga gustong tanungin sana ay eh, unti-unti nagkakasakit. No? And uh, I don't know how I'm going to direct all these questions which I lined up for people who are not present in our, in our uh, committee meeting. But just the same, Uh, tanungin ko na lang po ng uh, konti tungkol po dun sa usapin ng case rate uh, yung mga nandya dyan at yung mga kaya pong sumagot. Uh, Unang-una, para lang hope for clarification, is anyone from PhilHealth can answer this. Ano ho ba, ano, um, uh, ano ba yung rasyonal o yung, uh, uh, yung rasyon kung bakit po gumawa tayo ng sistema ang, ang tawag natin na all case rate Uh, system. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, anybody can answer on that? Uh, Mr. Chair? Um, uh, Mr. Paragas? Uh, yes, Paragas po. Mr. Chair, Congressman Barbers po. Opo. Uh, ang case rates po na ipinilabas ng PhilHealth, the all case rates na ipinilabas po ng PhilHealth noong uh, 2013 really is uh, one uh, to provide efficiencies, administrative efficiency in PhilHealth to answer also po to the efficiencies doon sa pagbabayad namin na ginagamit before which is the fee-for-service to provide a uh, information or easier information for the public and especially for the members for them to know uh, kung ano po ang kanilang beneficyo na makukuha sa PhilHealth. So, yun ho ang uh, rason at rasyonale kung ba't gumawa kayo ng ganyang klaseng sistema? Uh, opo, yun po yung ilan sa mga rasyonale kung bakit po tayo nagroon noong ating kinatawag na uh, PhilHealth po. Primarily to shift from our uh, provider payment mechanism from a fee for service to another one which is the uh, uh, all case uh, the all case rate nga po at ito po ay nakapaloob sa ating uh, uh, tinatawag na board resolution uh, uh, saan excuse me, excuse po. Me. yes not, so, i know that there was a board resolution yes. gawin sistema po yan ang tanong ko lang po ay ano ba yung rason ano yung rasyonal kasi ang sinagot mo ay para maging efficient yung uh, pagbabayad at uh, palitan yung uh, fee for fee for service. Fee for service, sir. Fee for service. No? At, uh, ang tanong ko ulit sa pangalawang tanong, eh, naging efficient nga ba? Uh, Mr. Chair? I'm, I'm, referring, I'm referring, Mr. Chair, kung efficient nga ba yung pag-disperse ng pondo ng public funds ng PhilHealth? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Congressman Barbers, uh, sa pamamaraan po nung ating tinatawag na uh, all case rates, ito po kasi ay yung uh, magbabayad tayo ng fixed amount sa ating mga ospital at sa ating kasama na po ang professionals uh, na kung saan ang atin po nga. So ang nangyayari po dito, since fixed amount po siya, kung ang claim po, for example, ng ating uh, uh, ospital ay mas mataas, fixed amount pa rin po ang babayada natin which is lower than the kung mataas nga po yung kanilang kiniklaim. Kung ito naman po ay mas mababa dahil fixed amount po ito, uh, ang mangyayari po noon, babayadan pa rin po natin yung fixed amount. Uh, with okay. regard to the efficiencies po pagdating sa pagbabayad, uh, mas naging mas madali po ito para sa PhilHealth uh, because again, uh, yun po kasing dati natin ginagawa sa ating fee for service ay ang atin pong claim ay iniisa-isa po natin na chinecheck ang bawat lahat ng items na kung saan binabayadan po natin kung ano yung sinisingil ng mga ospital. 
So, administratively po, more efficient pagdating po sa, sa atin. However, dun po sa tinatanong ninyo na financially ba ito ay naging uh, mas efficient, meron po ding mga findings, katulad po ng nababanggit kanina, na meron po mga findings na merong maaaring overpayment. Uh, uh, gaya po nung sinasabi natin, kasama po sa prinsipyo ng pagbabayad uh, nung sa case rate natin, ay dahil ito po ay fixed, tayo po ay nakakapagbayad ng claims na maaaring mas mababa, maaaring mas mataas din po dun sa amount na maaaring sinisingil ng ating mga okay. providers. Okay. I will stop you, uh, Mr. I forgot your name, but uh, sorry ha. Uh, Intuhin kita dyan. Um, kasi ang, ang, ang susunod ko sana ng tanong sa'yo ay bago nyo ginawa itong case rate policy or all case rate policy system, ito ba ay merong uh, ano, meron bang, meron bang scientific study rito o financial study na ito po ay magpapa-improve ng serbisyo ng PhilHealth, ito ba ay uh, magiging, uh, magiging maayos ang disbursements ng public funds namin dito, meron ho ba kayong gano'n? O may basihan kayong gano'n? Uh, meron Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Ay, Mr. Mr. Yung Congressman. Mo kasi nauubos yung oras ko eh. Iksiyan lang, meron? Wala. Meron pong mga pag-aaral na ginawa pagkatapos po na ito ay may patupad. Uh, pagkatapos may patupad. Eh yung okay. bago mo mapatupad. Eh, anong basihan niya? Ginamit niyo ba yung study na yon bilang basihan para magpatupad ng ganitong klaseng sistema o hindi? Oo, hindi. Ginamit po yon especially po sa pag-a-adapt ng all case rates po. So, ang ibig sabihin, itong paglalagay pag, pag ninyo ng pulisya ng all case rates ay may isang basihan na scientific at uh, financial study. Tama po ba ba dyan? Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Uh, Congressman, Abi, ang atin po kasing case rate, nagsimula po tayo even mga 2001, ay 2004 and all. Pero pa isa isa po, nung po namang 2011, ito po ay naging 23 case rates. However, in 2013, ito po ay naging all case rates na. Meron pong mga pag-aaral na nangyari, especially doon sa initial 2013, uh, para po doon sa 20, uh, initial 23 para po naman magamit para do sa 2013, uh, 2013 okay. case, all case rates. Okay, salamat. Alam mo, Mr. Ano, kung pakikinggan kita, parang dumanda yung sistema eh. Kung, pa, kung pakikinggan ko lahat ng justification mo, it will appear, no? it will appear na inayos nyo, maayos, at itong mga aligasyon ng, uh, ng uh, anomalya ay purely imagination ng mga nag-a-allege. So, I will not belabor you on that uh, point anymore, uh, Sir, ang ano ko lang kasi, um, kung titingnan mo no, yung mga pinakita kanina ni Chair Defensor na mga disbursements at mga cases on different kinds of diseases and illnesses that were treated and uh, paid by PhilHealth, abay nakakaawa ang Pilipinas, napakaraming sakit. Akalain mo UTI ay... Eh, Ilang, ilang dang libong Pilipino ba UTI? Uh, yung katarata, isa pang issue yan. And uh, I'm sure uh, marami nang tumitingin uh, dyan sa, sa usapin na yan, uh, sir. Ngayon, um, doon nabanggit mo kanina yung uh, posibleng uh, uh, ano eh, um, overpayment. No? Um, and overpayments or underpayments will probably not happen kung merong post-audit na ginagawa ang PhilHealth. Meron po ba kayong sistema ng post-audit? So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Congressman, meron so, po. Not, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I ask the BP for Finance to answer that? Yes. Uh, the Vice President for Finance may reply to that. Do we have uh, a post audit on case rate no. packages? Actually, it's you, Mr. Park, who would be answering that. Mr. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, Congressman, uh, we have the post audit po. Uh, we also have the medical prepayment review, especially po doon sa mga kaso 
na nabanggit kanina ni uh, Mr. Chair, pagdating po sa pneumonia, even UTI, acute, acute gastroenteritis, and yun pong ating tinatawag na sepsis. Kami po ay nagme-medical prepayment review bago po ito mabayadan. Pagdating naman po sa nabanggit niyong katarak, kami po ay may polisiya na rin ngayon na kami ay gumagawa ng pre-authorization bago po magawa yung operasyon at may set limits na rin po tayo sa katarak per doctor. Meron din po tayo again na tinatawag na post-audit uh, na ginagawa po. So, kung how often do you have your post-audit? Post Kasi, eh, bakit meron po tayo mga overpayments? Mr. Chair, again po, uh, uh, Congressman Barbers, again po, the uh, provider payment mechanism po natin allows for the payment, since it is a predetermined fixed rate na ibabayad po natin, uh, may pagkakataon po na kung mas mababa ang claim, ay babayadan pa rin po natin yung fixed rate. Pero kung mas mataas po ang claim, dun pa rin po tayo sa fixed rate magbabayad. So dito po sa ating case rates, uh, kasama rin po ang bayad natin, hindi lang sa mga ospital, but kasama rin po ang bayad para sa mga doktor. Okay, kasi pupuntahan ko mamaya yung dun sa issue na nag-release kayo ng funds for uh, COVID, no? Uh, dito muna kasi gusto ko lang maintindihan na uh, Mr. Chair yung uh, sistema ng post auditing at yung disbursement ng funds ng PIDA kasi hindi naman maliit na amount ito yung talking of billions of pesos uh, kaya nga nagtataka ako uh, kung sino nakaisip itong case rate system na pulisiyang ito because obviously eh, disadvantage ang gobyerno dito especially kung ang actual uh, fee that was being claimed by the patient is less than the case rate fee. Eh, lugi-lugi ho ang gobyerno dito. So, kaya nga, ang una kong tanong kanina, ay eh, kanino hong idea? Napaka-brilliant na idea yung uh, case rate system na yan. At uh, sa tingin ko, eh, dyan ho nag-uugat itong uh, uh, buhay ng sinasabing mafia. Um, yung, uh, so, kung meron kayong post-audit, system na ginagawa dyan, I would uh, presume that uh, you've identified kung uh, saan-saan nyo na-release yung pondo na overpaid or overpayment. Di ba? Tama ba ako dyan? Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, Sir, the post-audit po that we do particularly are on the one, on the services that were provided uh, especially kung ito po ay naaayon or tama po doon sa mga nakasulat nating existing policy para po mabayadan yung atin pong claim. Okay, let me stop you from there. No? Now, kung meron ganun, and uh, doon sa report na pinakita ni Chair Defensor kanina, eh maraming audit findings yung COA. And some of your disbursements, and some of the policies that Finland implemented was flagged by COA. Di ba? Tama ako? O ngayon, eh, sino ngayon paniniwalaan natin? Ano, uh, Finland nga kayo ng COA. Bakit tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung uh, sistema ngayon? Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, yes po. Uh, the, katulad po ng findings na nabanggit kanina uh, ni uh, Mr. Chair, yung pong requirement ng ating statement of accounts, uh, yan po ay uh, naibalik na at nasunod na po natin uh, pagdating dun po sa sinasabi ng uh, uh, COA na dapat ay nire-require po natin yung uh, statement of accounts. Pagdating naman po doon sa finding na tinatawag na uh, we should be paying uh, lower than the uh, kung ano po yung sinisingil na actual amount ng ating hospital uh, aligned with the uh, principles po ng ating case rate, kami po in 2017 ay nagbigay na rin ng proposal sa ating board with the options to one, the status quo, second is to, uh, uh, to pay whichever is lower, at ang pangatlo po is a uh, tiered payment. Pagdating really? po dito. Yeah. And, uh, however, during that time po, uh, 
ang naging decision po ng ating board uh, is actually on a tiered payment. Hindi po uh, uh, Mr. Pargas, board. let me cut you. Ah. Mabilis lang. Ah. Ang DOH 2017, 500,000 cases lang. Sa inyo, 700,000 cases. At 15,000, yun yung tinatanong ni Congressman Barbers, 15 billion ang binayaran nyo na hindi totoong may pneumonia. Yun is, that is already plunder. With 3 billion pesos overpayment. The year before that, ganun din. The year after that, ganun din. So, hindi nyo, hindi pwedeng itago ito ng basta-basta. Congressman Barbers, you may continue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Tama. Uh, yun nga po yung uh, gusto kong ipunto, no? And uh, I was I was saying the premise kasi nga, uh, ang next kong tanong, eh kung meron po tayo na-identify na overpayment, di ba? Ano po ba yun? Uh, thank you na lang yun dahil uh, 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 overpaid sila at uh, this, uh, the, the doctors or the host, host, uh, healthcare providers and healthcare institutions uh, malas nila because they charge a much lower fee. Uh, so, yung excess, sana pupunta yun. Doon na lang sa, sa hospital yun. Uh, kasama po, uh, Mr. Chair, kasama po kasi doon sa polisiya natin ng paglalabas noong case rate, yung tinatawag po natin na no balance billing. At yung no balance billing naman po, ito naman po ay para sa mga pasyente or dependent na mga hospital na kung saan ang babayadan din lang po ng PhilHealth would be the, uh, uh, the case rates. Pero kung ang mga pasyente po katulad nito ay gagastos ng mas malaki, uh, doon po da magkakaroon ng tinatawag na uh, kung saan malaki yung uh, pagkukulang, yun naman po yung dapat mag average or tatapat doon sa uh, sinasabi po na excess payment. Pagdating po dito, ibig sabihin, nagkakaroon po ng gain sharing para po may sasagot doon sa kakulangan naman na binabayadan. Dahil under the no balance billing po, ay hindi po dapat sisingilin ng kahit na ano ang ating pasyente. So, yun po nga, pang tapat po or pang average doon sa lalabas na kung saan may mga claims na mas mataas ang ibabayad natin, yun po yung dapat sasagot doon sa pagkukulang naman, doon sa pagdating sa no balance billing. Mas lalo ko na dito, Mr. Chair, kung sa yung uh, maliwanag. In fact, uh, if I will uh, believe everything that you just said, no, in all the, and, and your replies to my questions, I would, people would believe that there's no problem with, with field health. At uh, ito ang investigation nito ay purely imagination lang. So, but that is not the reality. Uh, kaya nga, ang, ang, ang ano lang, alam naman natin na maraming, uh, ano, ano bang policy ng, ano, ng uh, PhilHealth? Ano ba, na, kinlag yung, ah, uh, merong nag-claim ng, uh, ng bayad na hospital, di ba? Uh, so, you will uh, require, what documents does PhilHealth require? from the healthcare providers and healthcare institutions before they release the fund or they immediately release it? Mr. Chair, uh, Congressman, uh, sa atin po sa ngayon na atin pong proseso sa pag-apply uh, pag ng mga claims ng ating uh, mga ospital, uh, electronic po, meron po tayong mga requirements na forms. Kasama po dito yung ating uh, tinatawag na uh, form 1 and uh, Form 2, and kasama rin po yung hinihiling natin ngayon na Claims Form 4, na kung saan dun po sa Claims Form 4, nakalagay po yung mga pertinent findings, laboratories, uh, mga binigay po na gamot, na din po yung history of present illness, na kung saan yan po yung ginagamit natin para po magkaroon, for example, sa pneumonia ng prepayment review, yan po yung ating ginagamit as a document. At uh, kapag ka hindi naka-comply yung HCI at HCP sa mga requirements na yan, hindi kayo mag-release ng pondo. Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, opo, meron po tayong tinatawag na return to hospital matapos po itong uh, ma-validate ng ating mga adjudicators at medical reviewers kung may pagkukulang po 
o meron pong mga deficiencies, ibinabalik ito sa ating mga ospital for them to refile again. Meron din naman pong pagkakataon na otomatiko na deny na po yung claim kung non-compliant po. Uh, pagdating naman doon sa binalik natin sa ospital na RTH, pwede po nilang i-refile uli yun sa atin para ma-check po kung ito ay compliant na doon sa hinihingi po natin. Otherwise, kung ito naman po ay kompleto, ay ito po ay tinatawag nating good claim at ito po ay magpo-proceed to uh, payment. Ewan ko. <laughs> Medyo uh, ano, uh, komplikado yung iyong ano. Uh, anyway, um, nasa case rate pa lang naman tayo, Mr. Chair. Isa na lang, last katanungan. Uh, and, uh, yes, mean, last uh, question. Honorable Barbers, go ahead. Uh, si, yung uh, Vice President Lim Chaco, is he there? Bibi Lim Chaco is recognized. Mr. Chair, Your Honor, nandito po ako. You're the Vice President for Finance, correct? Yes, sir. Are you a lawyer? No, sir. Uh, so you're not a lawyer. But uh, how, how long have you been there sa Finance Department? Uh, June, July uh, 5, uh, 2018, Your Honor. 2018 up to today, no? So, so uh, lahat ba ng mga disbursements, payments to HCIs and HCPs, lahat ay dumadaan sa'yo? Uh, ang sistema po ng pagbayad natin sa ating HCI, Your Honor, is that yung claims from the hospital ay sinasubmit nila sa ating regional office and then ang ating regional office po ang nagpa-process and ang ating regional office po ang humihingi ng uh, fund transfer sa ating uh, central office sa treasury and ang ating treasury po ay nagbibigay ng pundo sa ating regional office and ang papalabas po ng pera to the HCI ay uh, through our regional office, Your Honor. Ang dami palang dinadaanan kaya talagang imposibleng uh, masayang ang pera ng taong bayan kung ganyang kahigpit no? yung dinadaanan. May I ask, uh, anong, where are you from, uh, Mr. Limchaco? I am from you... Negros Occidental, Your Honor. Pero ngayon ay nasa Tacloban po ang aking uh, pamilya. Uh, so, uh, okay. Were you instrumental in the release of certain funds to a hospital in Katarman? Uh, Your Honor, uh, mga releases natin po ng uh, IRM sa ating mga hospital, yung first part po ng uh, pag-release po natin ay through the, our regional office po, Your Honor. Uh, later part na lang po ang ating pag-release dito sa central office starting May 1 po, 2020 po. So, 88% po, po, po ng releases po natin ay through the, our regional office po, Your Honor. Okay, so yun lang. Kasi gusto ko lamang po maintindihan kung ano yung role ng SVP for finance no, dito sa usapin ng uh, uh, overpayment and disbursement of funds. Kasi malaking bagay ito dito sa investigation ito. So, uh, ikaw naman ay nagpahayag ng iyong uh, willingness no, to sign the uh, waivers sa bank secrecy, di ba? Yes po, Your Honor. I uh, signified po and uh, open po yung aking bank account uh, para po mabusisi po at saka makita po kung anong laman po. Uh, uh, would, if, 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 the, if, if the scrutiny of your account extends to your uh, wife and your immediate family members, okay lang din sa'yo yun? Ang uh, aking po ay ang, ang aking asawa po at saka yung sa akin po ay po pwede po makita po ninyo po. Ah, okay. Sige. Okay. At least para lang malinaw kasi dapat eh, pag ganyan ang attitude, yan ang dapat ginagaya ng iyong mga kasamahan. No? Na walang tinatago at open uh, yung uh, kanilang uh, uh, mga bank accounts. Hanggang sa kapatid, hanggang sa ano, siguro. Depende na lang kung anong paano i-investiga ng anti-money laundering council. So, uh, thank you Mr. Chairman. I will reserve my questions for the answer. Mr. Chair. <coughs> thank you. Uh, Thank you so Thank much, you. Honorable Barbers. Before we proceed, a uh, quick interjection by the Honorable uh, Fernandez. Uh, before that, may we ask someone from uh, PhilHealth to check what has happened to General Morales, Vice, Executive Vice President De Sous, and Senior Vice President for Legal, uh, Attorney Del Rosario. Uh, are they, were they rushed to the hospital? Are they sick? Will they be coming back to our Zoom? Babalik po ba sila at mag... Uh, 
uh, makikasama at sasagot sa mga katanungan. Kung maaari po pakiusapan natin yung mga kasama natin dito sa Philet. Quick interjection, uh, go ahead, Deputy Fernandez. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, a while ago you were discussing your, in your presentation dun sa fixed rate ano? at uh, pinakita mo sa malawak na perspektibo that uh, almost 62 billion na ata yung pong uh, overpayment. No? Uh, liwanagin lang natin. No? Siyempre sa fixed rate na itinakda sa bawat uh, packages sa mga hospital, minsan ang billing doon mas mababa. At kung mas mababa, pabayaran man pa rin yung uh, fixed rate, di ba? Halimbawa nga, pag pneumonia, 42. Ang billing mo is 18 lang. Babayaran mo pa rin yung uh, 42. At uh, dito nakita natin na uh, yung uh, maliwanag pa sa sikat ng araw, yung mga collusion, mga overpayment. As a matter of fact, even the COA have registered their uh, observation and memorandum on this uh, issue. Ako po, Mr. Chairman, kanina, kaya I wanted to uh, interject kani, kanina kasi sa mga government hospital, meron na silang fix rate dito. At sa fix rate nila, pakilabas nga yung slide, yung una. Yung unang babayaran ng uh, nire-reimburse nila sa PhilHealth, ay makikita nyo po yung blue. Kung maliit po yan, makikita nyo yung blue. Ang pinababayaran ng hospital is 6,440. Pero ang binayaran po ng PhilHealth ay 12,880. Doble. In other words, Mr. Chairman, yung sinasabi mo kanina, no? na ganito nakalaki, isang hospital pa lamang to at marami na doble ang bayad ng PhilHealth. At yan po, yung nakita po natin yan sa reconciliation summary report ng bawat hospital. Government. I'm talking about a government hospital, Mr. Chairman. In other words, Mr. Chairman, ito po hindi magsisinungaling kasi mayor po ako ng City of Santa Rosa and I got all the documents uh, from, our, um, from our LGU. And um, as a matter of fact, Mr. Chairman, meron pa po ako ibang mga dokumento na nagsasabi na nadodoble talaga yung binabayad ng mga ng PhilHealth. And I would like to encourage the different LGUs, different government hospitals to somehow follow, no? yung pagsasubmit ng uh, mga reconciliation summary report dito po sa Kongreso para makita po natin yung discrepancy na sinasabi po ng, co ng COA report dahil nga po nadodoble at napakalaki na po ng utang ng ating pong PhilHealth. Ang tanong ko sa PhilHealth, no, kahapon I was listening dun sa, sa ano, sa, hindi, bago pala yun, sa dito sa fixed rate, ano, kayo may, sino gumagawa ng policy? Siyempre, ang board, di ba? Is that correct, di ba? Uh, board ang gumagawa ng policy. At dito sa tinatawag natin fix rate, ang nag approve nito, PhilHealth Board. Tama po ba? Mr. Chair, yes po. There's a board resolution to this. So kung kayong gumawa ng policy, you can chase it right away, hindi, ba, hindi po ba? Tama rin na kaya natin baguhin yung policy. Kung alimbawa ang maximum rate natin sa alimbawa do sa pneumonia is 42, Pwede ba natin baguhin bukas na instead na 42 ang singil natin, gawin natin 30? O gawin natin na mas mababa kung ano lamang yung sinisingil ng hospital? Kasi nga, sasabihin nyo, explain nyo, kasi minsan, malaki yung singil naman, di po ba? Ngayon, ang tanong ko, uh, Mr. Fargas, pwede nyo po bang gawin yun? Mr. Chair, uh, sir, actually, in as uh, in 2017 De, wala na muna ang explanation uh, sabi mo lang yes or no kaya niyo gawin kasi policy maker kayo eh kaya o hindi ah uh, kaya po Pan okay uh, Mr. Uh, Lim Shako okay sa kabuuan ng uh, cases ng fix rate sa buong Pilipinas 2019 na lang bigay mo sa akin ng ratio ilan ang nag over sa lahat ng mga pasyente Sa buong Pilipinas, ratio nila doon sa mas maliit na sinisingil ng hospital. Ano ratio? Uh, um, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, sorry po, wala ho tayong dato sa ngayon po. Mr. Lim, siya Mr. Pargas, this is an important matter that you have... Mr. Pargas, can you reply to the Honorable uh, uh, Fernandez? 
Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think this is a financial matter. Yes. The and, uh, senior is uh, Mr. Pargas on the health finance. Di ba si Lim Shako ang sa financial management? Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, Your Honor, ako po sa fund management uh, sector po and uh, si Dr. Pargas po yung in charge ng uh, ating program management sa claims po. Si yeah, po yung health finance po policy sector. Ng, uh, Mr. Oh, oh, sige, uh, Mr. Pargas, uh, please answer. Ano ang ratio nung mas mataas ang siningil ng ating mga ospital kumpara doon sa mas mababang uh, sinisingil ng mga ospital? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Congressman, uh, from the data that we have, that I that was provided to me now, for the overpayment po, or what, what we are saying as overpayment, in 2019, we have around 22% uh, for the underpayment naman or yung mas mababa ang binayad natin, it is around 78%. Yes, sir. Oh, see, Mr. Chairman, 78% yung mga naniningil ng mababa at 22% yung mga naniningil ng mataas. Uh, Mr. Chair, Corre uh, uh, just to correct po, the 78% po, ibig sabihin po, mas mababa yung binabayad natin. Yun po namang 22% as of wait, 2019. Wait, wait, 78%? Mas mababa po yung binabayad natin. 78%? Yes po. At mas mataas na... Yun pong sa mas mataas naman na binabanggit, in 2019 is around 22%. The data po is coming from our um, actuary. Ilan, ilan po dyan ang nanloko? Nanloko? Hindi totoo. Well, Hindi, okay. Then, then, let me clarify. That, that, that is true. Itong okay. Itong uh, 700,000 ang pneumonia ninyo. 500,000 ang DOH. Taon-taon yan sa inyo, 700,000. Kaya tama yung tanong mo, Deputy Speaker Fernandez, kasi nakakatakot dyan at ito, prediksyon ko lang, uh, Congressman Barsaga, mas madaming COVID na lalabas sa data ninyo kaysa sa Department of Health. I am very positive. Pag tinignan po natin yung isang bilyon and lahat na papasok na reimbursement, mas maraming may COVID sa PhilHealth because of that case rate package. I'm already making that prediction. Go ahead, Deputy Speaker anyway, Fernandez. Anyway, at any, anyway uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think um, you have the power to change your... Uh, rule, uh, rule of the games, you know. Uh, I think it is incumbent upon you that you have to change this kind of, ano, of treatment on the fixed rate. Kahit sabihin natin na ito na policy na ginagawa nyo ngayon, sana man lamang, ano, sa pagkakatong ito, baguhin na po natin. No? Kahit magbawas kayo ng, ng ilang porsyento sa fixed rate natin, malaking bagay sa ating po mga mamamayan. At any rate, Mr. Chairman, Gusto ko po sana ipakita yung nakita kong um, uh, mga detalye sa Senado kahapon kasi hindi rin po ako nakakuha ng uh, kopya. Uh, paki ano nga yung um, second uh, slide? Susunod. Yan. Ang level 1 hospital, ano ang kaliber ng level 1 hospital? Diba, ang level 1 hospital ay uh, limited, no? Kaya nga tinawag na la, la level 1 kasi hindi siya kumpleto. Correct? Tama po ba, Mr. Pargas? Kayo na lang po ang tatanungin ko. Mr. Tama Chair? po ba? Tama. Opo, tama po. Sa level 1, meron po nakita tayo dyan na mga hospital na nilagyan nyo katulad dito sa pangalawa sa huli. 45 million isang ospital sa Tacloban City. Level 1. At ang level 1, Mr. Chairman, wala tong ICU. Paano ko ang isang pasyente na COVID-related eh kailangan ng tubuhan dito sa leeg at dalin sa ICU? So, anong gagawin ng, ng ospital? In this case, Mr. Chairman, can you I kindly answer kung Bakit napakalaki na nilalagay natin sa isang level 1 na hospital? Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, opo, again, the, the uh, computation po for the IRM, 
uh, uh, yan po ay pare-pareho, which is based on the historic claims. Yes, I know the computation. Ang computation ay yung tinatawag uh, natin na uh, average reimbursement per day, tapos uh, imumultiply po sa number ng uh, days na covered, yes. kaya ka magka-come out doon sa... Uh, amount na nilalagay ninyo. Yes. Oh. Then, But did you consider na mga level 1, kapag tinubuhan na yung pasyente, hindi na, na niya kayang i-cover, hindi niya kayang gamutin. Yes, Dahil yes, nasa yes. level 1 nga siya. Anong gagawin mo? Halimbawa, kailangan dalhin sa ICU yung, yung pasyente. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Mm. Congressman, the, the case po will be referred to a higher level facility na makakakaya po or meron po nung tinatawag Oh my God So ibig mo sabihin nandun na ako sa level 1 45 million nilagay ninyo at marami to lahat yan nagpapakita na may 45 may 40 may 30 million may 20 million level 1 Okay? Ngayon kailangan na akong tubuhan ililipat pa ako sa isang ospital na may capacity di ba? Yes, Mr. Dapat hindi ganun ang ginawa ninyo. Dapat nilagay ninyo, ninyo na lang sa mga sa mga ospital na may kapasidad. Dahil specifically, no, even you have the legal uh, uh, memorandum circular under the uh, fortuitous uh, event, it doesn't mean na hindi nyo pinarioritize ang COVID. This fund was specifically put by Bayanian Hilas uh, uh, Bayanian Ahak, Ak, Hilas 1 specifically, specifically para sa COVID. Pero dito, dahil nga ginamit nyo yung circular na sinasabi na gagamitin yung uh, pondo na nilagay for a uh, fortuitous uh, event, eh, samaw na-legalize nila, eh, Mr. Chairman, eh, na kahit ano na lang na, na sakit, pe pwede nilang uh, uh, lagyan ng pondo. But unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, hindi na, hindi na deserve yung purpose in this case. And, and I would suggest, no, meron pa kayong disbursement ng mga pondo. Am I right? Meron pa kayong di-disburse na pondo sa mga ospital? Under, Mr. Chair, under IRM, sir? Yes. Yes, sir. Meron pa. Please check rightly. Kasi yung mga level 1, hindi kaya yan ang mga COVID. Pwede yan kung, kung baga yung, okay, yung mga ginagamot natin for certain days. Pero pag nag, nag uh, deteriorate na ang kanyang kaso, hindi na yan kaya ng level 1 hospital. At any rate, Mr. Chairman, um, I would like to ask uh, Senior Vice President uh, Aragona. Uh, uh, may I just comment on that po? Sorry. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I will be tackling sana yung about dun sa... Uh, but, Mr. Chairman, this uh, issue of... Uh, Uh, IR, I, IRM, uh, IT, and finance, financial management are interrelated. And that's the reason why uh, sana ipapasok ko na, but uh, uh, with all due respect with, uh, with the chairman, I will allow to, uh, to yield for a while. And then uh, after the uh, IRM will be uh, discussed, uh, may I be allowed to, uh, to post my uh, interpolation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Definitely, uh, Honorable Fernandez, pagpasok po ng usapin sa computerization, Uh, IRM, I'm sorry. Balik po tayo doon sa IT. Uh, before I recognize the Honorable Barsaga, quick lang po tayo kay uh, Congressman Sarate, who's been waiting for us. The Honorable uh, Deputy Minority Floor Leader, Congressman Sarate, is recognized. Habang papasok po si Kong Sarate, ano pong update doon sa ating mga guest? Yung uh, nawal, nagkasakit po, tatlo na po yung nagkasakit sa Zoom kanina. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, for, yes, go ahead. For uh, uh, EVP De Jesus, he is actually confined, sir. Sino? EVP De Jesus. Si uh, SVP De Jesus is confined. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, tapos General Morales. Uh, I don't have. May sakit. At yung isa pa, Attorney Del Rosario. May sakit din. <coughs> so wala ho ngayon. Okay, uh, Congressman Sanate, uh, just to inform you, Congress, uh, Pres General Morales, the President of uh, PhilHealth, is not here because he's sick. The SVP 
De Jesus is brought to the hospital and the uh, vice president for legal uh, <coughs> Del Rosario is also not here with us. So go ahead, proceed uh, Congressman Nasarate. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon to our colleagues as well as to our resource persons. Uh, salamat po doon sa inyong uh, paunang statement dahil yun po talagang gun, sana ang unang gusto kong i-check no, as, as part ng administrative matters na uh, sana po uh, beforehand, uh, bago man lang umalis yung ating mga resource persons ay uh, magpaalam sila sa ating uh, sekretaryat o sa chair uh, para po hindi po uh, mabitin no, yung ating mga kasamahan Uh, lalong-lalo na sa ating mga pagtatanong dahil mahalaga po na uh, yung presence talaga nila, no? uh, lalong-lalo na yung mga umalis na mga opisyal. So I will reserve my uh, right, Mr. Chair, to uh, ask questions later on kung available na ang ating mga uh, naturang mga opisyal no? na umalis. Uh, well, kanina yan dyan sila pero umalis. Uh, having said that, Mr. Chair, um, salamat uli at... Uh, sa joint committees na ito ay uh, naging kabahagi yung uh, aming final na mga resolutions no uh, lalong lalo na para maimbestigahan ang usapin ng uh, mga an anomalous transactions no uh, di umano diyan sa PhilHealth including itong interim uh, reimbursement me mechanism at uh, uh, doon din sa usapin ng kanilang ICT uh, projects no and uh, i uh, appreciate the uh, inputs earlier of the chair uh, chair defensor no pinakita kung paano nga uh, ang pondo ng ating uh, uh, PhilHealth ay uh, several times nang uh, question yung pag-google nito ng mga nakaraang panahon at nagtuloy-tuloy ito kahit nasa ngayon ano uh, at in fact uh, malinaw na sa atin at malinaw sa uh, representasyon ito na ang PhilHealth talaga is a failed system No, uh, from uh, before uh, now and uh, even uh, in the future uh, kung hindi talaga matugunan yung pangunahing problema ng ating healthcare system ano uh, sa ngayon nakikita natin Mr. Chair uh, with the ongoing investigations both uh, by the Senate and the House nagtuturuan yung mga opisyal uh, ng PhilHealth no uh, and uh, I agree with the statement earlier of the honorable barbers kung pakikinggan natin ang mga opisyal ng PhilHealth, parang uh, naandyan ngayon sa plenary, it appears na wala naman palang problema at uh, we are just imagining things. No? But that is not uh, the reality. No? Uh, in fact, coming from the horse's mouth, sa kanila mismong mga, uh, mga bibig, uh, si, uh, sec uh, si uh, President Morales was uh, in the Senate uh, has been saying na talagang mayroong mafia dyan sa loob. No? At in fact, nahihirapan siya. Uh, yung namang mga inakusahan niyang mafia ay sinasabi rin na merong mafia rin sa loob. No? May mga tiwaling opisyal. Uh, so, uh, ito yung mga problema ang uh, kinakaharap natin ngayon, Mr. Chair. No? And, uh, gusto nating uh, matingnan no? uh, ano pa ang pwedeng magawa no? ng uh, uh, kongresong ito. No? Uh, Nung nakaraang araw, may nagpasa lang ng uh, economic stimulus package ng Kongreso, yung Bayanihan 2, at meron na namang pondong parang ilalaan doon sa sa PhilHealth, no? at sa, sa 10 billion. No? So bibigyan na naman natin sila uli ng uh, parang uh, blank check no? na gugugulin nila. Eh, uh, with uh, with uh, ongoing issues now, hounding uh, dito sa PhilHealth, ay baka mayayari na naman ang mamamayan nito. No? Uh, hindi mayayari yung mga tiwaling opisyal, pero ang mamamayan dahil uh, mapariwara na naman yung pondo ng PhilHealth. No? Uh, and uh, uh, hanggang nga ngayon, itong, uh, uh, ngayong taon na ito, binigyan sila ng 71 billion. Next year, may 71 billion na naman daw ibibigay ang uh, BBM sa kanila. So, uh, Pupunta na ako sa aking mga tanong, Mr. Chair. Ano? Gusto ko lang hindi po, uh, sundan at huwag mabitawan yung uh, naunang mga katanungan kanina ni uh, majority, uh, Minority Leader uh, Benny Abante. No? Uh, na, sinagot na rin ito partially ni uh, SBP uh, uh, Vargas. No? But uh, I think uh, kailangan kong sundan ng uh, or uh, si uh, SBP Lemchaco. No? Doon sa usapin ng accreditation fee. No? At sila, na since it was 
started until at, at least uh, 2018 ay pinaghahatian ito ng mga opisyal ng PhilHealth. Na, and it was only in 2019 na diniscontinue ito at nilagay na sa kanilang uh, sa income no, ng uh, PhilHealth. Uh, if I may ask Mr. Chair, no, either uh, SBB Vargas or SBB Lemchaco, uh, uh, sino sa mga opisyal now present no, in our hearing ang uh, nakatanggap ng uh, uh, mga allowances no, uh, since I think, until, until 2018 no, uh, na pinaghahatian dito sa accreditation film search here? Um, anybody can answer the uh, query of uh, Congressman uh, Sarate? Kanino mo ni refer ang question mo, uh, Congressman Sarate? Anybody, Mr. Chair, if uh, SBP Liam Shaco is uh, a VP uh, for Finance, if I may... If I'm VP for Finance. Andito po ba? Sa fund, siguro, Mr. Liam Shaco or... or uh, Pargas? Mr. Ah, Mr. Yes, Chair. you are recognized. Uh, 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 Congressman, uh, apologies po because I have to check, but uh, ito po yung tinatawag na Mission Critical uh, Allowance or MCCA na nabanggit po na ibinibigay na nanggagaling doon sa accreditation fee. Uh, Kung ito po ay uh, i-validate ko po pa, pero ito po ay ang mga officers ang nakatatanggap at I think ang mga doctors po. Uh, thank you for that answer, Mr. Chair. Uh, in that case, so nakatanggap rin si SBT Vargas uh, sa allowance na ito, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes po, Cong uh, Congressman. And I think this was stopped sometime in 2015 or 2016. Again, I will have to validate po on this. Uh, of course, you can validate that uh, SBP Vargas, no? Dahil uh, ikaw mismo, inamin mo ngayon, tumanggap ka. If, 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 kung maitanong ko lang, Mr. Chair, magkano po ba uh, at ang uh, allowance na ito na tinatanggap ninyo monthly before it was discontinued, Mr. Chair? Um, you were asking, um, Mr. Chair, si uh, Congressman Sarate, si... Yes, uh, um, Mr. Pargas pa rin po. Same uh, ano, query, uh, Mr. Pargas, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, Sir Congressman, uh, pakiulit lang po ng tanong, magkano po yung... Uh, magkano po at monthly, uh, kayo po mismo, dahil si inamin ninyo na uh, you are recipient of this allowance, magkano po ang natatanggap ninyo uh, monthly or uh, the average from this uh, allowance na binabanggit ninyo na pinaghahati-hatian ninyo mula sa accreditation fee? Uh, Mr. Chair, again, uh, Congressman, uh, yan pong allowance na yan ay naitigil na po sometime. Yes, I'm not, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may uh, interrupt uh, SBP Vargas, alam, uh, nasabi nga na po yan, na, natigil na. Ang tinatanong po, magkano, how much is that allowance monthly na pinaghahati-hatian ninyo. Kayo, masagot nyo yan, SBP Vargas, dahil uh, sabi nyo kanina, kasama kayo doon sa nakatanggap, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. So, magkano daw yung uh, allowance na pinaghahati-hatian? If I am not uh, mistaken, that's the question of uh, Congressman Sarate. Please answer. Mr. Chair, uh, apologies po, pero sa ngayon hindi ko na po natatandaan. By, uh, we will have to check on the data. Uh, what about uh, SBP and Shaco? Mr. Chair, Thank Your you. Honor, uh, hindi ho kami preparado to answer that one, Your Honor. As I mentioned kanina po, uh, we will uh, submit the report on that one, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Once maka, maka uh, rating ho tayo sa opisina, ay magsasubmit ho kami ng uh, report po dito on that note, your, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, uh, thank you for that uh, unsatisfactory answer, Mr. Chair. No? Uh, dapat po talagang handa sila dahil ho tal uh, hindi ho usapin ito ng uh, 
uh, maliliit lang na pondo. No? Uh, in fact, uh, matagal na ang lumabas ang issue na ito at dapat naging handa sila sa mga usapin na ito. And uh, in the next hearing, uh, uh, we appreciate, no? uh, if before that hearing, you can submit a uh, complete report on how that uh, fund, no? uh, accreditation fund, uh, was expended or spent, no? na pinagatihatihan lamang ng mga ilang opisyal uh, ng PhilHealth until it was uh, stopped. Now, I'll go to another uh, uh, point, Mr. Chair. No? Uh, nabanggit na rin kanina uh, ng uh, mga naiwan ng mga uh, mga resource persons dyan. Uh, itong usapin ng, uh, uh, at ng ating mga kasama, itong usapin ng interim reimbursement mechanism. Uh, pwede ko bang matanong kay, kay uh, SBP Vargas or uh, kay SBP Lemsiaco, uh, sino po ang, uh, kanino pong idea itong uh, uh, pagsagawa ng interim reimbursement mechanism, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, may I get an answer? Please answer. Um, Mr. Chair, um, Sir, uh, Mr. Congressman, uh, Yolanda, I think started. Uh, Yolanda started in. Uh, sorry, apologies. Po. Yolanda started in uh, 2013 when we had the Yolanda. So uh, I need to check for the records then uh, on the proponents. Uh, ang tanong ko po, ito ba ang inter, uh, interim reimbursement mechanism? Uh, are you saying na nagsimula ito nung panahon pa ng Yolanda, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair. There was an interim reimbursement mechanism provided during the uh, fortuitous event Yolanda, also when there was a Marawi siege, and also the, mo the more recent one, which is the Taal. And uh, as it is po, uh, the pandemic right now. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, SBP Vargas. Uh, can you tell us, can you tell this committee, no? can you inform this committee, ano ang legal basis uh, for PhilHealth to implement an interim reimbursement mechanism? Is it a part? Uh, is it a tune in line with its charter of uh, uh, reimbursing payments expended by healthcare institutions that are accredited or even not accredited by PhilHealth, Mr. Chair? Opo. For, uh, for the, Mr. Chair, for the uh, IRM, especially for this uh, uh, pandemic, uh, there was this uh, issuance of Proclamation 922 uh, placing every, uh, the whole Philippines in a public health emergency. Also, the uh, Proclamation placing the whole Philippines in a calamity which are also a uh, part of the uh, basis pagdating po doon sa IRM for this uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, the IRM naman po as it is, is also again part of a uh, board resolution that was approved by the, uh, uh, corp by the board uh, of corporation. Also in our uh, charter po, allowed po tayo on uh, provider payment mechanisms or financing in our seven, uh, under 7875. When, when, with regards to prospective payment naman po, uh, ito po yung naunang pagbibigay natin or prepositioning of the fund, under the UHC 11223, uh, tayo po ay ina-allow to have a uh, uh, prospective payment mechanism. Okay. Uh, thank you, SBP Vargas. Yes. No? Uh, so, uh, ito siguro ang dapat matingnan ngayon ng uh, Kongreso at ng Kumiting ito, Mr. Chair. No? Uh, dahil nakikita na natin na itong uh, IRM, no? uh, and sinasabi nila merong legal basis from the laws, uh, enumerated even sa universal health care uh, law, no? ay uh, nagiging nasa sa sentro ng kontrobersiya ngayon. Dahil talagang uh, taliwas ito doon sa nature no? ng insurance. No? Kahit sabihin pa nating uh, 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 ina, pinapayagan ito. Dahil uh, kung titingnan mo, hindi ito reimbursement. No? Cash advance. No? Binibigyan mo ng cash advance ang mga ospital. No? So, pondo ng mamamayan, pondo ng bayan, ay binibigyan mo sa mga ospital 
Privado man yan o hindi, uh, accredited, in fact, dito sa kanilang circular, even non-accredited uh, hospitals, non-field accredited hospitals are uh, allowed no, na makakuha ng pondo dito sa inalat nila na 30 billion IRM. No? And uh, sa tingin po natin ay uh, uh, ito yung pinagmumulan din ng uh, anomalya, no? ng anomalya uh, ngayon dahil uh, lumalabas na nga, no? mayroong mga ibang ospital uh, na kahit hindi naman sila accredited, ay nakakakuha sila ng pondo from IRM at mayroong mga ospital na uh, hindi sila uh, capable at nabanggit kanina ito ni uh, uh, Deputy Speaker uh, uh, Nandes no na uh, yung uh, Fernandez yung uh, kahit sa pagtugon dito sa problema ng pandemya ng COVID ay hindi sila capable but they were given advances no so yun po ang siguro na uh, dapat nating uh, pagtuunan din ng pansin dito Mr. Chair no uh, dahil nga um uh, Nitong nakaraan, nag-release na, if I'm not mistaken, 14 billion no? uh, ang PhilHealth sa iba't ibang mga hospital and they have yet to submit to us uh, ang uh, complete liquidation nito. At out of that 14 billion, ay nabanggit na rin na, uh, 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 as we speak now, only a billion, no? uh, only a billion has uh, been liquidated. Tama po ba yun, uh, SBP Vargas? As Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Mike. Sorry. Mr. Chair, Congressman, as reported po by our finance, uh, around 1 billion po has been liquidated so far. And uh, isn't it uh, through uh, SBP Vargas that under your, uh, the guidelines no, set forth under, under this IRM, uh, 60, you are only given 60 days no, para maliquidate. And beyond 60 days na, hindi pa rin na-liquidate itong 14 billion na ito. Is that correct, uh, SBP Vargas? Mr. Chair, yes po, as of to date. Uh, sorry, I am given an updated number by our finance. 2.4 billion daw po na ang na-liquidate as of to date. Um, yun pong ating uh, uh, liquidation as per our circular na nakasulat po, uh, circular 2020-007 on the liquidation, ay ang sinasabi po doon, ay dapat po mag-start na yung liquidation from the time na may na-submit na claims noong pong panahon na na-declare yung calamity which is on uh, March 26. So dapat po nag-start na yung liquidation sa mga claims na masasubmit that time. However, uh, nagkaroon din po ng uh, memorandum ang ating uh, presidente to initially defer the uh, liquidation Dahil nga po hindi pa tapos ang pandemya na nangyayari and para matulungan po yung ating mga hospital na nangangailangan pa rin. So yun po yung nangyari until nagkaroon din po kami ng uh, memorandum naman galing sa ating uh, management pa rin na sinasabi na it is uh, uh, hindi, na, hindi siya deferred but rather it is an option for the regions to liquidate ka agad or defer muna for the meantime. Pero hindi po din sinasabi na hindi po ito ililiquidate because the process really is for it to be liquidated. Uh, salamat, SBP Vargas, Mr. Chair. No? <clears throat> so, ang mangyayari po ngayon, the, despite uh, the controversy, no, uh, dahil uh, i-defer yung liquidation, tuloy-tuloy lang yung uh, pag uh, bibigay ninyo ng cash advances no kasi nakapag-release na kayo ng 14 billion so you still have at least 16 billion na pwede ninyong uh, i-google or ipa-advance ipa sa iba't ibang mga healthcare institutions uh, tama po ba yung SDP Vargas uh, Mr. Chair sa ngayon po gaya po nung nabanggit din kanina uh, noon pong una tayo nga po ay nagbibigay doon po ng IRM para po doon sa mga ospital at siya nga kung hindi man po ospital. Pero sa ngayon po ay nagkaroon na rin po ng memorandum ang ating korporasyon na ito po ay nili, uh, una nililimit po natin doon sa mga ospital na merong mga COVID patients or attending to COVID patients 
and part of the requirement for the release of the IRM ngayon would be a report coming from the field na magre-request po ng IRM na meron nga pong ganitong mga COVID statistics. Sa ngayon po, uh, yung pong IRM natin ay ibibigay na lamang sa mga ganong identified na facility. Okay, uh, thank you uh, Mr. Chair uh, SBC Bagas. So along that line na lang po, uh, so yun, uh, lilinawin ko lang po, no? uh, out of the 30 billion, as of now, 16 billion pa yung hindi ninyo na i-release. Tama po ba, SBP Vargas? Mr. Chair, uh, Congressman, it is 27 billion po, not 30 billion. Out of the 27 billion, uh, 14 billion. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, well, we have released around 14.9 billion po. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, para na lang po ma-exe, ma ma no? Uh, uh, out of that uh, 14 billion na inyong uh, i-release na no sa iba't ibang mga hospital, uh, maari na lang pong mag uh, submit kayo ng report dito sa komite, dalawang komite na ito at sa kinatawang ito. Uh, magkano po ba yung na-advance ninyo or ang IRM that uh, are uh, and doon sa liquidated ano? Uh, ang uh, talagang nagastos doon sa COVID-19 interventions at magkano naman yung hindi COVID-19 related interventions no uh, dahil sa sinabi ninyo uh, uh, as it is now ang inyong policy na lang ay kung magre-release magbibigay man ng IRM ay doon na lang ito para sa uh, COVID-19 related interventions uh, Mr. Chair SDP Vargas can you do that Mr. Chair Congressman uh, we will submit po for all the data that we have right now dahil nga po unang-una Kasama po sa special privilege under uh, for Twitter's events ay ang mga facilidad po can actually submit their claims 120 days. So, na-extend po yon. So, uh, kung ano po yung nasa aming data ngayon, including the liquidation, nung ang sinasabi na 2.4 billion, and yun pong uh, listahan ng 711 facilities na nabigyan, ng 14.9 billion ibibigay po namin sa inyo. Yes. VP uh, Pargas ang yun pong tinatanong ni Congressman na uh, Sarate, yung pong 1 billion na nandiyan na sa inyo kasi may liquidation na naman. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes po. Again, nabanggit ko po kanina na so far po ang sabi po ng ating finance as to date po it's the, the na, ang na liquidate na po is 2.4 billion. Okay, so please submit that. Go ahead, uh, Congressman Sarate. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, along that line, Mr. Chair, nabanggit rin kanina ni SDP Vargas, no? itong implementation ng uh, IRM, no? na isa sa mga sentro ng pinag-uusapan ngayon, ay uh, by virtue also of a board resolution. No? Uh, pwede ko bang matanong si SDP Vargas if he knows? No? Uh, dahil uh, birth, uh, board resolution ito, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi lang ito in-implement ng uh, inyong level, at ito ay may imprimatur ng board. Uh, ang uh, tanong ko kayo kay SBP Vargas is uh, alam niya. Uh, dahil naging sentro na ng kontrobersiya ito, ano, may ginagawa po ba ang ating uh, uh, PhilHealth Board on this, Mr. Chair? Uh, Congressman uh, Sarate, uh, we have invited yung ating po mga board uh, for the next uh, committee hearing, including Treasury okay. and uh, the Department of Health. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. I appreciate that. Uh, kasi talagang gusto ko sana ang hilingin na uh, uh, dahil uh, si Secretary Duque, siya rin ang chair ng uh, board. Ano? At uh, uh, as it is now, ay halos wala tayong narinig pa sa kanya. No? Kung ano Mr. ang chair. kanyang uh, uh, statement dito sa controversy founding uh, uh, field health as it is, uh, as it is now. No? Yes. So, uh, kung gusto mo sa natin, uh, BP, bar, SBP, Pargas, can you please reply. Apo. Uh, Mr. Chair, Congressman, actually po, we have uh, two board members who are here now. Uh, board member Padua and board member uh, Gonzaga. Uh, yes, we have here on the floor, uh, Congressman Sarate. Would you like to ask them? Uh, yes, uh, if, they can, if they can comment uh, on this issue, Mr. Chair. No? Uh, dahil sila yung nasa policy at uh, may, mainit na ang isyong ito, ano ba on their level ang ginagawa nila on this, uh, Mr. Chair? Sige po ma'am, can you kindly reply? Uh, 
Ano po yung question nyo, uh, Your Honor? Ano daw po ang ginawa ng board ukol dito sa mga nakikitang mga mali sa policy uh, dito po sa PhilHealth? Now, marami pong ginagawa po ang board of directors to assist the management. Example na lang po, yung kinasabi niyong ano, uh, case rates. Now, actually, dito sa case rate na to, yung present po ha, uh, during the last audit uh, committee meeting, we asked the management to look into the average cost of uh, hospitalization for the different categories of COVID patients like mild, moderate, severe, critical. Sabi namin, tignan ninyo, uh, because we also anticipated the pos possibility of hospitals stretching the uh, yung billing statement nila based on the case rates. Iniisip namin, baka itong mga hospital ay ina-adjust nila yung billing statement nila doon sa aming uh, package rates. Uh, ina-anticipate din namin yung mga possibility na pwedeng gawin yun ng mga hospitals. But um, may mga feedback naman po kami, Your Honor, na may mga hospital talaga na yung mga yung hospital exceeds Philip, yung PhilHealth's rate package. Talagang mataas po talaga ang cost ng COVID. Considering po yung mga servi services like laboratory, kung titingnan niyo po yung gastos, hospital tests, doctor's professional fees, charge, charges for intubation, yung tinutubuhan po ang ano, pasyente, yung respirator, medication, laboratory tests, yung kanilang personal protective equipment, napakarami pong charges. Yung iba po, umaabot talaga ng millions. Marami pong makakapag-testify nun. Uh, 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 yan po ang nagiging basis po ng ano. Quick interjection lang, ma'am. Kasi naman, ma'am, yung sa mga malalaki, hindi naman po PhilHealth nagbabayad nun eh. Ang nagbabayad pa rin nun yung private. Pagdating po sa public hospital, pag sumobra din po sa package rate, babayaran din po yun through IX, kung ano man pong support sa government, at hindi po yun na uh, binabayaran ng PhilHealth. Sir, uh, nung una po talaga, yung, I think yung emergency, uh, the first month ng pag-declare ng emergency, nag uh, in, wala pong limit muna to help patients nung first Tama month. Po. Then after that, para hindi naman po mag-bleed ang pera ng PhilHealth, nag, uh, nagtatag na po ng ano, nag-set na po ng uh, case rate package na ito na dapat kasi baka maubos din po naman ang pera ng PhilHealth. Ang punto ko lang ma'am, pag sumobra po sa case rate, babayaran po ng ibang tao, hindi po PhilHealth. Pero pagka po nagkulang, mas mababa sa case rate, mapupunta sa hospital. Okay lang po yan sa public hospital. Pero pagdating po sa private, nabubulsa yung pera ng ospital. Kasi yung pagka ako kunyari, or whoever, God forbid, magkasakit, severe, 788,000, ang bill ko is 1 million, I will still have to pay the excess of 788,000, ma'am. Opo, pero ang kaya ko po sinasabi po to, Your Honor, Kasi sinasabi nila, napakalaki naman ang binibigay nyo at itinatapon dito. Sa, sa, ang lalaki ng mga releases nyo sa mga hospitals, parang sobra-sobra. Meron pa nga hong sinasabi na, bakit 10, 10 million ang binigay nyo ang napakaliit ng hospital? But considering po yung amount uh, yung, uh, ng, uh, ng cost of hospitalization, Kung kukwentahin nyo, ilang patients lang po yun. Kasi po ma'am, ang ano ng mga tao, it's not so much yung paglalagay ng pera sa ospital. Ang nakikita nila, yung potential na naman sa corruption based on the all case rate na sinet. Now, I, now, I think, uh, sir, merong control measures. That was set also by PhilHealth. Uh, If there were control measures, ma'am, think... ma since kailan po kayo nandyan po sa... Uh, kami, board. kami po yung bago, ano, uh, yes, Your Honor. Kaya yes, katatapos lang namin ng one year. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Kaya nga po, ang punto ko po sa inyo, 
Yung pneumonia lang ho, classic case, every year 700,000, meron po yung case rate, sobra-sobra po ang lumalabas, even from the statistics ng DOH. So anyway, ma'am, one year pa lang po naman pala kayo. So I got some tinut general morality. Yes, so ma'am, if I may just recognize uh, Congressman Sarate, go ahead, Kong Sarate. Kong Sarate, go ahead. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Chair. No? Uh, so yun po ang uh, gusto nating malaman. No? At uh, maganda rin pong sa susunod na hearing ay uh, uh, andito ang... Uh, chair ng board no na si Secretary Duque. But uh, ang dagdag ko siguro ang tanong uh, uh, dugtong doon sa nabanggit ninyo Mr. Chair no. Uh, if the board is now seeing na uh, itong uh, nagiging controversial na itong IRM uh, ano po nung ni-raise niyo ito sa management uh, meron po ba silang uh, ginawa uh, ni report sa inyo na kagyat na action nila uh, dahil uh, nabanggit na, na nabanggit nyo kanina may mga ospital binigyan ng malaki uh, na hindi naman pala uh, nagiging questionable ito no halimbawa uh, doon sa aming uh, uh, inihain na resolution nabanggit ata doon yung isang ospital sa Davao del Sur no uh, sa Saint Benedict Hospital ata in Davao del Sur na nakatanggap ng 11 million from IRM last May 5 no? okay. but uh, we know for a fact na Diyan sa Dabo po, ang uh, lahat ng mga, ang mga uh, maraming kaso sa COVID ay doon naman talaga dinadala sa Southern Philippines Medical Center. No? And uh, so, uh, yun po ang gusto nating matanong doon sa ating uh, kagalang-galang na member ng board. No? Uh, it's, uh, it's one thing that uh, you raise it, but uh, as a policy-making body ng PhilHealth, ano po yung proactive na ginawa ninyo at ano po ang... Uh, uh, naging uh, tugon dito ng uh, management ng field health, Mr. Chair. Congressman Sarate, that would be your last question if you don't mind. Uh, management is recognized? Well, may, mayroon lang akong, uh, sige, may, uh, sige, Mr. Chair, may uh, short follow-up lang ako kung ano man ang naging sagot. Sige po. Congressman, I uh, mean, uh, SBP Pargas, you're recognized. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think uh, it's being asked with the board kung ano daw po ang nagawa. Uh, pagdating doon sa... Uh, tinanong na, na po ni Congressman Sarate yun. I think sa, sa inyo po, sa management. Congressman Sarate, sa management ba o sa board ang iyong question? Well, principally sa board. Then, uh, may pinag kung may pinagawa ba ang board sa kanila and uh, follow up to that, ano ang ginawa ng management, Mr. Chair? So, uh, okay. siguro, uh, unahin natin pakinggan yung uh, member ng board. Uh, may we request the board to... Ma'am, uh, uh, if you don't mind, ma'am, ano pong full name nila? Yeah, I, I, hindi ko po naintindihan yung question, Your Honor, kasi sa Mindanao ba yung tinatanong? What have we done? Ang pagbibigay po ng mga pondo sa iba't ibang ospital, uh, ano po yung ginawa ng uh, board ukol po dito? Now, uh, the, uh, the management followed a certain formula. Uh, State your name and what office you're presenting uh, yes. sa board. Sorry po. Yes, I am Brigadier General Martin Padua, retired po. Uh, I was the former, the Chief Nurse of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and currently the Dean of uh, Arellano University College of Nursing in Pasig. Ma'am, go ahead, ma'am. Please continue. Okay. Uh, uh, siguro, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may cut, no, para lang uh, maintindihan ni... Yung uh, pondo po uh, kasi na, pina, na pinadala, we were informed... Uh, is based on a certain formula na I think it was already explained by Dr. Pargas. Yung po yung sinusunod nila, I think they would look into how much the different facilities had been, uh, yung previous claims nila for 90 days ba yun, ano, Dr. Pargas? And then they, they multiply that. Uh, explain na nga lang Dr. Pargas yung, ano, yung formula. Kasi okay po. yung po yung sinusunod, and Apo. I think it is realistic. Kasi magkano ba talaga ang nagagastos ng hospital na ito for 90 days? So they base it uh, from that uh, amount. Para kasi merong average na ho yun eh. Di dapat yun po ang ibibigay natin. Para uh, it is more exact and accurate. 
Kaya nakikita namin, naman namin na it is uh, like realistic. Tama ho lang ba? Kasi ito naman talaga ang nagagastos nila. Bakit hindi ho natin ibi ibibigay? Kasi uh, more or less, yun naman ang number of patients that they are catering. Kaya naiintindihan po naman namin yung uh, ano non ang reason na yun. <coughs> Mr. Pargas, your, uh, Dr. Pargas, yeah. you're recognized. Uh, yes po. Uh, again, uh, this is based on the historical uh, claims of the hospitals and uh, they were provided. However, again, uh, because of uh, uh, there was also a change in the uh, direction of the management, which later on focused for those facilities which have COVID patients. So, yun din po yung nangyari. And just to check lang po, for the COVID packages po, actually, kung babasahin po natin, it is a no copay uh, for any patient or for any level of the sakit po. Uh, hindi po dapat maniningil ang isang privado or isang uh, uh, pa publikong pagamutan pagdating po doon sa ating COVID packages. Uh, kasi nga po, ang naging uh, input nitong pagkocompute ng ating COVID packages are already the itemized billing uh, costs of the hospitals. So, kung titingnan po natin, under our COVID packages, no co-payment po siya dapat. Hindi lang po siya uh, for <coughs> sponsored, but for all na magkakaroon po or mag a ng ating uh, uh, COVID packages. Even okay. the testing uh, po. Thank you. So, thank honorable, you, uh, yes, Honorable Zarate. Uh, uh, just a follow-up, uh, follow Mr. Chair. No? Uh, tama naman po yun. No? Uh, sabi nila, may pinagbabasihan nga, uh, according to uh, our uh, board member, Padua, uh, yung uh, average reimbursement per day paid by PhilHealth last year. Pero ngayon po, nakikita natin, napaka-arbitrary niyan. No? Uh, the, just because itong hospital na ito, in 2019, for example, napakalaki yung kanyang average uh, uh, assess reimbursement per day, ay ganun din po ang ikakas-advance natin sa kanila, especially during this time na itong uh, kinakaharap natin problema sa uh, pandemya ng COVID. No? At uh, kung ang atin pong tinutugunan ay itong pandemya ng COVID, ay hindi po dapat arbitrary yung pag, uh, pagbibigay natin ng cash advances uh, cash sa mga hospital na ito. No? So yun po ang pinupunto natin dahil uh, ang nangyayari ngayon, uh, sinasabi... Uh, naririnig na natin na uubos na ang pondo ng PhilHealth. No? Uh, pero tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung problema natin dito sa COVID-19. No? Uh, thousands upon thousands ang infected pa rin everyday. Kaya yun po ang uh, uh, sana po ay makita ng uh, PhilHealth. Although sabi nila, there's already an adjustment. No? Uh, there, may naiiwan pa doon sa kanilang 30 billion na yan. Pero dapat siguro, Mr. Chair, tingnan natin uh, sa level ng Kongreso kung ito ba ang ganitong mekanismo ay tama talaga. No? Uh, especially, uh, dahil nabanggit kanina, 58% nung uh, binabayaran ng PhilHealth ay private. No? So, uh, yan ay uh, kailangan matingnan. No? Only 42% ang public. And uh, dito na lang po siguro sa huling uh, paglilinaw ko kay uh, SBP uh, uh, Vargas, Mr. Chair. No? Nabanggit niya kanina, uh, doon sa case rate, uh, Ang uh, mas uh, 78% ang uh, binabayaran ng PhilHealth ay mas mababa naman doon sa case rate ano at uh, 22% ay mas mataas. In uh, money terms uh, Mr. Chair, pwede ba nating matanong kay uh, uh, SVP Vargas no? Uh, ano ang equivalent nito pag sinabi nating 22% lang naman yung mas mataas pero magkano yung claims nila? At yung 78% na sabi natin ay uh, uh, mas mababa, magkano din naman ang equivalent uh, in money terms, Mr. Chair? Uh, with the indulgence of the, ma the uh, senior deputy minor leader, that would be the last question. Please reply, uh, Vice President Pargas. Uh, Mr. Chair, Congressman, uh, as to the data provided po, uh, for 2019 po, the actual amount is 8 billion 102 uh, million 857,638 and the claims amount po paid is uh, 11,756,629,209 uh, pesos. 
for the underpayment naman po or yung mas mababa po ang ibinayad natin, the actual amount is 245 billion 297 million 61,803 for the claims amount paid po ang binayada naman natin is 41 million a uh, 41 billion 710,608 710 million 608,500 ay sorry po uh, apology sir for this is 2019 po ang actual amount is 186 billion 635 million ang binayadan po natin is 63 billion 626,734 ah uh, SBP Varga, simple po yung tanong ni Kong Sarate. Ang overpayment is 32%. 22%. 22%. Ano yung equivalent amount? 2 billion? 1 billion? The 22% po would be equal to around 3 billion. Yun po namang underpayment or the 78% is around It's okay. Okay na po yung uh, overpayment. Ah, uh, underpayment. 120 billion po. Uh, okay. Underpayment. Under so, thank you kung sarate. Uh, can I just uh, make a short manifestation, Mr. Chair, ano? Uh, while I reserve my uh, other questions doon sa ICT. Uh, ang nakita lang natin dito, Mr. Chair, kailangan uh, uh, sigurong i-repasso at uh, i-review muli ng uh, kongresong ito yung uh, uh, kalakaran ngayon no, ng ating healthcare system talaga ay nakaasa sa PhilHealth. No? Samantalang uh, uh, taon-taon, at papunta na naman tayo this year no, sa pagbibigay ay pag-google ng pondo uh, for next year, uh, taon-taon ang uh, nakikita ng mamamayan Napakalaki ng pondo uh, na inilaan natin sa DOH but uh, in reality uh, 43% to 45% ng pondo ng DOH ay napupunta sa PhilHealth no at ang mga pampublikong ospital natin natatapyasan yung kanilang uh, pondo for their um, uh, operating expenses for their capital expenditures and even sa PS nila dahil uh, a big chunk of our budget now goes to PhilHealth no especially with the implementation of the uh, universal health care kaya siguro Uh, dapat matingnan din ito, uh, lalong na sa nangyayari ngayon, Mr. Chair, nakita na natin, noon pa man, since uh, ilang kongreso na, no? uh, it, this is now my third term in Congress, kayo po, Mr. Chair, napakatagal nyo na sa kongreso, pero alam ninyo, walang kongreso ata na hindi nag-imbestiga dito sa PhilHealth. No? At uh, napakaraming uh, anomalya at nagiging uh, uh, gatasan ito ng marami, no? lalong-lalo na, na yung mga sinasabi nilang mga sindikato o mafia sa loob. No? So, sana po, uh, magkaroon na ng uh, uh, katapusan itong uh, bleeding at uh, pagsasamantala sa pondo ng mamamayan, Mr. Chair, uh, dito sa usapin no? ng uh, 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 pondo ng PhilHealth na ngayon nga ay uh, nasasal nasasalang na naman sa mga maraming controversies. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair, at magandang hapon po sa lahat. Thank you, Honorable uh, Barsaga. We will now, uh, before I proceed to the Honorable, uh, I mean, the Honorable Sarate, maraming salamat po. Bago po punta kayo, Honorable Barsaga, Uh, SBP Pargas, oh, may mabilis na tanong lang ho. Ang sabi nyo, batay dun sa tanong ni Honorable Sarate, ang tansyan ninyo sa 2019, tatlong bilyon ang overpayment. Tama? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Una o, oh, yung underpayment, there's no such thing as underpayment kasi nakapackage kayo. Ibig sabihin, uh, hindi kayo nagbabayad ng lagpas sa package. Tama po ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Ngayon po, SBP Pargas, kayo po'y under oath. Tatlong bilyon po yan. Pag sinabi niyong overpayment at proven yan, plunder po kayong lahat. Mr. Chair, uh, again, the data po was provided, but uh, again, sir, uh, the, the way we pay or for the provider payment mechanism that we follow right now under the case rate is really a payment of the fixed rate. Okay, so, okay. Apo, alam ko na po yung case rate. Alam ko yung global budgeting. Alam ko yung uh, sinasabi niyo mga iba't ibang konsepto sa pagbayad ng... ng uh, pero kayo po yung health policy. May legal po dito. And legal can always answer me. Alam niyo po, 
na pag sinabi niyong 3 billion ang overpayment niyo and you were under you are under oath plunder po kayong lahat Mr. Chair uh, first we don't consider it as an overpayment because as it is we are paying according to the uh, provider payment that we have which is again nga po we are paying on the amount which is fixed uh, the case rates that we pay right now and uh, Ito po are not considered uh, overpayment or in excess because again... Meron po ba kayo because your health policy exemption under the law of uh, going beyond the price of anything procured in terms of service, in terms of uh, products? We're under, under the, Mr. Chair, under the law po ng PhilHealth uh, in 7875, um, it is also part of the uh, uh, that case rate payment mechanism is also an accepted uh, uh, an accepted uh, provider okay, I'll, payment I'll, I'll mechanism. Correct. Dilipat under... na po kay, kay uh, Congressman na no, no, uh, Barsaga, but kaklari ko ulit sa inyo ito, ah, SBP Vargas, lipat na po siya. Ang nakalagay lang po dun sa inyo is the concepts. That there is global budgeting, that you are case rate policy, fee for service, concepts po yun. Pero never nagkaroon doon na sinasabi na beyond doon sa ibinigay na serbisyo, beyond doon sa cost ng produkto, pinapayagan kayo as GOCC na ito po ay bayaran nyo ng mas mataas. So by your own admission, again I'm warning you, may ganito po kayong... Sinasabi, that's only one year. Pero ang sinasabi ko nga po sa inyo, from the past several years, I would think it has gone to about 153 billion. I think the the uh, analysis ng kuwa sa inyo ay tama. So, Honorable Barsaga, Chair, please before proceed. we uh, acknowledge uh, Congressman Barsaga, can we uh, ask the uh, Mr. Pargas to uh, submit to us yung uh, mga, document, document, docu uh, mga documents about the... Uh, uh, the the peak rate uh, the uh, the overpayment of uh uh 22% according to them they went, when they were like um, discussing it a while ago yung 22% ay nirerepresent niya yung 3 billion doon sa overpayment can we uh, the body sub, uh, can uh, Mr. Pargas submit to us the detailed of these 3 billion pesos Mr. Chairman thank you uh, honorable uh, Bersa answer sir if possible, tomorrow, uh, masubmit na po sa amin yung detalye ng uh, 3 billion, ano, doon sa representing the 22% na overpayment. With the indulgence of the committee, members of the public, uh, of the good government and uh, public accountability, kung pwede pong ituloy natin ito bukas ng 1 o'clock ulit, magdire-diretso po tayo okay. para matake up lot ng topics. Yes. Okay, so thank you. Congressman Bersagas, recognize. Ah... Uh... I'll just clarify itong sinasabi ni Dr. Vargas na overpayment. Paano ba nagkakaroon ng overpayment ang PhilHealth sa mga healthcare institutions? Na ang sabi mo, umaabot ng 3 billion so that we can be clarified. Bakit nagkakaroon ng overpayment? Mr. Chair, Congressman, uh, again po, uh, our policy the provider payment mechanism which we are using, the case rate, uh, allows the payment of a fixed rate. So fixed po siya, uh, predetermined na ibabayad po natin sa mga facilities na magkiklaim po para sa certain na sakit. So kaya nga po, uh, since uh, with, sa amin po, we don't consider it as an overpayment because again, as it is, uh, it is a fixed rate na ibinabayad po natin uh, doon sa mga claims na sinasubmit po. So, sa madaling sabi, alam ng bawat isa sa atin na case rate ang basihan sa pagkiklaim sa PhilHealth. Yes, Mr. Chair. So, paano magkakaroon ng overpayment na sinasabi mong amounting to 3 billion? Uh, that's why, Mr. Chair, we are not considering po or we are not saying that it is an overpayment uh, because again as it is we are paying 
the fixed rate that we are that the current policy allows PhilHealth. But kasi medyo nakokompyus ako. Kaya nga Pag po, sinabi natin yes, overpayment, ang binayad nyo ay 10 billion pero ang dapat nyo lamang bayaran ay 7 billion kaya nagkaroon ng overpayment na 3 billion. Those statements and figures came from you. Sa inyo nang galing yan. Yes, Hindi Mr. sa amin. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Congressman po. Uh, again po, yung pong binayad kasi namin are uh, based on the case rates po na inaallow ng ating polisiya na fixed amount. So, yun pong lahat ng computation noong ibinayad namin are again based on the fixed rate na computed po and yun po ang inaallow ng polisiya sa ngayon. We agree with that. Kung ako ang isang public hospital or a private hospital, magpe-present lamang ako ng claim sa inyo. At kung magkano ang fixed rate based on the sickness, yun ang babayaran nyo. Uh, kung ito po ay tama na claim, kung ito po ay good claim, with all the Yes, we assume that everything was regular. Yes, Mr. Chief. Okay. Next question. And this is, I am a little bit confused. Paano na naman nalalaman kung magkano ang koleksyon ng isang public or private hospital para masabi nyo kung mas malaki ang kanilang sinisingil sa inyong fix rate. Do you have the records of that medical, uh, of that healthcare facility? Uh, sa ngayon po, uh, Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chair, sa ngayon po kasi, uh, we now allow or we now request, no, it's part of the requirement na meron pong statement of accounts ang statement of account po. Pero ang ibig kong sabihin, katulad halimbawa ng Asian Hospital, nalalaman nyo ba kung magkano ang total collection ng Asian Hospital para ma-compare nyo ang case rate as compared to their actual collection? Uh, ang meron po kami would be the uh, uh, against sa kanila pong ipinafile na claim sa amin. Ah... Uh, I am very much confused with all your answers and statements this afternoon. Unahin muna natin sa umpisa. Huwag muna natin pag-usapan ng COVID. Huwag muna natin pag-usapan ang IRM. Pag-usapan lang natin yung 219 downwards. Okay. Sa 219 downwards, meron tayong specific policy. Bago kami bago makapag-claim sa PhilHealth, kinakailangan PhilHealth accredited. Okay. Second question. 2019 below. Pwede bang mag-claim ng PhilHealth ang isang medical facility even if it is not accredited by PhilHealth? Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, only in conditions when one it is only in, in conditions po na one, it is licensed by the Department of Health. And second, kung no, no, po, anong condition? Uh, kung license po ng Department of Health and in emergency cases lang po. So in other words, kahit in DP Health accredited, as long as a medical facility is accredited by DOH, pwede mag-claim ng PIL Health. Uh, meron pa pong kasama, Mr. Chair, meron pa pong kasamang kondisyon only in emergency cases. And only in? Emergency cases. Okay. Po. So, para, para malinawan ng ating mga kababayan, ano ba ang ibig sabihin nyo ng emergency cases? Um, ang mga emergency cases po are those considered to be uh, conditions that will entail uh, life-saving and of course the loss of uh, limb or the loss of sight. So yan po yung ginagamit natin. Ginagamit yun. Okay. Next question. Tama ba na ang PhilHealth ay nagbabayad lamang sa medical facility if the confinement would last more than 24 hours? Mr. Chair, as a rule. As a general rule po, opo. Oh, yes, sir. Kaya pag kami mga congressman nagpa-compine at nagpa-check-up at natapos ang aming check-up less than 24 hours, we cannot claim PhilHealth. Uh, Mr. Chair, 
Uh, sa ngayon po kasi, katulad ng nabanggit nyo nga... Hindi nga, kaya nga nililino ko lamang. Opo. Tama yun. Opo. You Adan. have to stay in the institution for at least 24 hours. In general rule po. Yes. As a matter of fact, kung ikaw ay pupunta lamang sa ER ng isang public or private hospital, and you will be staying there only for 20 hours, you will not be entitled to claim any pill help. Meron, Mr. No, Mayor. under normal circumstances, wag na tayo mag-exceptions. Yes, Mr. Okay. Next question. Ang pill help ba ay nagbabayad under normal circumstances sa inpatient at hindi kasama ang outpatient? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Kinakailangan combined for at least 24 hours bago ka makaklaim sa pill help. Okay. Now, next question. Meron kayong listing na sinabit sa amin o galing kay Kong Defensor ng top 10 medical case rate for the year 2017. 2018, may sasubmit nyo ba sa amin? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. What about 2019? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Dito sa inyong top 10 medical case rate, nakalagay dito ang total amount of claims paid, pati na total number of claims. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Normally, yung total number of claims would be good for one claimant as a rule. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Okay. So, sa madaling sabi, maibibigay nyo ba sa amin ang listing ng mga healthcare facilities together with their location, together with their level, together with the name of the individuals na nagkaroon ng community acquired pneumonia for the last three years, 2017, 2018, and 2019? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, as allowed by the Data Privacy Act. As? As allowed po by the Data Privacy Act. Kasi meron as allowed by? Data Privacy Law po. Kasi meron po No, but we, will you law. just be providing to us the documents? You are claiming that there are 707,113. And we will not make a public disclosure of the name of the patients. Only for our consumption. Mr. Chair. Okay. You can provide. Mr. Chair, as... Uh, okay. Then, what about the hypertension? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Then, the dengue with warning signs? Yes, sir. And another one would be the acute gastroenteritis? Yes, Mr. Chair. And finally, hemodialysis? Yes, Mr. Chair. And the next inquiry is, how soon can they, can you present those documents? Um, we will have to, Mr. Chair, huh? we will have to extract the data. Uh, if you could uh, uh, give us probably until Monday po. Until Monday. Kasi ito naman, nakuha nyo ang total ng payment total ng claimants i-presupposes na alam nyo na lahat ang mga claimant kung sino, sino Okay, Dr. Vargas? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Now we go back to pneumonia, the number one. Itong pneumonia nyo ay maraming klase. Yes or no? Uh, meron po tayo under dalawa po, the moderate risk pneumonia and the severe type of pneumonia. Okay. Actually, I have seen your cases, case rates. It totals 127 pages. And when it comes to pneumonia, iba-iba ang klase ng pneumonia. Meron tayong healthcare-associated pneumonia, high risk, Meron naman tayong pneumonia in whipping cup, 15,000. Then, different cases of pneumonia, classes. 
Tama ba yan, Dr. Vargas? And yes, you are a doctor by profession? Yes, Mr. Chief. Okay. I have to say that I am a bypass patient. I am also diabetic. At ang lagi nilang sinasabi sa akin, kung PD, dapat mag-ingat ka sa pneumonia. Pag ikaw niya ay medyo inuubo na, o kaya meron kang sipon, the first thing which you have to do is to undergo an X-ray of your lungs. Lungs is that the proper medical procedure to determine whether or not a person has pneumonia. Mr. Chair, it is one of those diagnostics uh, that can say that you have pneumonia. But other than those, of course, as a doctor, we do have we need to check on the history of the patient, okay. including the signs and symptoms. Uh, to simplify the question, ito bang inyong community acquired pneumonia three moderate risk na kung saan nagbayad kayo ng 10 billion ni require nyo ba ang healthcare na yung kanilang mga claimants must undergo x-ray o hindi ah uh, hindi po hindi so base na lang sa stethoscope sa tunog so paano madedetermine nyo na talagang tama yung complaint yung claim kasi ang laging sinasabi ng COA it is always a case of upcasing or bloated or superstitious claims. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we issued uh, several policy statements with regard to and guidelines with regard to uh, uh, several cases. Uh, I will have to check lang po. Uh, sorry. I will have to check lang po with regard to the uh, pneumonia if the chest x-ray is a requirement, just to be sure. Po. You will assume? No, sir. I will check lang po uh, in our uh, policy statements if the chest x-ray is a requirement. Eh, just, to nga, be, just to nagtatake. be sure. Po. You are the senior vice president. You are a doctor by profession. Ang laging, laging number one nyo sa listing ay pneumonia Moderate community acquired <coughs> 10 billion 2017. Honorable, Honorable Pagkatapos, hindi nyo alam kung kinakailangan muna ang X-ray o hindi. Honorable Bersaga, it's not only that, but uh, SBP Pargas is the uh, uh, health policy head of uh, PhilHealth. Honorable Barsaga. You will be asking. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. I will just be confirming po. And I'll uh, you, we po. will just wait for the answer. I will, uh, uh, I will submit po the uh, criteria that we have right now. <laughs> Ang tanong po ni Honorable Barsaga, simple lang. Stethoscope lang ba o may X-ray? Dahil yung palang sinasabi niyo, wala ng X-ray. Uh, sorry again, uh, Mr. Chair. I will just have to check to make sure if the X-ray is uh, a requirement. Okay, I'll go to another point. Well, we have the case of well case regarding the dialysis. In which case, ang pinag-uusapan na naman natin, yung case rate na bloated or fictitious ang mga tao na dinadialysis. And if you will recall, ang mga involved dito ay private healthcare facilities. Tama ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. No, public healthcare facility was involved in so far as the bloating of claims of dialysis is concerned. I will have to check that with the legal. Oh, uh, but you can cite one. Ah, uh, none okay. at the moment, sir. Then nagkaroon din tayo ng isang issue regarding the cataract operation. As a matter of fact, you even specified yung mga cataract eye clinics, 
yung mga eye clinics na nag-conduct ng mga cataract na bloated ang mga claims. Do you recall that? Yes, Mr. Chair. And can you also recall na itong mga cataract clinics na to na involved doon sa bloated cataract claims are also private clinics? Uh, I, I will have to check, Mr. Chair, if these are just private clinics. But yes, as far as I know, uh, yun pong mga uh, naging scandal before involves private uh, clinics. Hindi ba kayo nagtataka kung bakit ang laging na-involve sa mga isyong to ay mga private providers, private healthcare facility? Um, Mr. Chair, I, I, so far po... You don't analyze because pag mag-analyze ako as a lawyer and based on my personal experience, when it comes to public healthcare facilities, we are covered by COA rules. Hindi kami pwedeng magbigay ng reimbursement hindi kami ma pwede magbigay sa pilel ng any amount. Unlike in case of private healthcare, healthcare providers, the checks are being made payable to them. They are no longer, no longer subject to COA audit. And that is the reason why I want to ask, sino-sino ba ang mga binabayaran nyo dito sa moderatrice? Eh baka ang lumabas dito, Karamihan na naman ito ay mga private health facilities. Because they are not subject to COA rules. Kaya yun ang problema natin. Also, marami kayong binigay sa amin na listahan ng cases against healthcare institutions. Totoo ba yun? You are aware of that? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Number of healthcare institutions involved 788 based on the document which you have submitted I'm not sure of the number sir but huh? yes I'm not sure of the number sir but uh, so who would be the most competent person to answer in so far as the number of cases against healthcare institution are concerned uh, our legal Mr. Chair okay legal but you are also the head of the policies pertaining to health. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Dito, nakalagay ang pangalan ng healthcare institution. Ah, wala. Wala yung mga pangalan. Ah, nandito ata. So, can you verify whether or not these healthcare institutions are public or private? Together with their level, whether level one, level two, level three, level four, ah, level three. Wala, wala ang listahan. Meron din kayong mga listing ng doktor. Ang tanong ko, itong mga kasunto started calendar year 2000 to 2019. Meron ba kayong naipile na criminal case? Uh, Mr. Chair, I think our legal is uh, online. Who's the legal? The, who's the legal uh, who's online? May we know? Attorney, sinong, sinong ano legal nandiyan natin? Is attorney... Del Rosario is there? Philet Legal recognized? Oh, there's no legal uh, Honorable Barsaga. So, who would be the most competent person to answer this inquiry so that we can require his or her presence either physically or through Zoom 
meeting. Oh, wala nang makakasagot sa inyo? Who will be the most competent person? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, SBP uh, Rodolfo del Rosario, Your Honor. SBP Rodolfo del Rosario. No, but he's not know? there. Uh, yeah. SBP del Rosario is not there. And the next schedule hearing. Yeah, next schedule hearing. Okay. You ask Attorney Del Rosario. Ano po yung tinatanong nyo, uh, Mr. Uh, Honorable Versailles? Well, number one, Madam, uh, Mr. Chairman, itong kasong to covers a period of calendar year 2000 up to 2019. Okay, we have uh, from the prosecution department, Andre Samson, is he there? Or the internal legal, Rogelio... Pukalyan. Okay. Kasama po ba natin sila? So, I will, uh, meron din silang binigay na, na dokumento pending cases as of June 30, 2020. Starting the year 2018, 2019, 2020. So, ang tanong ko, ang heading nito, administrative complaint against healthcare providers and members fraudulent and non-fraudulent. Bukod sa administrative complaint, meron bang penal na criminal case? Because as a lawyer, I know that both cases can proceed independently from one another. Pangalawa, meron na bang na-cancel ang PhilHealth accreditation in so far as the healthcare providers are concerned, na nakalista dito. Number three, I would like to have the data whether the exact address of the healthcare provider submitted by them and to identify and indicate whether or not they are public or private hospital, pati na kung anong level. Para malaman natin ang mga particulars. Kasi napakarami nito eh. Pagkatapos, nakispecify din dito ang mga pangalan ng mga doktor. Did PhilHealth initiate any complaint before the Professional Regulation Commission for the cancellation or suspension of the doctors who participated in these fraudulent claims against the government? And these are basic questions which an ordinary prosecutor would be doing. Para maiwasan natin ang sinasabing grab and corruption, para maiwasan natin ang mafia sa loob ng pill health. Kasi sa loob lang ata ng tatlong taon, napalitan na ang inyong head ng three times. Ilan na ang naging head nyo for the last three years? Oh. Do anyone reply? Can you not reply? We have right now Director JM uh, General Morales before General Munares Morales Morales General Mr. Chair before General Morales it was uh, huh? before General Morales it was uh, Dr. Ferrer Dr. Ferrer and, prior and before Dr. Ferrer uh, Doctora de la Serena. And all of these were made during the incumbency of President Duterte? Yes, Mr. Chair. Notwithstanding the desire of the President to clean pill health, it seems that changing the President will not be the remedy. Kasi ang problema nga natin, sabi nga ng mga senador at iba nating kababayan, mafia na yan, embedded. Even if you change the head, as long as they are still there in the pill health, no, but, uh, there will be no significant change. Kaya tinatanong na lang natin, simple. Nagkaroon ba ng mga prosecution? Wala. Pagkatapos, I will be asking an update regarding the case of WellMed and the other dialysis centers whose cases were dismissed by the Quezon City Regional Trial Court last year. At pati na yung sa Katara kung ano nangyari. 
Okay? O, oh, bumalik naman tayo sa case rate ng COVID. Okay, ang sabi kanina ni uh, Director Padua, when you started the payment for COVID, there was no case rate. Tama ba yun? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, kailan kayo nagsimulang magbayad sa COVID? What period was covered? And when was the first payment? Uh, Mr. Chair, our... Uh uh, I don't have the date uh, when we first started to pay, but if, uh, as I remember, our policy po on COVID is retroactive to February 1, when there was the first COVID patient. February? February 1. Okay, next question. Kailan kayo nag-start ng case rate sa COVID? Uh, we started po for admission. Uh, we, the admission starting April 15. In? April 15 po. Admission April 15. April 15. At ano naman ang dahilan kung bakit noong April 15 nag na kayo na magkaroon ng case rate sa mga COVID cases? Um, initially po, Mr. Chair, uh, we don't have any data with regard to the COVID uh, because um, it, it is new. Until such time that we have already the uh, data we have collected from hospitals with uh, uh, COVID claims, the itemized billing charges coming from the hospital, uh, that we were able to come out with the case rates. Pero ang laging sinasabi ng PhilHealth, because of the COVID, you appropriated 30 billion for IRM in order to address the pandemic. Tama ba? At to, Mr. Chair, 27 billion po. Ha? 27 billion. 27 billion. Ang sabi nyo, kaya kayo nag-IRM is in order to meet the pandemic problem in the country. That's why you set aside 27 billion para sa IRM. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Pagkatapos, ang sabi kanina ay, noon lamang kayo April 15, nag-start ng case rate sapagkat wala kayong data at hindi nyo alam kung magkano ang gagastusin sa COVID kaya prior to April 15, unlimited ang payment ng PhilHealth for COVID cases. O ano ang pinakamataas na binayad nyo prior to April 15? For one individual? Kahit hindi po eksakto, at least sa uh, an approximation ng pinakamataas. Uh, uh, apologies, Mr. Chair. I don't have the data right now. You cannot answer? Yes, Mr. Chair. So, can you, be, can you give a listing? Yes, Mr. Of Chair. all the COVID cases which you have paid prior to April 15. Yes, Mr. Chair. And because of those payments, nagawa kayo ng case rate starting April 15. Tama po ba? Mr. Chair, but even prior po to the, uh, uh, to the filing of claims, uh, we already asked from the hospitals... Uh, especially those with COVID patients to submit to us itemized billing charges uh, for those patients. And then, alinawin lang natin. Bigyan nyo lang kami ng listahan ng mga COVID, ng mga COVID patients na inyong binayaran sa mga hospital up to April 15. Yes, Mr. Chief. Yes. And secondly, Starting April 15, nagkaroon na kayo ng case rate. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yung bang case rate nyo sa COVID, makikita na sa website ng PhilHealth? 
Yes, Mr. Chair. Pakita na. And what is the highest amount? Uh, 700,000 uh, 700, plus po for critical pneumonia. And because of this COVID, lumabas na ang inyong policy regarding IRM. Mr. Chair, the IRM policy po uh, has been there since noon pong may Yolanda, Marawi. We know that. Apo. We know that, Yolanda. We know that about Marawi. Pero ang lagi niyong sinasabi sa inyong IRM will be the circular 2020-017. Tama ba? Uh, 07 po. 07. Opo, because that time po... No, wag na, okay na lang okay. yun. Oh, doon tayo sa circular 2000 uh, uh, 2020 da 007. Okay. Number one, that is a circular. That is the one appearing in your website. Yes, Mr. Chair. And as far as I can recall, that circular was signed by General... Morales. Yes, Mr. Okay. Prior to the issuance of that circular, was there a board resolution o wala? We'll ask Director Padua. Bago ilabas ang circular dated 2020-007 ni General Morales, meron bang pag-uusap ang board for the issuance of this Circular. Sir, uh, during that time when uh, we were talking about IRM, the board, uh, based on my perspective, uh, approved the, the application for IRM basically uh, because of uh, President Duterte's proclamation number. Uh, ano ko simply lamang? Nandito na yung Pilher Circular number 2020-007. Ang tanong ko lamang, bago ba i-issue itong circular na to, was there a previous agreement or endorsement coming from the Board of Directors of Pilher? Ma'am, yes, yes, please. Kasi meron pala po silang pinaratify noong 31 March 2020. Uh, for the IRM to all healthcare facilities nationwide given this COVID-19 pandemic at that time because uh, wala pang pattern of geography, geographical distribution no. ang so, COVID. So, simple lamang tayo. Sabi mo, Mr. Chairman, the ratification was made on March 31. Ano ang ratify noong March 31? Yung application for IRM po. Yung application for IRM. Kailan unang-unang nagbigay ng IR, IRM ang pilot to any health facility? When was the first time? Dr. Vargas? Mr. Chair, I'm referring to our finance. Ano ko lamang? Ang sinasabi ni Director Padua, ratification. E alam natin yung ratification, it is already after the act, not prior. Sa madaling sabi, nung issue ang circular, walang previous board meeting. Okay. Meron, Tama ba yun? Sir, meron na pala akong, can I trace already once and for all yung history nitong IRM? Kasi parang uh, no, no. I, I read it, I got Wag it. Wag na natin i-trace ang history kasi babalik pa tayo sa Yolanda, babalik pa tayo sa Marawi, babalik pa tayo sa Taal Volcano. Ito na lang po yung the first, uh, the first one po. The, uh, what date? Oh, oh. 
the, uh, the first was on 30 January, kasi ni record ko po to, sa akin nasa notes ko po, ano, Your Honor. The first was on 30 January 2020, when the PhilHealth Board approved the immediate payment of 50% of all the pending good claims in the province of Batangas to alleviate the burden experienced by PhilHealth members and healthcare providers by reason of the said uh, natural okay. calamity. Papunta na po ako sa second. Muna. PhilHealth approved the payment. Opo. So it is not an advance payment. There was already a claim. Kasi itong sinasabi natin... Kaya nga po, uh, ano, ito po kasi, uh, sabi ko nga, uh, I just want to read the chronolo chronology of events para, ma para malaman nyo po. Okay. So, uh, the, Phil the, the Phil Health Board included IRM among the special privileges that may be conferred to healthcare institutions and field health members during unforeseen events and emergencies on matters such as membership, accreditation, and benefit payment. Such inclusion will enable management... Well, I am very much satisfied. Huh? Okay. Uh, thank now you for your time. Po, you huh? want to go to the second na po, Eddie? No, I'll just make an inquiry. Okay. Uh, Mr. Senior Vice President? Okay. Sinasabi ni Director Padua, meron ng IRM as early as January 2007. Honorable, Honorable uh, no, Bersaga, no, if you don't mind, nasa IRM na po tayo. Ha? Nasa IRM na po tayo. Wala na po tayo sa... Case. Uh, nasa case rate. Opo, wala na po tayo uh, sa case rate. Ang ibig sabihin po, lumagpas na po kayo na you already went to the IRM issue. The case rate arising from the IRM. Ah, okay. Yes. Uh, can okay, I... I'll just reserve my question regarding IRM. Yes. Eh, so, so that makapag-tanong yung mga susunod sa aking mga kinatawan. So, okay. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Barsaga, for that. Uh, malinaw po yung mga katanungan na nabanggit ninyo. We now proceed to, uh, well... This is according to age. So the older one is the Honorable Marcoleta is now recognized. Honorable Marcoleta? Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair? Yes, before the Honorable Marcoleta, yes, Mr. Uh, SBP, Dr. Vargas. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, for Congressman po, yes, sir, we require the chest x-ray. Again, again? We require po the chest x-ray. They require the chest x-ray. Chest x-ray for the case of pneumonia. Okay, Honorable Mayor, correct us, recognize. Proceed. Mr. Chair, mas matanda po sa akin ang bihamak si Congressman Barsaga. Naririnig po niyo? Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Malakas na po ba o hindi pa rin? Okay po, Honorable Marcoleta, we can hear you uh, very clearly. Mr. Chair, kasi kung naalala ninyo, uh, nung nakaraan nagkaroon tayo ng pagdinig, uh, nagbumuha po ng commitment si President Morales, narinig naman ninyo yon na uh, ito sanang pagtitipon na ito, pagdinig, Dapat nasa plenary siya, sapagat ako, nangako ako, nakapagpupunta siya sa plenary, tatapatang ko siya dyan. At ang sabi ko pa nga sa kanya, dalhin niya yung kanyang mga key officials. At alam naman po ninyo, nangako naman siya. At alam ko, general naman po siya. At uh, sa akin palagay, ang salita ng isang sundalo po ay hindi basta-basta nababali. Uh, disappointed po ako sapagat hindi lamang siya wala ngayon. Yung kasama po niyang dalawa kanina, nakikinig na po ako riyan, sapagkat ako'y limang oras nang nakikinig sa inyo, wala rin po yung kanyang mga key officials. Mr. Chair, sila po ba ay nagbigay sa atin ng ebidensya na sila talaga ay hindi po pwedeng pumunta ng plenary? Sapagkat kahit po ako may sakit din, 
pupunta po ako dyan eh. Kapag dat yun po yung usapan na ano po bang binigay nilang ebidensya, lalong-lalo na po yung key officials niya at saka si President Morales, na sila hindi lamang ano, if they are not malingering, uh, Mr. Chair, what evidence did we receive to prove that they are really sick? Honorable Marcoleta, kanina pong uh, umaga, nandiyan po si General Morales, si Secretary Vice President De Sus, at yung head po nila ng legal na si Attorney Del Rosario. Uh, as we were going through the hearings, sinabi nga po biglang si Mr. De Sus ay nadala sa ospital, si Mr. Morales may sakit, at ganun din po si Mr. Del Rosario. But based on... Uh, what you mentioned now, uh, the Honorable Marcoleta, pwede po natin hingan ng uh, pureba na ipakita nila sa susunod na hearing na totoong sila po ay nagkasakit o nagkaproblema habang nandito po tayo nag-hearing. And I recall, yung pong binanggit ninyo na sinabi nyo kay General Morales, a-attend kayo at kumari ay magpunta siya dito, uh, Congressman Marcoleta. Tama po yun, Mr. Chair. Kaya ako po ngayon ay hindi pumunta sapagkat yung mismong taong kausap ko at ang ipinangako niyang dadalhin niyang mga kasama niya ay hindi rin po uh, dumating. At ngayon, wala naman po sa lang pinang pinakikitang mga katibayan na talaga may sakit. Ang tingin ko po, they are all malingering, Mr. Chair. Meron po tayong kasabihan that lightning does not strike on, strike on the same place twice. Pero sa hapong ito, tatlong beses po na kinidlat po tayo sa isang lugar lang. Tatlong tao po ay naasahan natin na magpapaliwanag ngayon bigla silang pare-parehong nagkasakit. Ito po ba ay katanggap-tanggap, Mr. Chair? Uh, Honorable Marcoleta, noong una pong mag, uh, hindi magpunta si General Morales, alam ko na po na siya may sakit. Kaya po, noong magpaalam siya, uh, pinayagan ko po siya, but uh, eventually he came out publicly na sinabi niya nga yung maluba, yung kanyang sakit at may cancer po siya. Pero in the case of Mr. De Jesus and Mr. Del Rosario, uh, uh, no, I'm not informed of their current condition. At yung pong pagkawala nila, kahit sa Zoom lang po, uh, wala pa po tayong paliwanag. Kung ang tanong nyo po ay katanggap-tanggap po ba yan, hindi ho. And uh, tingnan po natin kung ano po yung magiging hatol ng ating komite. At uh, hindi lang po dito ngayon, uh, meron po tayong contempt powers because we are now under moto proprio uh, hearing in aid of legislation and number two, alam naman po natin na may budget deliberations po sila and I agree with you, pagka po may malingering, as you call it then uh, Congress not only this committee can take action Cong Congress Manuel Correta Kasi po Mr. Chair, alam naman natin ang kahalagahan ng pagdinig na ito, ayaw ko po naman na isipin ng publiko na nakikinig sa atin, na parang uh, they are already taking lightly Ito pong uh, kahalagahan nitong pagdinig na ito. At nakikita ko po kanina, bali isa o dalawang tao na lang ang sumasagot sa atin. Hindi ko naman minamalit po yung kakayahan nila na sumagot. Pero kung makikita ninyo, pasahan ng pasahan, sapagkat hindi naman po niya lahat masasagot yon Sana po si President Morales, hindi siya nangako kung talagang siya ay mayroong karamdaman. Sabi ko nga po sa inyo, pare-pareho tayo nagkakasakit. Alam naman po ninyo, Yung sparring partner ko nung uh, dalawang uh, linggo ang nakararo, tatlong linggo nung tayo nagdidinig dyan, binawian na po ng buhay sapagkat uh, siya po ay tinamaan din ng COVID. Alam natin ang peligro sa buhay natin, pero ako nangakuha po, pupunta po ako riyan. Dapat sila, ganun din po sana ang pangangakong gagawin nila. Pag nangako ka, pupunta ka, ganun sana yung gusto kong mangyari. Pagkatapos po, ang dami kong napapansin, Mr. Chair, ano, Ah, uh, tinanong kanina ni Honorable Sarate yung dalawang uh, mga opisyales diyan tungkol dun sa nakukolekta nilang uh, uh, yung sa ospital yung nakukolekta nila pagkatapos binabahagi nila sa kanila bilang mga allowances. Accreditation allowance. Accreditation allowance. Ngayon, napakasimple po ng tanong ni Congressman Sarate kung magkano yung tinatanggap nila Sa bawat buwan, nung yun, ina-administer pa. Nakakasama po ng law, Mr. Chair. Hindi man lang nila ma-recall. Hindi po ba nila ma-recall man lang, matandaan? Hindi naman natin sila uh, 
sinasabihan na ibigay yung eksaktong amount ng kanilang tinatanggap eh. Kahit siguro ball, ball, ballpark figure lang, mas or menos, hindi ba, ma, hindi ba masasagot ng tatlong tao na nandyan, kamukha ni Mr. Vargas, si Mr. Limsiaco, kung kasama si Ms. Santiago, at saka yung Mr. Dennis Mas. Eh bakit po, parang kapag ka tungkol dyan, sila ang tinatanong, kinakailangan pa nilang pangakuan tayo na isusumiti na lamang ang kanilang uh, uh, mga natanggap kung meron man at magpapanggap pa sila na hindi nila naaalala. Pwede bang ulitin natin yung tanong? Hindi naman natin sila uh, winupuwersa na nakunin natin sa kanila yung eksaktong uh, figura o halaga na kanilang tinatanggap. Mas or menos, Mr. Chair, kung talagang meron silang uh, respeto sa atin, bigyan lang nila tayo kahit idea lang. Magkano tinatanggap nila na allowance mula doon sa accreditation fee na, na, na kinokolek ng PhilHealth? Doon po sa niris ni Honorable Marcoleta, yan po'y punto na binanggit ni Honorable Abante ni Honorable Sarate. Uh, meron po ba mga kasagot doon? Accreditation fees collected. Kahit na po approximation, di naman eksakto. Hindi po, Mr. Chair, yung tinatanggap nila kasi yan binabahagi nila sa kaning, kanilang sarili. Yun nga po. Monthly, tumatanggap sila. Pero ayaw nilang banggitin kanina sapagkat hindi nila... Hindi nila hindi raw nila ma matanda ng detalye, magpipresent na lang daw ng report. Mr. Chair, sa aking palagay, ayaw lang naman nilang makipag-cooperate sa atin. Hindi naman natin sila pinipilit na kunin yung eksaktong halagang tinatanggap nila buwan-buwan nung ina-administer pa yan, yung pondo na yan. Bakit hindi man lang nila sabihin sa atin mas or menos kung magkano? yung kanilang tinatanggap na allowance na bahagi nila doon sa pagling, paglikom ng accreditation fund from the hospitals para malaman naman natin kung talagang nakikipag-cooperate sa atin ang mga tao na yan. Kasi ako, very disappointed ako, Mr. Chair. Kanina ko pa nakikita na puro yung kwenta kung saan saan napupunta. Kahit magdamag tayo siguro, mag-usap-usap dito, Mr. Chair, wala tayong makukuha sa mga yan kapag hindi sila talaga nakipag-cooperate. Pwede ba natin silang pasagutin ngayon kahit na yung apat lamang na nandyan ngayon kung maalala nila magkano talaga yung kanilang tinatanggap na bahagi dun sa allowance from the accreditation fund? Ang mga kasagot sa so mga kasama po natin. Mr. Lim Siako, will you be able to answer? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh... Pasensya po, talagang wala tayong report na nadala dito ano, relative to that accreditation fee na binahagi sa mga medical personnel dati at saka sa official ng PhilHealth. Sabi nga, ay, uh, bibigyan namin ho kayo ng uh, report para po mabigyan natin ho sa inyo yung kompletong report po. Pero po, I would like to inform you po na ang ating... Uh, uh, May, may notice of disallowance po ito, uh, Mr. Chair, na binigay po sa atin ng COA. That's the reason why po na-stop na po ito uh, in the year, hindi ko matandaan po kung kailan po na-stop po ito. Ano? Uh, Mr. Lib, siya ako. Yes po, sir. Uh, tinitingnan so, po lang ako, po. Al anong, anong, uh, anong lingwahe ang mas naiintindihan mo? Sabihin mo sa akin. Para magkaintindihan tayo. Ang sinasabi ko lang, tinanggap nyo kanina na kayo'y nakaka-receive ng monthly allowance to sa accreditation fund na kinukulekta nyo sa mga hospital. Ang tinatanong ko lang ngayon, mas or menos, hindi, ko naman, hindi, ko, hindi naman kita pinipilit na Sagutin mo kung ano yung eksaktong tinatanggap mo. Mas or menos, magkano yung tinatanggap ninyo buwan-buwan doon sa accreditation fund na yun. Hindi mo ba alam yun? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, sorry po. Talagang hindi ko matandaan po kung magkano yung uh, pera po na binibigay po sa ating uh, mga recipient po noon. Dahil po ako ay isang, hindi po ako isang medical officer po uh, na binibigyan po ng ganong allowance dati po. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor.
Mr. Chair, pwede natin silang i-contempt. Kanina, kanina dinig na dinig ko siya, ang sabi niya, isa siya sa tumatanggap doon sa allowance. Ngayon, sinasabi niya ngayon, hindi na naman sa kasali. Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, if I may, go ahead, Mr. Limsako, just a quick uh, reply. Go ahead, Mr. Limsako. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, maraming salamat po, sir. Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, ako po ay hindi isang medical officer po. Ay sabi kanina ni Doc Is po, uh, ito ay binibigay sa medical officer at saka sa mga officials ng PhilHealth po. Ako ay nakapasok sa PhilHealth po na hindi ko po matandaan kung ako po ay isang recipient doon dahil po sa sinasabi ni Doc Is kanina para sa medical 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 uh, personnel po ito ng PhilHealth at saka sa mga officials po. Uh, Mr. Chair, yun, tatanungin hindi ko si po Mr. matandaan Vargas, kung yun po ay ito, katanggap eh. po ako ng uh, allowance po noon. Kaya nga po, we are saying po, if maaari po, magbibigay na lang po kami ng report po sa inyo para kompleto po ng detalye kung sino po ang nakatanggap noon at saka magkano po yung amount, Mr. Chair. Okay, Mr. Chair, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, para yes. maliwanag lamang po, no? Uh, gusto ko lang tanongin sana si uh, Congressman Marcoleta, si DS Marcoleta, about doon sa sinasabi niya, accreditation. Accreditation fee yun, no? Yes. So, uh, tanongin na muna natin si uh, Mr. Lim Shaco. Gano'n po ba kalaki yung accreditation fund na yan? Uh, as mentioned kanina, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, for year 20, as 2020 po itong uh, figure natin po, Your Honor, ang ating accreditation fee ay uh, part ng other income ay 7.879 uh, million, Your Honor. 7.9 million. 7.9 million, Your Honor. This is 2020 po nga, nga figure po as of June po. Teka, wag, wag, wag 2020. Magbigay ka ng whole year, 2019. Ang 2019 po... Para klaro, ay, kasi half year yan eh. Mr. Chair, kanina may binanggit silang 20 million pesos. Yes. 2019 That, po, sir. Is 26.7 million okay, uh, uh, million, Your Honor. In 2018 po, 26.9 million, Your Honor. Okay, average of 27 million, Honorable. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, tanongin ko lang isa si Muna, si Mr. Lim Siyako, since ikaw naman sumasagot. Uh, Magkano sweldo mo, Mr. Lim Siyako, sa PhilHealth? Ang aking sweldo monthly. po, monthly, ay nasa... Pasensya po, pwede ko makita muna po para makita ko Sige po. Sige po. Kung hindi ko matandaan yung basic, sir eh. Sandali, sir ha. Tingnan ko lang po. Oh, bibigyan ko na. Uh, pasensya na, DS Marcoleta, no? Uh, para lang uh, mairelay yung uh, gusto mong uh, mapalabas na nakukuha ng mga board of directors Kasi parang kaduda-duda nga naman na kung nakakatanggap ka ng sweldo mo tapos eh, hindi mo alam yung mga natatanggap natin sa ating ahensya eh, parang napaka-imposible. Ako, pinang congressman, alam ko sweldo ko, alam ko yung mga benepisyo ko. At uh, let's all be honest here no? sa mga board of directors no? na alam naman po natin kung magkano ang sweldo natin. Eh. Monthly, magkano? Tapos magkano yung uh, benefits na kukuha natin aside sa ating... Uh, uh, sweldo. Napaka, hindi po napakahirap ng tinatanong ni D.S. Marcoleta, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Limshako. Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Ang basic po na sweldo po ay uh, 140,589 po, Your Honor. Oh, 140,000. Yes, okay. Po, sir. Sa um, iyong pagkakaalam, aside from the 140,000 na sweldo mo, ano pa ang tinatanggap mo sa PhilHealth? Mayroon po tayong ra uh, basic rate, tapos may pera po, tapos pera that is 2,000 po, and then welfare allowance po ng 4,000, and hazard allowance po of 9,800. Okay, sa accreditation, makikita mo? Now, Mr. Chair... Magkano na tatanggap niyo sa accreditation according sa mga record mo? Mr. Chair, Your Honors, ang accreditation po ito ay hindi na po natin... Uh, tinatanggap sa PhilHealth po dahil ito po ay may notice of disallowance po. Kaya po, uh, we are very sorry po. Hindi namin maalaala dahil matagal na po ito na na-stop po ng ating corporation. So in other words, po. hindi ka nakatanggap sa accreditation fee? Mr. Chair, Your Honor, yun nga po yung uh, iniisip ko kanina pa po kung nakareceive ako dahil yes sa or no. ko nga po. Yes or no lang? Yes or no lang? Mr. Lipsyako, yes or no? Nakatanggap ko hindi? 
Uh, sorry sir, talagang uh, hindi ko po no. matandaan anyway, dahil po kailangan makita yeah. natin yung pera Sa tali, po. Mr. Chairman, ilang taong ka na sa PhilHealth, Mr. Chairman? Uh, nasa malapit po, 20 years na po ako sa PhilHealth po. 8 years? 20, so, 20 po, to zero, malapit po. 20 years? 20 years. Yes, sir. Okay, so... Honorable Fernandez, uh, we'll give back the time to the Honorable Marcoleta. Please, Honorable Marcoleta. Marcoleta. Pwede bang pasagutin natin si Mr. Vargas, Mr. Chair, kasi sa kanya nagmula na sila ay tumatanggap ng allowance. Sige siya, magkano kung maalala niya ang tinatanggap niyang allowance? Dr. Mula Vargas. sa accreditation na sinisingil nila sa mga hospitals. Mr. Chair, uh, Congressman Marcoleta, Board Resolution Number, because I'm, I, 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 I'm checking on this, B PhilHealth Board Resolution Number 1147 of 2008 authorized the uh, disbursement from the collection of accreditation fees for a specific purpose under Office Order 58-2008. So nagsimula po ito noong 2008 from the eh, hindi mo naman tinatanong sa'yo yung tungkol sa circular na yan eh. Tinatanong lang kita kung maalala mo magkano ang tinatanggap mo monthly. Kaya kami nagkakaroon ng problema dahil sa mga pagsagot ninyo eh. Uh, Alam mo, test ko lang yung credibility ninyo eh. Kanina pa eh. Uh, yes, Ay, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, Congressman. Um, this is not given uh, monthly. It was given uh, annually and I think po ha, uh, because... Uh, this was stopped in 2014, uh, more or less po 20,000 uh, a year. Mr. And Chair, uh, if I may, ano, para matulungan lang natin si D.S. Marcoleta, no, since nasa Hindi, SUMSA. Kaya kong tanungin sila, no. D.S. Dan, ano, ha? Hindi ko kailangan ng tulong. Uh, sila yung dapat tulungan, eh. Yeah, hindi. Dapat na try... repress me memory ng mga yan. Sa Tatanong ko lang. Sa sinabi niya, meron silang monthly tinatanggap. Sa yes, mismo correct. nagsabi, eh. Nakarecord tayo, eh. Ngayon, sinasabi na naman niya, Hindi monthly. Paiba-iba ang sagot ng mga tao na yan. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Pargas, can you clarify your can you clarify your statement? Please? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, uh, again, uh, this is uh, this started in 2008 and stopped in 2014. Uh, ito po ay binibigay as I recall and I'm checking annually po uh, at ito po ay nakabase doon sa nakukolekta na accreditation fee. Tapos po, ito po ay ibinibigay depende po doon sa uh, uh, percentage distribution para po sa mga holding the medical positions, 55%. Yun naman pong sa mga holding mission critical positions, they are provided the 35 percent so that's around 90 percent of the collected accreditation fee and the 10 percent is retained for other purposes so iba-iba po siya taon-taon depende po sa accreditation fee and was stopped in 2014 because may notice of this allowance so sa pagkakaalala mo nga Ilan at magkano ang natatanggap mo? Sa pagkakaalala mo, napakasimple ng tanong eh. Ang dami mo pang binasang circular eh. Sa pag, uh, Mr. Chair, sa pagkaalaala ko po ay uh, around 20,000 annually po. O yun lang. Dapat sana kanina sinabi nyo na yan eh. Para hindi na sana tayo tumagal. Alam mo kung paano namin kayo sinusukat? Sinusubok lang namin kayo. Kung talagang pati pagsagot ninyo, talagang makakakuha kami ng katwiran at katotohanan sa inyo. Masyado kayong ano, masyado kayong uh, uh, paligoy-ligoy kapag ka alam ninyo na maring tatamaan kayo. Mr. Chair, meron ba tayong truth serum diyan o kaya siguro pinakamaganda rito, tatagal kasi tayo eh kung meron tayong truth serum. Sigurado sigurado tayo na lahat ng isasagot sa atin niyan nakasalig sa katotohanan. O kaya, kumbaga sa mga inkanto, Mr. Chair, kung meron tayong kumukulong kawa na yan ay pahalukay natin kay uh, Congressman Barbers, lilitaw yung mga tao, uh, yung mga itsura ng mga tao, nakasama at sangkot sa mga sindikato. Eh kaso wala tayong kumukulong kawa, Mr. Chair, kaya hirap na hirap tayo, pinagtataga natin silang tanungin, E eh, paligoy-ligoy naman sila. Sana wag ganon. 
Katulad po kanina na, na napansin ko po si Miss Santiago, aktuary yan eh. Bakit po siya sumasagot sa mga tanong na wala namang kinalaman sa aktuary? Siguro because of that, I will move Mr. Chair na isama natin ang subject ng aktuary sa ating uh, pagbinig sa mga susunod na mga araw sapagkat doon sa listahan mo ng subjects, hindi kasama ang aktuary. Kasi siya yung sagot na sagot doon sa mga tanong at tingin ko naman, Walang kinalaman sa actuarial study o kung saan. Uh, para matanong din natin siya kung paano, kung paano natin mapagsasaligan yung kanyang actuarial estimates samantalang yung credibility ng database ng PhilHealth ay talagang questionable. Kapag ka yung data mo, Mr. Chair, questionable, walang actuarial estimates o kahit anong actuarial study ang magagawa mong matino dyan hanggat hindi nila nape-perfect yung credibility ng kanilang ano, actuary. Mr. Chair, kanina narinig ko, meron pala silang integrity office. Totoo pa ba yun, Mr. Chair? Narinig mo rin ba yun? Congressman Marcoleta, again? Kanina po, meron nag-testify na meron palang integrity office sa PhilHealth. Naalala niyo po ba't narinig po ba niyo yun? It was uh, Mr. Limshako who uh, mentioned that or uh, the... Uh, hindi po. Merong representative yata yung, yung isang vice president na hindi nakadalo ngayon sapagkat sabi mo nga, isa siya sa may sakit. Attorney Del Rosario is the head of uh, legal. Pero wala siya ngayon, Mr. Chair. Siya ay kinatawan lamang ng uh, isang staff niya yata at siyang nagsabi na merong integrity office pala ang PhilHealth. Do we have that uh, in Zoom? Nasa Zoom po siya kanina. Nakita ko. Yung pong kasama ni Attorney Del Rosario kanina, parang tatlo sila. Yung po ba yun, uh, Honorable Marcoleta? Yes, Mr. Chair. At tapos siya nagsabi na meron siya ng integrity office, tinanong na yan, meron nagtanong sa kanya, parang tinanong ni Minority Leader Benny Abante kung ano na yung nagawa nila to at least mitigate yung mga nangyayaring uh, napapansing mga uh, hindi, uh, hindi hindi mabuting nakikita sa, sa loob ng PhilHealth. Kanina, nandyan sa sa Zoom eh. Can we please uh, recognize, uh, can we please have the uh, Office of the Legal? Kasama po natin kanina sa Integrity Office. Uh, Your Honor, are you referring to Mr. Mangawang? Yes, Mr. Mangawang, uh, are, is he still there? Ano po bang nangyari uh, uh, with the indulgence of the Honorable Marcoleta? Ano po bang nangyari? Ba't nawala si Del Rosalio, Mangawang at yung tatlo? Sabay-sabay po bang nagkasakit yung tatlong yun? Yun nga yung tinatanong ko sa iyo, Mr. Chair. Yes, no, Honorable Marcoleta, yung tatlo kasi kanina was General Morales, Executive Vice President De Jesus and Attorney Del Rosario. Pero tama po kayo, napansin ko rin kanina nung nag, kaninang nagsalita sila about the uh, waiver doon sa AMLA, nawala na rin po, po yung, silang lahat. yung tatlo. Nawala, oo. Eh sabi ko nga sa inyo, baka they're only malingering, Mr. Chair. Hindi naman po pwedeng parang pinagtatawanan na lang nila tayo at uh, pinalulusatan nila tayo ng ganito. Nagtitsaga po tayo, lalong-lalo na po kayong nasa plenary ngayon. Alam po natin ang panganib ng COVID. Uh, may we uh, direct the COMSEC to write uh, letters to the following who were here earlier in Zoom to show cost for this committee not to issue an order of contempt. Ayun, ayun. Well, Mr. Chairman, if I may, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, Honorable Marcoleta. Mr. Pwede Chair. Po bang, ano pong pangalan nila? Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm Attorney Mangawang, Corporate Secretary. Attorney Mangawang, are you the uh, deputized uh, official of... Uh, sino na yung, ano mo, yung... Uh, 
Sino na yung lawyer na nag-deputize nag sa'yo? I, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Se Mr. Congressman, I am the Corporate Secretary. Yes, but you were earlier speaking for somebody who is a Vice President because he is indisposed, allegedly, hindi ba? Uh, it was not me uh, who was answering the question earlier, uh, Mr. Congressman. It was Attorney Roger Bukalan on behalf of SVP. Tony Bukalan, because uh, he was the one who uh, fed up with information, fed us with information that there is a so-called integrity office in PhilHealth. Is this correct? Uh, that's what I heard also, Mr. Congressman, from Attorney Roger Bukalan. What do you mean you heard? Hindi mo alam na ikaw ang corporate secretary, sinabi niya merong integrity office, and now you are still uh, supposed to verify kung totoo o hindi? Uh, yes, there is integrity, I think monitoring committee is the name of the committee uh, as part of the whistleblowing protection policy. That's who, the are the members, who are the members of this integrity committee? Uh, Mr. Congressman, I have to check the corporate order, but the head is the SVP for legal sector. Who is? Who is Attorney uh, Georgia Del Rosario? Who just... Uh, Whole and sick. Uh, yes, Hours sir. ago. Yes, Mr. No, no, no. no he, he, sat, he had hypertension yesterday during the Senate hearing. And he had to go to the Senate clinic, I think, twice, Mr. Congressman. Paano makakasiguro ang committee ito, uh, attorney, na itong committee ito ay merong integrity para gawin yung function na inaasahan ng PhilHealth? at ng publiko. So, paano kami makakasiguro na itong opisina ito is functioning within the objective set for, in, for itself for the purpose of uh, at least allaying the fears of the public and as well as supporting and helping this committee press out the problems involving peer help? Uh, Mr. Congressman, I think we just have uh, to require the Integrity Monitoring Committee or Management Committee to submit a report of what it has done since its creation. So, palaging ganun na lang. And then, uh, we will take uh, the report as it is, na parang totoo yun. Na parang uh, you, we hold it as true. Sino magbe-verify na totoo yun o hindi for our consumption? For example, may I, may I give you some examples? Pwede ba namin i-require ngayon ang uh, field health officials through this integrity office that all uh, key officials of field health should submit to the committee their respective SALENs and ITRs para lang makumpara namin. Okay. Will that be possible to be undertaken by the integrity office? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Congressman. I think... Uh... The corporation has already submitted copies of the salary of the key officials of uh, Philip. What about ITRs? Including, including ITRs from the uh, control, uh, from our fund management sector who has copy of uh, all our ITRs. Where, where did you submit it? In the committee? The hearing this? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Congressman, we submitted all our uh, salary through the corporate planning department. Mr. Chief, is this true that the key officials of PhilHealth have already submitted the respective SALMs and ITRs to this uh, committee? Refer to this. Uh, Mr. Congressman, can, I, can uh, we refer uh, the question to the SVP for Management Services Sector, Mr. Dennis Mas, because the HIV is under this office, who has the copy of all the SALM of key officials of all the corporation. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Congressman, Mr. Chair. I am Dennis Mas, Senior Vice President for Management Services. I handle HR and uh, general services uh, uh, of PhilHealth. Uh, at PhilHealth, we have this uh, PhilHealth Whistleblowing Committee. This is in compliance with the GCG, Memorandum Circular 2016-02, dated uh, April 22, 2016. 
the coverage of this uh, field health. I'm sorry result. to cut you short, Mr. Mas. No, I'm only asking you if you are, if you have already submitted, or if it is possible for this committee I to submit copies of your sal and sir, an ITR. I understand, sir. We already submitted the sal end of all the request as requested by the committee on public accounts. I understand. We already submitted. Mr. Chair, can, can you please confirm that? Yes, uh, we have not yet received the uh, sal end. Maka pwede pong, uh, anyway, sige, basta isubmit na lang po sa amin. Isubmit na namin, sir. And then, uh, Mr. Chair, can we ask them if uh, we can really hope something from this committee that they can at least help us uh, straighten or uh, make the system efficient, more particularly in uh, pinpointing the areas of corruption in field health, if they can, if they have a fraud risk framework and profile to determine the situs or area of corruption and how the culprits, if ever, if, uh, how, how they uh, manipulate these uh, corrupt, corruption activities, and where do they hide their loots? Number two, if they have data analysis to determine the concentration of fraud in field health, so that, uh, Mr. Chair, if we can, uh, if we can ask them to undertake and uh, organize this task force or uh, frameworks, they will probably be able to plug the loopholes as soon as possible. Dahil marami na talaga ang uh, nawawalang pondo sa field health uh, na alam na nating uh, kahit hindi pa natin napapatunayan ng lubusan dito lang sa mga datos na pinresent mo Mr. Chair and on the assumption that the uh, DICOA is quite accurate in uh, in submitting uh, all this uh, data preliminary data to the committee nakakakilabot Mr. Chair eh. uh if I can go now to uh, the ACR or the all case rate, Mr. Chair, which is the subject matter of today's hearing. Sino po bang pwedeng sumagot uh, malibang kay uh, si, si Dr. Vargas na lang bang sumasagot dyan? Wala na po bang ibang sumasagot? Uh, Honorable Marcoleta, before you proceed, uh, nagsubmit na po pala sa HR pero hindi pa po submitted sa atin. So, at any rate, I think you are asking for an official subpoena from this uh, committee. Parang subpoena, sir. Pero Apo. na prepare na ho namin. Yes. Pag release yung subpoena, i-release namin lahat. Yes. So, if there are no Yes. If there are no objections, we Okay, uh, okay, Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, we subpoena all the uh, sal and of all the uh, board members of uh, Field Health and those uh, officers and officials of uh, Field Health to be submitted here uh, in this uh, Honorable Committee. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Motion uh, for the submission of the subpoena. Uh, we will also include in the motion uh, what was uh, relayed earlier by the Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker Villafuerte on the waiver on the, of the... Uh, of the uh, AMLA. So with that motion there being no objection, motion is carried. So committee secretary is directed to issue the subpoena to the Philippine Health Field Health Corporation. The Honorable Marcoreta, you may continue. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Bago po tayo napunta sa sistema ng uh, all case rate, ang uh, matandang sistema ay yung tinatawag nating fee for service. Uh, tama po ba yun uh, sa Philippine Health? Mr. Chair, yes, uh, Mr. Congressman Marcaleta. Uh, ito pong fee for service ay uh, ipinatupad hanggang 2014 lamang po. Tama po? Tama po. At pagkatapos tayo ay uh, pumalaot na sa ibang sistema, kung tawagin nga natin ay all case rate. Mr. Chair, tama, tama po. po. Ano po ba yung dahilan kung bakit pinalitan natin yung fee for service at ipinalit natin yung all case rate. Mr. Chair, unang-una po, uh, 
to facilitate the reimbursement uh, kasi po ay uh, matagal po ang uh, proseso ng ating fee for service at uh, yun na nga po because of the uh, uh, yung pong mga uh, inefficiencies ng fee for service po ay gusto nating mapalitan. Pangalawa po to provide the uh, immediate information to our members pagdating po sa kanilang benepisyo dahil pag tinanong po kung magkano ang benepisyo ko halimbawa po dun sa binabanggit na uh, sakit masasabi po natin kaagad-agad hindi katulad po ng uh, uh, nung tinatawag po na fee for service and yun nga po dito uh, para po uh, maging mas maayos po yung paraan ng pagbabayad natin sa mga tweet, Mr. Chair, ang sinasabi ni Dr. Vargas, kaya pinalitan yung fee for service, ay merong advantages na makukuha. Ang sinasabi niya, mapapasilitate po yung pagbayad, ma-address natin ang inefficiency, at kung ano-ano pang mabubuting tagay na nilalayo yun noong uh, all case rate. Napalagay niyo ba, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Vargas, Ito po bang layunin na ito ay natupad ngayon? Kat katulad po nung sinasabi niyong to facilitate, kanina po ang dami pong nagtanong at nag-testify na napakarami pa po ninyong outstanding na hindi na babayaran sa mga ospital. Anong pinag-iba ngayon ng fee for service at saka yung uh, all case rate na hindi naman yung na-address? Yun talagang pinakalayunin kung bakit pumalaot kayo sa ibang sistema. Uh, Mr. Chair, um... Ang atin pong gaya po na nabanggit natin, isa ay yung para po mapabilis yung pagbabayad at nag-improve naman po ang ating turnaround time. However, meron talaga pong mapagkakataon or may mga claims po na hindi kaagad natin mababayadan, lalong-lalo na kung ito ay mga claims na kailangan nating ibalik sa mga ospital para po mag-comply sila. However, uh, meron pong mga pag-aaral na nagawa na it actually improved po the turnaround time. Ngayon lamang pong panahon syempre ng uh, pandemya ay kahit po kami ay uh, hindi kaagad-agad nung una nakakapagproseso or na, nabawasan ang pagpoproseso dahil meron din po kami mga uh, sumunod din po kami dun sa mga ECQ or MECQ. Pero again po pagdating po dun sa mga maayos na claims uh, bumilis naman po ang ating pagbabayad. Dr. Vargas, ang ibig mong sabihin, ang consideration lang rito ay pagpapabilis. Ah, hindi hindi naman pang ibang considerations na mas, ma mas importante niya. Napabilis nga, pero napabilis din yung pagnanakaw ng pondo. Eh, malaking problema pa rin, hindi ba? Katulad nitong uh, itong, uh, case rate na ito, na sa aking tingin, ito ang pinakaugat kung bakit nagkakaganito ang pondo ninyo. Kanina po, yung pneumonia ang, ang talagang classic na example dito. Kung halimbawa, ang pneumonia po ay sa standard uh, case rate ninyo is 15,000 pesos lang. Depende naman kasi sa grade o level ng hospital. Eh. Halimbawa, ang grade ng hospital ay eh, level 1. Mas mura po yung kaysa sa level 2 o kaysa sa level 3. Paano kung halimbawa... Ang nagastos niya uh, sa, sa 20 pesos na, na case rate ng pneumonia, ang nagastos niya lang halimbawa 10, 10 pesos, uh, 10,000 10, pesos or 15,000 pesos, hindi ba mandatorily babayaran mo rin yung 20,000, Dr. Vargas, kahit na yung service na ibinigay sa pasyente is less than that amount. Tama po? Mr. Chair, tama po because ang ating okay, case rate lang, ay tama. fixed amount. Tama. Kanino po ngayon mapupunta yung ibinayad yung 20,000 pesos samantalang ang nirender lang ng hospital, halimbawa level 1 lang, ay 10,000 pesos. Kanino mo mapupunta yung 10,000 pesos? Babalik po ba sa inyo yun? Uh, dahil, Mr. Chair, dahil po yung paraan... Ang tanong sa inyo, babalik ba sa inyo yung 10,000 pesos sapagat ang nagasta ng hospital na yun ay 10,000 pesos lang? Hindi po. Oh, ito yung problema. Hindi babalik sa PhilHealth. Kanino mapupunta? Mr. Chair, nasa ospital po, kasama rin po okay. ang ating doktor because kasama po doon sa rate natin ang bayad sa doktor. Ito nga ang problema, Dr. Vargas. Napakasimple nito. Binayaran mo ng 20,000 yung uh, pasyente ng pneumonia 
sapagkat all case rate nga eh. Mandatory babayaran mo eh. Ang pinaka-problema ang sinasabi ko sa inyo, hindi naman sa lahat ng pagkakataon, 20,000 nga yung bayad eh. Paano yung maraming pagkakataon, maraming instances na 15,000 lang ang binayad o kaya 10,000 lang? Ibig sabihin niyan, ang PhilHealth nagbibigay ng pondo, binabayaran ang isang serbisyo kahit hindi yun ang kanyang actual na serbisyo. Ang tawag po dyan, technically, is malversation, Dr. Vargas. Kung hindi niyo po nakikita ang legal implication niyan. Bakit? Sana man lang po, kung bumabalik sana sa inyo eh. Eh hindi. Kapag ka nagkasakit po at saka binigyan nyo ng 20,000 na uh, uh, ito na po yung kargada nun, all case rate, wala na po, hindi na po babalik yon, Money down the drain na po yon. Kaya po, nalulugso ang pondo ng, uh, ng pill rate ng dahil doon. Wala kayong sistema. Sana ang sistema po, ma-verify ninyo, okay, parang temporary lang yung 20,000. Pagkatapos, nung makita nyo na 50,000 lang, dapat i-refund sa inyo ng ospital. Sapagkat yun po naman ay hindi ginasta. Pera po ng ano yun, ng miyembro yun eh. Ganun dapat po para hindi naging, uh, naging ganyan ang kalagayan ng pondo natin. Bakit po noong 2012, Dr. Vargas, 23 cases lamang po ang pinag-aralan nyo sa case rate? 23 cases lang, hindi po ba? 2012, dyan kayo nag-umpisa. Tinetesting lamang po ninyo yun, di ba? Mr. Chair, Opo, nung 20, uh, yes po. Pagkatapos po ng 2014, nung mawala na, yung, uh, mawala na yung fee for service, ginawa nyo ng lahat. Ano ang philosophy behind that? What is the logic behind encompassing all cases? Samantalang ang tinesting po ninyo is 23 lang. Pwede ba nyo ipaliwanag yon sa isang napaka-ikli at napaka-simpleng malipaliwanag? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I would like, if you would allow me po, uh, Mr. Congressman, uh, in 2013, uh, because of the evidences of the advantages of paying case rates, at ito po yung binabasa ko mula po so sa circular. Uh, sino po yung nagsabi niyan? Sino po yung gumawa ng circular na yan? Diyan po kayo magaling eh. Sinasabi niyo because of the advantages of so and so. Paano po ninyo nalaman na mayroong advantage? Ang tinatanong ko lamang po sa inyo, uh, 23 cases lang po ang tinesting ninyo. Okay, Mr. Pargas, well, si VP, tapos, Senior Vice President Mercado ba ang health policy that time? Yung may hawak ng posisyon niyo? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Anong uh, posisyon mo nung panahon na yon? Nung 20... 14. 14 po. Ako po ay nasa Corporate Affairs Group. Corporate Affairs. So, si Miss Mercado ang health uh, Senior Vice President for Health Policy. Uh, hindi ko lang po matandaan kung noong 2014 siya po ang Senior Vice President. Pero ako po, since 2012, uh, ako po ay na-assign sa Communications Department noong 2012. Okay. Noong 2013 to 2018, ako po ay nasa Corporate Affairs Group. Okay. Ako po ay nalipat sa, uh, dito sa posisyon na ito na appoint noong April of 2019. At 2019 ka lang? Opo. So, eto tanong ko sa iyo, 2019 ka lang pala, no? Yung tinatanong ni Kong Marcoleta na potential corruption, talagang nandyan yan? Ah, pwede po ang nadyan not only on the case rate, but okay. in any others po. Sa case rate, di ba? Pwede, pwede talaga. Yes po. Because, Lalo uh, sa private hospitals, tama? Uh, opo. Okay. Dahil uh, makikita naman po natin at nabanggit po ninyo, may mga kaso na naka-file with regard to this. Okay. Liban libong kaso, tama? Yes po. Okay. Pangalawang tanong, kung merong sindikato dyan, 2019 ka, no? Pababa. Sigurado, kakauntsa ba yung ospital? O doktor, kung sino man, kung ano man programa. Tama? Mr. Chair, maaari po. Thank you. Honorable Marcoleta? Salamat, Mr. Chair. At uh, talaga namang lumilinaw na ang pinakaugat ng pinakaproblema dyan ay yung case rate na yan. Kasi sa case rate, tinatawag nilang fixed rate allowed by policy. Siyempre, sasabihin nila, wala silang pagkakasala rito. Wala silang pagkukulang dito. Kasi ito ngayon ang polisiya. Ito ang pinagtibay. May batas tungkol dito. Ang problema lang, Mr. Chair, kagaya ng paghalimbawa natin sa pneumonia kanina, 
10,000 pesos lang ang actual expense. Pero binayaran ng PhilHealth, yung 10,000 na, na sobra na yon hindi naman pala babalik sa kanila. Bakit wala po silang sistema na ang pinakamaganda ron para masinup natin ang pondo, yung sobra na yon dapat bumalik po sa PhilHealth para magamit pa ng ibang tao. Hindi po ba, hindi po ba yun ang pinakamabuti, Dr. Vargas? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, opo, uh, pero kontitingnan din po natin, uh, kaya po ang isa sa naging, uh, uh, and in 2017 po, ay, uh, at is naman po ay pagsunod na rin sa, uh, sa findings ng COA, ang management po ay uh, nag-propose na rin sa board uh, ng una, either we retain it as a status quo or second, babayadan po kung ano uh, lower than the case kung lower than the case rate babayadan po kung ano yung actual kasama din po dito ang either yung sinasabi na tiered payment yung pong binabanggit nyo kanina bakit na, na hindi po ganun ang gawin ninyo uh, opo. yung sobra kinakailangan po ay kunin mula doon sa ospital sapagat hindi naman nila nagamit yon ibig sabihin kung ano po talaga yung nagastos lamang kailangan kunin natin yung sobrang pondo na yon para may balik sa PhilHealth, magamit po ng iba. At sa ganun, may iwasan po natin yung conditions ng corruption. Kaya po nagkakaroon ng ganito mga pangyayari. Eh. Nagiging, uh, nagiging, ano po eh, na, na, natetemp po yung mga nasa loob na gamitin ito sapagkat napakalawak po, napakalawak ng area ng possible corruptions. Sa, hanggat hindi nyo tinatakpan yung butas na ito, Palagi dito manggagaling po yung anomalya na may kinalaman sa pondo. Mr. Bibigyan Vargas. ko po kayo ng isang magandang halimbawa. Paano nyo i-resolve ito? July, ito po uh, merong isang mag-anak. Yung kanila pong anak na babae ay ipinasok sa, sa Manila Doctors Hospital. Sapagkat nagkaroon ng pamamaga, nagkaroon ng bukol yung kanyang lieg. Pagkaraan po ng isang araw na diagnose po siya na meron po siyang COVID. Noong July 16 po, nasa akin po yung mga dokumento eh. Nagbigay po ng, hindi ko po alam kung ano yung CF2 form mula sa PhilHealth yun. Yung po doktor ng United, uh, uh, ng uh, Manila Doctors Hospital, ang nagngangalang Christine Karingal, pinirmahan niya yung CF2 form ng PhilHealth reflecting a deduction or benefit of 143,000 doon sa pasyente. Pagkatapos, July 16 po yun. Kasi nakonfine naka sila ron at sila uh, nagkaroon na rin ng quarantine dahil nga ang sabi ng uh, Manila doctors, eh, na nakapag-contact siya ng, ng COVID. Ang nasakit ito, Dr. Vargas, uh, July 17 o kinabukasan, Nag, nagbago yung uh, statement of account ng Manila Doctors na walang bigla yung 143,000. Wala na yung benefit na yung binura nila. Alam po ba ninyo kung anong dahilan? Nasuri daw sa x-ray na wala naman palang COVID yung pasyente. Ngayon, ang, ang binayad po nilang total pagkatapos ng more than 15 days na confinement, 942,000 pesos Kahit piso po ay walang naibigay na tulong ng PhilHealth. Sumulat po yung magulang ng pasyente sa inyong uh, Benefits Administrative Section ng NCR ng PhilHealth Regional Office. Hanggang ngayon po, tikom ang kanilang bibig. Bakit po nagkaganito ito? Bakit po naglagay sila ng 143,000 at kinabukasan ay tinanggal po nila? Saan napunta po? Yung, yung 143,000. I am sure, sabi nyo kanina, merong, merong uh, siguradong claim filed by the Manila doctors. At maaaring yung claim na yon binayaran nyo na ng 143. Pero yung pasyente po, nising kunduling, wala pong na nakuwang benepisyo. By August, alam po ba nyo ang ginawa ng pasyente? In-update pa po niya yung contribution niya sa, sa, sa PhilHealth ng 5,000 pesos thinking or hoping that makakuha siya ng kahit anong benepisyo. 
More particularly, yung pinangako na pinirmahan ng doktor na 143,000. Pero hanggang ngayon po, wala silang binigay kahit na piso lang. Paano nyo i-resolve Ito po yung case rate. Pagkatapos sasabihin nyo kanina, napakaraming advantages nito. Hindi po totoo yun. Kanina po nabanggit yung katarata. Babalikan ko kayo dito at kinakailangan magkaroon tayo ng magkaroon kayo ng sagot dito. Anong gagawin niyo sa Manila Doctors Hospital? Na nangako na magbibigay ng 143,000 pagkatapos ang ang kanyang eh, pina siningil ay total of 942,000 without any benefit or credit to the poor patient. O ito pa po, isang example para lang hindi ako mawala. Ito po yung katarak na pansin kani na binigyan ng DIN kanina. Talagang makikita po ninyo kung nasan yung area ng corruption dito eh. Ito naman po ay isang maliit na clinic sa Marikina City. River Valley Eye Center, no? Hindi ko nababanggitin ang pangalan ng doktora. Ang procedure po ba ganito? Ito katarak lang po. Ang sabi nung uh, ang sabi nung River Valley Eye Center dito sa Marikina, o mamili ka kanya ng lente na gusto mo. Uh, magmula sa 8,000 to 25,000 pesos. Iyon ang range kasi kanya iba-ibang lente may nang galing sa China, may nang galing sa United Kingdom, may sa US, etc., etc. So yung tao mo kang uh, gusto naman niya siguro eh nang galing naman siguro sa US invest na China, pinili niya yung 17,000 ang buong akala niya, Dr. Vargas, sa 17,000 na yon, makakakuha siya ng discount. Yun ang pagkakaalam nila. Alam nila ang PHealth nakakatulong eh. Alam niyo ba ang ginawa ng, ano, ng uh, River Valley Eye Center? Kinuha lamang yung kanyang PHealth membership data, re de data record. Pagkatapos ang sabi sa kanya, oh, magbayad ka na ng 17,000. Eh paano po kanya? Wala po ba akong discount sa, sa lente? Ay, hindi na kanya, yung surgery kanya, ano, okay na yon Wala ka nang babayaran sa surgery. Ang napansin po dito, ah, Dr. Vargas, wala man lang kapali-paliwanag, masyadong malihim yung hospital o kaya yung clinic kung ang pag-uusapan ay yung pagpapaliwanag ng karampatang benepisyo ng isang pasyente. Parang tikom na tikom, parang hindi sila transparent. No, parang mayroong secrecy doon sa pakikipag-negotiate nila sa pasyente. Dito lamang mapapansin nyo eh, na talagang talamak dito yung, totoo ba ito na wala siyang uh, babay, uh, na yung 17,000 wala siyang discount sa lente sapagat yung surgery ay eh, ano, ibinigay ng libre sa kanya? Bakit naman yung kapitbahay niya baligtad ang nangyari? Isang mata lang ang pinag-uusapan dito, Dr. Vargas. Ha? Yung kapitbahay niya, siningil ng 10,000 pesos, meron na siyang lente, libre na yung surgery. Bakit ganun ang nangyari? At saka, bakit ayaw nilang ipaliwanag? Kung ano ba talaga? Kasi, kahit ako ang pasyente siguro, Dr. Magar, gusto ko siguro malaman sa, sa, para sa, sa referensya ko, ano ba talagang ginawa mo sa akin? Ano ba talagang gastos ko? Ba't hindi mo ibigay sa akin? Ba't hindi mo sabihin sa akin kung magkano talaga ang benefit na nakuha ko sa PhilHealth? Para hindi naman ako nagdududa sa'yo. Be it in the, uh, in the lente, be it in the surgery, o kung professional fee or whatever, dapat ganun ipaliwanag mismo nung pasyente, uh, nung, uh, nung hospital, at saka nung clinic. Para sa ganun, yung, yung pasyente hindi nag-aalala kung nakabayad siya ng sobra o bakit hindi man lang siya naayudahan ng PhilHealth. Sumasama ang loob nila sa inyo, eh, Dr. Vargas. Maring hindi nyo alam ito, pero lahat ng ganitong mga klase, napakarami nito, Sumasama ang loob nila sa inyo sapagkat wala kayong coordination siguro sa ospital o kaya yung coordination ay talagang ganoon para yung, yung sindikato malayang makapag-operate. Sinasabi ko itong mga actual cases na ito sapagkat ito ay nasa sinasabi mong whole case rate na kanina ang, layo, ang magandang layunin ay para sana mapabilis, maging efficient, kung napabilis mo nga sana. Pero it has created necessary evil, Dr. Vargas. So, babalikan kita. Ano ang remedy ng tao na initially binigyan nila ng pag-asa ng PhilHealth will credit at least 143,000 mabawasan ang kanyang uh, ibinayad sa Manila doctors pero he ended up with nothing. 
And he paid 942,000 pesos. Nothing from PhilHealth. What can he do? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Sir Congressman Vegas. Marcoleta, uh, sir, if, well, later on, we, I would like to get the name of the patient uh, because we can check that with our records right uh, after and see what has happened para po mabigyan natin at magawan ng tamang benepisyo na kailangan makuha ng pasyente as eligible patient. Second po, we will check with the Manila, with the hospital that you said, kung ano po yun nangyari dito. So, and we will get back to you po kung ano po ang nakita natin pagdating una sa claim, kung paano po ipinail ng ospital para po mas masagot ko kayo na nga kung magkano ang benepisyo na kailangan mapapunta sa pasyente. Pangalawa po, uh, pagdating naman po doon sa mga cataract cases, ang atin pong package for cataract is uh, 16,000 at ito po ay hindi lamang para sa surgery. Ito po ay para po doon sa surgery at para sa bayad sa doktor. Pero doon po sa hospital charges, kasama po doon ang uh, lente. Kasama rin po yung bayad sa operating room fee. Tapos yung pong binabanggit ng doktor na surgery na sinasabi niya ayon po sa inyo ay libre, doon po sa case rate may kasama po doong porsyento na para sa doktor para sa surgery talaga. So ang isa po natin kailangan din natin ma-check, again, because we pay uh, for the fixed rate, pero kung halimbawa po ang gusto ng pasyente na lente ay mas mahal, then maaari nga pong siya ay masingil ng ating mga ospital or ng clinic na binanggit nyo or ng doktor pagdating po doon. But again, we have to check on the data or on the claims. Ganon din po yung isa nyong nabanggit. Uh, kaya nga po, uh, yon po. Pangalawa po is siguro po uh, kailangan din namin talagang palakasin ang information campaign para po ang ating mga pasyente at ang ating mga miyembro ay mas alam po nila kung ano ang beneficyo na makukuha sa, sa PhilHealth at dapat po itong beneficyo ito ay mai-demand po nila sa ating mga doktor at sa ating mga ospital. Because yun po yung talagang beneficyo na dapat makuha sila. Sa mga katwid, inaamin mo rin, uh, Dr. Vargas, na talagang yung uh, pagpapaalam o yung information sa mga kababayan natin ay talagang mababa sapagkat nangyayari itong mga bagay na ito katulad nitong actual cases na sinabi ko sa iyo na kung saan napapansin nila malihim yung uh, pakikipag uh, pakikitungo ng ospital sa kanila kapag ka ang kanilang tinatanong ay yung ayudang makukuha nila sa PhilHealth nahalata nila ito eh isang napakalaking uh, bagay ito sana mapansin niyo na na dito talaga nag-uugat ang pinag-uugat uh, ito ang pinag-uugatan ng anomalya kung kung ito ay malinaw kung ito ay transparent hindi siguro kayo mapupunta sa ganyang kalagayan na ngayon ngayon ay dinidinig natin ang uh, napakalaking uh, sigalot na bumabalot ngayon sa PhilHealth Opo uh, Mr. Kaya, Mr. kaya nandito yung pagkukulang kaya kanina tinatanong kita baka mas maganda pa nga siguro kung fee for service na lang sapagkat itong fixed rate na sinasabi ninyo nasasayang, nawawaldas ang pondo natin sapagkat mapipilitan kayo na bayaran yung isang uh, serbisyo sa isang pasyente kahit na ito ay mas mababa doon sa original ninyong binayaran. Ngayon, wala pa lang kayong mekanismo para sana yon ay marikop ninyo o makuha, ma makuha ang pabalik para yun sana ay mapaikot natin uli, magamit pa ng marami na ating kababayan. Yun ang pinakamahirap at pinakalantarang uh, lantarang area ng corruption na nakikita ko ngayon. Mr. Uh, Mr. Dr. Vargas, well, number one, gusto ko lang pong ilinaw na yung case rate under the PhilHealth Now ay hindi po dapat tawagin na all case rate. Kasi nga ho, maraming obserbasyon na talagang mali. So, wag natin bigyan ng masamang konotasyon ang all case rate. Nagkataon lang naman, sinasabi namin, mali yung policy nyo. Yung fee for service naman na uh, Honorable Marcoleta, iniiwasan na rin ng maraming healthcare systems sa, ka, sa kadailanan na kuminsan tinataasan ng mga ospital. 
yung mga pribado, yung pagbayad. Kaya nga po yung sinabi natin sana, gawing ceiling. Yan yung ceiling ng pinakababayaran at uh, pag-aralan ng tama kung magkano talaga ang dapat na bayad. Ngayon, uh, Dr. Vargas, naintindihan ko, 2019 ka pa lang, pala nandyan, no? But I think, first, number one, you don't defend the old case rate because you don't need to defend it. Okay, nasa corporate ka dati, pero hindi mo kailangan depensa niyan. And number two, kasama sa reforma dyan, yung baguhin yung ganitong sistema. Ano yung pinakatamang angkop na sistema para yung binabanggit ng, ni Congressman Marcoleta ay magawa natin. Yung tamang pagbayad at hindi masayang ang pondo ng PhilHealth. Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Congressman Marcoleta. Opo, uh, una po do sa puntos po ni uh, Congressman Marcoleta, uh, our facilities and our professionals that we accredit, actually po, they sign a performance commitment sa PhilHealth. So, kasama po dyan sa performance commitment ang pagbibigay ng tamang impormasyon sa ating mga uh, uh, professional, lalo, no? So, so, kung ito, may mga ganito po, katulad ng nabanggit nyo, na hindi man lamang nag explain or hindi man lamang nagsasabi, again, if we can uh, get the names uh, of the doctor so that we can call their attention. Kasama naman po yan, dun sa ating tinatawag na healthcare provider assessment monitoring. Dun naman po sa binabanggit ni Chair, uh, tama po kayo, sa ngayon po actually ay kami po ay... Uh, pumupunta or tumutungo sa pagpapalit ng panibagong provider payment mechanism at ang tinitingnan po natin ngayon ay kung ano yung nasusulat sa batas ng universal healthcare law. Sa ngayon po ang aming talagang ginagawa, uh, especially po nung pumasok na ako dito sa sektor at ito naman po idala na rin ng mga direktiba, um, nag-OIC po ako ng 2018, no? April, na-appoint lang ako ng 2019. Ay, kami po ay naggumagawa ng costing uh, exercise. Ito po yung talagang pangangalap ng tamang presyo ng mga serbisyo na ibinibigay upang pagdating po, since meron na po tayo nitong tinatawag na costing, ay makakagawa na po tayo ng provider payment mechanism na kung saan ididetermine na din po natin kung magkano ang dapat bayadan ng isang pasyente. Yun po yung tinatawag natin na co-payment. Magse-set po tayo ng tinatawag na fixed co-payment. Okay, Dr. Vargas, yung pong details na yan, you can discuss it within the field health. Because ah, yes. within okay, the law, sure. binibigyan namin kayo ng sapat na luwag para okay. gawin yung tamang policy. Ang tanong ko sa inyo, ganito. Kanina, sabi nyo, no, 3 bilyon ang nawala sa tansya ninyo on the old case rate. Uh, on the past years, nakita nyo naman yung pinakita kong COA audit reports. In the filing of the case, without necessarily pointing to anyone, Willing kayo mag-sign ng affidavit kung magkano yung nawawalang pondo from 2018, 2019 nung kayo umupo na 3 billion for 2020, I do not know, uh, 2019, I do not know for 2018, but are you willing to sign an affidavit dun sa nawawalang pondo sa PhilHealth? Uh, Mr. Chair, again, gaya po ng binanggit ko kanina, uh, sa larangan po noong tinatawag nating provider payment mechanism, Uh, kami po ay nagbabayad ng fixed amount. So, no, 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 uh, sa no, tingin no. po natin, uh, hindi po siya Dr. nawawala. Dr. Vargas, simply po yung analysis, no? Yung underpayment, wala po yun eh. No? Uh, nagbaba kayo na, nagbayad kayo ng mas mababa kung ano yung dapat. Ang sinasabi natin yung overpayment. Ang sabi nyo, hindi. Hindi ba overpayment ang inyong concept? Parang kanina, binanggit nyo po. Pero it's actually an overpayment. Kasi kung kung 15,000 ang pneumonia, nagbayad kayo ng 10, may 5,000 na umover. Particular pa ako sa mga private. Now, based on what you said ganina, because under oath ka naman, and we can give that to the courts, ngayon tinatanong kita, are you willing to sign an affidavit based on that overpayment na nakikita nyo, the 22% na lumalabas na pondo sa field health? Hindi mo naman kasalanan yan eh. But I'm asking you right now, Will you help the government file that case if ever without pointing to anyone? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I am willing to help the government po. Again, just like po nang binanggit ko rin kanina because I am under oath, uh, the data was provided to me by our... Yes, 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 Dr. Yes, Valgas. It's all data. At makikita rin ng gobyerno yan from the region to finance. 
are you willing to sign an affidavit to that effect? Because if you will not sign the affidavit, I would think from 2018 to 2019, eh, tinolerate nyo yan at kasama rin kayo. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I will sign an affidavit, of, of course, based on the data. Okay. Uh, Honorable Marcoleta, please continue. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Vargas, uh, marami akong nabasa rin mga polietos ng uh, PhilHealth. Uh, at dinidepensahan nga itong uh, ACR na yan, uh, kung tawagin nga ninyo yung all case rate. Uh, natatandang ko na merong nakalagay sa mga, mga pamphlets ninyo na sa pagdidepensa ninyo sa argumento ng, uh, at kahalagahan ng uh, ACR o all case rate. Sabi nyo, uh, we lose some, we win some. At pagkatapos nakalagay doon, eh, we gain uh, efficiency. Uh, tama ba yung uh, nakita kong mga paglalahad doon, uh, uh, Mr. Vargas, na para bang uh, meron kayong uh, itong sa, uh, yung all case rate, maring may natatalo kayo, meron naman kayong pinananalo, pagkatapos uh, actually nag-gain kayo kanyo ng efficiency. Nakalagay sa mga pamphlets ninyo. Eh. Mr. Chair, gaya po ng nabanggit natin, because this is a fixed case rate, Meron pong mga pagkakataon na maaari tayong makapagbayad ng mas mababa. So yun nga po yung tinatawag natin, you may lose in some. Or yun pong mas mataas because it's a fixed case rate. Because you, yun naman po yung you may win in some. However, okay. under the principle po ng ating na, case rate, so, it works on the average. So you confirm po. that minsan manalo kayo, minsan natalo kayo. Tama? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, pwede mo ba akong bigyan ng uh, example, itong committee ito? Ano yung pinapanalo natin? Ah, katulad po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, ito po ay uh, sa isang healthcare provider po. Kung halimbawa po, ay, uh, sila po ay nagkiklaim ng uh, 6,000, pero ang fixed case rate po natin is 8,000. Babayadan din po natin ng uh, 8,000. Ah, yeah. Kung ito naman po ang kanila pong, uh, for example, ang kanila pong claim ay uh, 40,000. Pero De, ang gawin mo lang 10,000 para madali. 10,000. Uh, 10,000 ang kanilang claim pero ang atin pong case rate is 6,000 lang. 6,000 din lang po ang ating babayadan. And then saan po pumapasok yung binabagit uh, Dr. natin? Dr. Vargas, tanong lang po. Di po ba kung ako'y nagpunta ng ospital at ang case rate ay 6,000, Ah, 8,000. Sabi nyo kanina, no? Example nyo. 8,000. Pero po, ang case rate ay ang nagastos ay 6,000. Babayaran nyo pa rin ang 8,000. Tama yes, po? Yes, Mr. Okay. Chair. Including the PM. So, pumunta ako ng hospital, private hospital, ang babayaran ko ngayon ay 10,000. Ang babayaran nyo lang ho ay 8,000. Tama? Yes, Mr. Chair. So, ang 2,000, manggagaling sa bulsa ko. Opo. Oh, hindi ka nakalamang. Ako nalamangan. So, Congressman Marcoleta, please continue. Yung nga, yun nga tinatanong ko, Mr. Chair, paano nga nalo ang PhilHealth? Ah, ito po ay especially po doon sa ating uh, pinalabas na no balance billing na kung saan nga po ay hindi po dapat sinisingil na yung ating mga pasyente. Kahit po ang kanilang uh, nagastos or ang nagastos na ospital ay mas malaki. So, kung halimbawa po 8,000 ang kanilang uh, uh, nagastos, 6,000 lang ang babayadan natin, pero yung natitirang 2,000, hindi po yun dapat sinisingil sa pasyente. At ito po, nung sinimulan natin yung uh, 23 case rates, yan po ay kasama nating ipinalabas para nga po doon sa mga uh, kulang na ibabayad natin at doon sa sobrang ibabayad natin, uh, siya po ay mag average dahil hindi naman po dapat magbabayad ang pasyente. So initially, doon po yun pumapasok. Uh, kaya po doon, kung ikaw ay mas efficient, ang pag-operate uh, pag mo, ang pag-treat uh, uh, sa ating pasyente, so maaari pong may pagkakataon na uh, ma yun pong kulang or yung uh, sinasabi na labis ay siya po yung mag average doon sa kulang naman. So yun po yung kaya po naglabas din tayo, hindi lang ito case rates, kundi naglabas din po tayo ng financial protection policy na no balance billing. However, hindi pa po, yun nga po gaya ng nabanggit kanina ni Chair, 
Uh, yung ating no balance billing ay hindi pa rin po para sa lahat. Pero under the universal health care, sinasabi po na dapat ito ay para sa lahat at ang mga ospital ay binigyan na rin ng ilang porsyento kung gaano kadami ang dapat no balance billing or no copay at kung ilan yung dapat may copay. So doon po pumapasok Sorry, ako, yung konsepto po ng average. Uh, ano? Napakahaba ng kwento eh kasi ang tanong ko lang, bigyan mo kami ng halimbawa paano nanalo ang PhilHealth. Yun ang, yun ang pinaka-particular na gusto kong ipaliwanag mo. Paano na nanalo ang PhilHealth? Eh, andyan na nga yung kalagayan ng pondo nyo. Ang sabi nga ng aktwa rin nyo nung nakaraang pag, uh, pagdinig, baka isang taon na nga lang ang buhay ng inyong, ano, eh, ng inyong pondo. Eh. Kaya nga tinatanong ko, under the system of ACR, ang sabi nyo, you win some, you lose some. Mas particular ako doon sa ipapanalo ng PhilHealth sapagkat yan, makapagbibigay ng kabutihan sa pondo. Pag maganda ang pondo, mayabong ang pondo, matatag ang pondo, masaya ang tao, makikinabang ang tao. Ang sabi nyo, you lose some, you win some. Ang tinatanong ko, paano kayo nananalo? Ba't kayo napunta sa ganyang kalagayan? Na halos malugso na pala yung pondo. Ah, uh, Mr. Sa Chair? Ang pinayaran ninyo ng mas mahal, kasi fix rate, kesa sa medyo tumama kayo, paano nyo masasabi ngayon in general na talagang uh, nananalo ang PhilHealth? Pwede mo ba ngayon pangatwirana na nanalo ang PhilHealth talaga kung titingnan mo yung kondisyon ng pondo? Honorable, yun ang gusto kong ipaliwanag mo. Honorable Malcoleta, with your indulgence, pwede yung last question na yan. Meron pa po tayong yun mga na, nakalinya gusto magtatanong. Ko, uh, gusto kong magpaliwanag siya. Opo. Kasi napaka-importante na ipaliwanag niya na nananalo ang PhilHealth sa pamamagitan ng all case rate. Kasi kung totoong nananalo, eh, hindi siya nanalagay sa kanyang kalagayan na ngayon ay dinidinig pa natin sila. At pagkatapos, kung may paliwanag niya yan sana, at makakatanggap-tanggap, pakiiwan niya yung telepono niya sa iyo, Mr. Chair, sapagkat isang araw, tatawagan ko siya dahil sa aktual na mga kaso na inilahad ko ngayon. Kinakailangan matulungan niya yung mga tao na nagre-reklamo, baka sakaling sa ganung paraan man lang, makabawi ang pilhet sa kanyang imahe. Pwede bang ipaliwanag ninyo sa isang uh, napakaikli pero masustansyang uh, pagpapaliwanag, Mr. Vargas? Kung paano sa pamamagitan ng uh, paglipat ninyo sa all case rate ay naipananalo ninyo ang PhilHealth. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. pong, this is a provider payment. So dito po ay ang sinasabi po natin para sa mga ospital or sa mga provider that they may win in some, they may lose in some. Kasi nga po ito yung paraan ng pagbabayad natin. Now yun naman pong pagdating sa ating uh, 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 pondo sa PhilHealth, tama rin po kayo, tama rin po siya, uh, Mr. Chair, sa pinapakita nila na maaaring lumaki na ang ibinabayad namin at marami din po kami mga maaaring nagdi-defraud na hospital or providers sa amin na maaaring nagkiklaim ng mas mataas, nag up case, kung kaya't yung mga yan po ay ating uh, iniimbestigahan at yan din po ay ating uh, Uh, pinapadaan sa legal na proseso. Yun naman pong nabanggit ninyo na sa isang taon ay maaari na lamang kaming uh, uh, maubusan ng pondo. Uh, ito po naman po ay nanggaling po sa projection sa pag-aaral ng aming actuary dahil po una ay meron nga pong nangyari ngayon na pandemya na kung saan ang sinasabi po ay maaaring tumaas ang aming mga babayadan at maaari din po kaming mabawasan ng koleksyon pagdating sa premium, kaya maapektuhan po yung aming pondo. Um, pero gaya nga din po nang nabanggit ni, uh, uh, ni Chair at saka po ninyo kanina, dito po sa ating current system ay maaaring may nangyayaring fraud at itong fraud na ito na inaimbestigahan natin ay maaaring nanggagaling sa ospital, na ayong gagaling sa ating mga binabayadang providers, or again, sabi po, baka pwede ay galing din sa aming mga korporasyon or within the design of the policy itself. Mr. Chair, hirap na hirap talaga akong uh, maintindihan ng paliwanag niya. Ganito na lang, para matapos ako. Alin yung mas, alin yung mas uh, marami? Yung panalo ang PhilHealth o yung talo? Uh, the PT Speaker Marcoleta, Parang wala naman pong napailo, na ipaliwanag na nanalo ang PhilHealth. Yun na nga eh. Kaya nga siguro, uh, 
Hanggang doon na lang siguro yung kanyang kayang ipaliwanag, pero ako, hindi ko kayang tanggapin yun. Sapagkat mula sa kanila, sinasabi niya, they win some, they lose some, they gain efficiency. Wala akong makita ang efficiency na maski, maski human lang na ipanalo eh. Ang katibayan, Mr. Chair, na walang uh, naipanalo ang PhilHealth ay itong ginagawa nating pagdinig ngayon. Na ngayon ay nagsasakripisyo tayong lahat para lang matulungan natin ang ating bayan sana. Maibalik natin ang pagtitiwala sa PhilHealth. With that, Mr. Chair, sana makuha mo ang telepono ni Mr. Vargas para kahit papano matawagan siya ng mga taong binanggit ko kanina, maka makatulong naman yung ipinangako ng PhilHealth para sa kanila. Salamat po, Mr. Chair, sa inyong uh, pagbibigay ng panahon. Thank you, Honorable Marcoleta. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Vargas, ang isa po sa mga pwede niyong sabihin na hindi naman talaga natalo, pero parehong talo ang situation, is public hospitals. Kasi pag nagbayad po kayo ng, 20, uh, let's say, 15,000 uh, at naging, uh, naging 20,000 po yung, I mean, pneumonia, 15,000, pero ang totoong bill, 10,000, yung 5,000 na yun, papasok ko sa public hospital eh. Pero, yun po, para pumunta lang from one public fund to another public fund. Pero in a private hospital setup, talo po talaga tayo. Pero sa katotohanan, no, ang pasyente, either way, public or private, kung ano yung ceiling ninyo, out of pocket na hunyang idadagdag yun. Sa sarili niya ng bulsa kukunin. Kaya kung meron lang pong sasabihin nating tabla sa public hospital, pero sa private to talaga, nandyan yung corruption. And I see your cases, yung fraud cases ninyo, almost uh, 5,259 ang kaso ng mga panluloko. Kasi nga, hindi lang naman to kaso ng maliit na bayad, ah, malaking bayad sa isang maliit na panggagamot, kung hindi may nameke ng tao. Totoo po yan. At meron namang inubulang, kaya yung tinatanong kanina ni Honorable uh, uh, Barsaga, na kasipun lang, gagawing pneumonia para makuha yung case rate. Kaya kung makikita nyo, yung diferensya from DOH, iba kayo parate. 500,000 lang ang pneumonia sa kanya, 700,000 sa inyo. Consistently, since 2014 to 2019. At yung katarata nga at yung iba pang madali na itagong pamamaraan para makakuha ng pera, lumalabas din ho naman eh sa yearly COA reports at mismong sa inyong finance kung magkano yung lumalabas na pondo sa pagbayad kung anong klaseng operasyon. Mr. Chair. Honorable Fernandez. Yeah, oh, uh, since na nandito na rin po tayo doon sa percentage ano, na kanina tinanong natin kung ano yung ratio ng overpayment saka underpayment and uh, a while ago sinabi na 78% Uh, yung underpayment at 22% yung overpayment. At yung 22% na sinasabi kanina ni Mr. Fargas ay nagkocorrespond yun sa 3 bilyon noong 2019. At uh, we're asking also na mapadala sa atin yung mga previous years. No? And aside from that, Mr. Chairman, I think we need to find out also yung mga records ng mga different private and uh, government hospital para mag-differentiate po natin ano, yung, uh, kung nagtutugma. No? At uh, considering, Mr. Chairman, that itong binanggit mo na mga kaso ng mga iba't ibang hospital, eh, simulan po natin dun sa mga hospital na may mga kaso para makita po natin kung magbabalanse eh, yung sinasabi nilang overpayment sa 22% na 3 billion doon sa isasubmit sa atin ng, ng mga hospital. So, in that case, Mr. Chairman, I move that we summon also the uh, different uh, association ng hospitals na kung saan sila po ay binigyan ng akreditasyon ng uh, field health and submit to us, Mr. Chairman, doon sa um, records nila sa underpayment na nagkocorrespond sa kanilang hospital at yung overpayment na nagkocorrespond din po sa kanilang uh, sa kanila pong uh, collection. In that case, Mr. Chairman, somehow, mababalansi po natin kung tama yung record ng PhilHealth at tama rin yung, at ano yung record ng mga different hospitals, Mr. Chairman. Yes, thank you. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Deputy Speaker Fernandez. Kung papayagan niyo po, Deputy Speaker Fernandez, dito po sa mga may fraud cases since 2018 to 2020, yan po yung unahin natin. Tapos uh, hingin din po natin yung data ng mga malalaking alokasyon. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, ang sinasabi mo po ninyo, doon sa 2018 po na under at uh, overpayment, they need to submit all, of the, all those documents. 
coming uh, from the different hospitals. Ito kasi yung mga prodolent na mga hospitals na may mga kaso. I ano po natin, ipa-check natin sa committee kung particular ano po yung mga hospital na to kasi yung iba nakita ko and review ko mga paisa-isang kaso. But marami din dito yung maramihang kaso sa bawat hospital. But at anyway, uh, Deputy Speaker Fernandez, your motion is to yung if you want, no, let's focus on pneumonia at sino yung mga private hospitals na malaki ang binayaran. Uh, I think Mr. Chairman, yung limang pinakamalalaki na package uh, Okay. Siguro i-categorize natin yung lima okay. sa bawat hospital na isubmit sa atin yun para ngayon makita po natin ang difference, Mr. Chair. The Mr. committee secretary is directed to look into the list of the cases, fraudulent cases, uh, na nandito po sa atin from 2018 to 2020. And the list of 2013 to 2020, uh, if PhilHealth can give us kung ano po yung mga lalaking private hospitals, top five, na nag-benefit dito sa... Let's concentrate on pneumonia. Yes. Because ito yung malaking ginagamit. Uh, Philet is so directed and the committee secretary is so directed. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes? Ace, Ace Barbers. Honorable Barbers is recognized. Salamat, Mr. Chair. At, uh, there's some technical problems. I've been raising my hand earlier. So, anyway, uh, gusto ko lang kasi sanang uh, magkaroon ng interjection dun sa tanong ni Congressman Marcoleta tungkol dun sa, sa punto na merong overpayment. Uh, uh, may underpayment daw na 78%. Eh kung may underpayment na 78%, abay di sana nagwelga na yung mga ospital. Kapag uh, hanggang ngayon, eh, mukha namang hindi. But yung 22% na overpayment, eh, mukhang timing. Of course, we understand why they are probably quiet dahil nga nakinabang sila. Uh, yung uh, tanong ni Congressman Marcoleta tungkol dun sa sa uh, mga yung sa mga packages kasi Mr. Chair who determines kung uh, how much should the package be uh, how much is the net uh, amount that will go to the doctor for its professional fees, how much will go to the hospital, etc. etc. Yung kakabuan po ng package, sino po nagde-determine nun? Mr. Chair, <coughs> Mr. Yes. Congressman, we have a department in the corporation, the Benefits Development and Research Department, who does the research and who proposes the policy and actually to compute also on this. Oh, like, let's say, take the case, for example, of a, an opta or an eye doctor, no? nag-opera siya. Example lang, how much, uh, di ba, sabi natin, isang mata, 16,000, am I correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. So, dun sa 16,000 na yun, no? sa, sa dalawang mata ay 32,000, dahil yun nga yung nasa case rate ninyo. How much, uh, more or less, is the net amount that goes to the professional fee of the, the doctor. Para lang may idea tayo. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, for a while lang po, I'm checking lang po. Uh, Sumagot ka lang, ano, ng uh, uh, tama uh, naman, wag naman yung masyado maraming pasakalye. Uh -huh. Ngayon mong paligoy-ligoy kasi, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the, for, the, for example, po dun sa cataract, we pay po for the hospital, 9600 and for the professional fee, uh, it's 6400 6400 is the net uh, for, professional fee that goes yes, to the po. doctors and then for, for both the, eye operations. Uh, eye cataract. Ang rule po, Mr. Chair, sa cataract is uh, kung ito po ay gagawin, in one seating for both eye, we will only pay po 16,000. Pero kung ito po'y gagawin with a difference of 24 hours, saka lang po tayo magbabayad ng dalawang pakete. Pero yun nga po, 9,000, uh, roughly six, pagka po surgery, uh, dun sa case rate, 60% po ay pupunta doon sa uh, hospital, the 40% is pupunta sa, sa Surihano, Pagka naman po medical case rates, 
ito po ay 70% for the hospital and roughly 30% will go to the doctor. Honorable Barbers, if I may, uh, we still have people lined up kung okay na po yung clarification. Yeah, um, isa na lang, very short, uh, Mr. Chair, kasi kanina, yung sa, tukod din sa case, I will again ask anyway sa, sa IRM later on. Yun na lang, uh, kasi nga, uh, napupunta dun sa, sa professional fee, napakaliit na amount, no? considering that uh, we're charging 32,000 and yet what goes to the uh, doctors for it, for their professional fees just a uh, net of about 6,000 pesos. So meron, ano, and probably this is one of the reasons why doctors opt to become nurses abroad. They travel out of the country because of this. So having said that, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I will go into uh, other uh, details with respect to the IRM if uh, there will be a second round. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, Honorable Barbers. The uh, IRM will be taken up after this. The Honorable uh, Congresswoman uh, B.H. Congresswoman Fernanda Tirena, this recognized. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Um, gusto ko lang po follow up yung aking hiningi last hearing na nagtataka ko na a, a lot of our fellow legislators are still asking the same questions. And I would like to reiterate, nasubmit na po ba yung hinihingi ko na proseso and guidelines as to how PhilHealth decides kung sino ang mga binibigyan ng ating IRM. Um, I remember last week, hiningi ko po ito, hoping na bago itong hearing na to, ay nasa akin na ang proseso at guidelines, pati na rin kung sino yung 770-something na institutions na nirilisan ng IRMs na ito. So I'd like to know, Mr. Chai, nag-submit po ba sila sa committee? Phil Mr. Chair, uh, may we just check from our legislative if they have complied with the submission? Mr. Chair, according to them, yes, daw po. Uh, before you proceed, Honorable uh, B. Charera D., is the ator Senior Vice President Del Rosario also Jojo Del Rosario? Is that his name? His name, uh, Mr. Chair, is Rodolfo. Yes, but this is nickname Del Jojo Rosario Del Rosario. Jr. Is that his nickname, Jojo Del Rosario? Yes, Mr. Chair. Comsec, can you please check uh, the page of Mr. Jojo Del Rosario because... He posted something at 2.25 in the afternoon. Nung naghahanap tayo dito na magkakipag-usap at magsasalita, eh wala siya dito pero nakapag-post siya sa Facebook ng isang message. At any rate, Comsec, uh, kindly look into this ASAP. Uh, Honorable uh, Congresswoman uh, B.H. Uh, Bernadette Herrerdi, please continue. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can I get uh, confirmation from the Committee on Public Accounts for Good Government kung nag-submit nga po sila? And tama po ba yung sinabmit? na data ng PhilHealth. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Nakasubmit po ba sila? Natanggap po ba ng committee? Sec is recognized. Kindly reply to the Honorable uh, Herrera D. Anyway, Mr. Chair, pag kung meron po, submit lang po sa aking opisina para naman ho may kopya din kami. But I'd like to ask na lang a question. So, ano po yung nagiging basehan kung bakit mas marami ang pribadong ospital ang nabibigyan ng IRM kesa sa mga pampubliko? Ano ang main guideline na sinunod nila kung bakit mas, mas madaming na pagbibigyan na pribadong kumpanya? 
Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, wala po tayong pinipili kung ito ay pribado or publiko. Uh, ang pag uh, ang pag aapruba po ay depende po doon sa kung sino po ang ma makapagbigay ng kompletong dokumento kaagad from the regional office papunta po sa central office. So Requirement po. Ah, sige pa, patuloy pa. Opo, uh, Mr. Chair. So again, depende po kung kailan po siya na-receive. Uh, uh, at yun po. And then kung kailan po siya marirelease. We, I think, We have the data also, Madam, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, when we receive the complete uh, documents and when we actually released or approved the IRM. Nagdu due diligence po ba tayo kung ang mga kumpanya ay sec registered, mga active na businesses, or sila ay mga um, nagbabayad ng mga buwis sa ating gobyerno, at sila ay mga good standing businesses sa ating bansa? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Uh, Madam Congressman, ay Congresswoman, sorry po. Uh, is this aligned with dun sa release po ng IRM or as a general uh, process? Sa IRM? Well, sa IRM. Uh, or, as a general so under, process, when you uh, accredit, ano ba yan? Dapat ba accredited sila sa IRM? Meron bang accreditation process? O namimili lang kayo ng ibang ospital? Kung sino lang nag-submit sa inyo, pwede bang mag-submit ang lahat ng ospital? Uh, opo. Uh, hindi po, uh, Mr. Chair, hindi po tayo namimili Again, uh, ito po ay uh, uh, nakabase po doon sa uh, database na meron po kami. Uh, kung ito ay accredited, chine-check din po natin. Uh, tapos hindi, pero uh, doon po sa binabanggit nyo kung ito po ay registered o hindi. Uh, because sa anime naman po ang ating requirement para ma-accredit is meron pong uh, Department of Health License. So kasama po yon sa atin pong mga chine-check. Ang business permit po ba kasama sa requirement ng Department of Health License? Um, Madam, uh, Mr. Chair, Madam uh, Congresswoman, I will have to check on that po. So If the business yung, permit is a requirement of the DOH license. Registered sa isang lokal na pamahalaan bago kayo ay mag-release ng pondo sa kanila? Mr. Chair, again, uh, kasi po doon sa atin pong uh, Uh, tinitingnan ay kung ito po ay uh, accredited, ito po ay maaari nating mabigyan. And so that, it doesn't matter kung sila ay rehistrado sa lokal na pamahalaan o hindi? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with the license po, we assume that they are. So hindi kayo nag due diligence? Can, you cannot assume. You are giving billions and millions of pesos to hospitals. Do you mean to tell me you just assume na sila ay in good standing at maayos at pwede nating bigyan ng limpak-limpak na salapi? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Congresswoman, again, because uh, we have the um, accreditation and with the accreditation, there are documents including the DOH license, then yun po ang atin pong requirement. And the, uh, at the regional office po, uh, sila po ang uh, nag-check as part of our guidelines, sila po yung nag-check on the eligibility of our uh, facilities because uh, again, there is a MOA uh, or the, there is a letter of intent and there is a memorandum of agreement before we can release. So, ibig sabihin, hindi ba sa tingin mo, hindi ba tamang requirement na registered business sa isang local government ang isang institusyon? para isila ay mabigyan ng IRM. Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, sorry po, uh, pakiulit lang po. So, sa tingin mo, hindi tama na may requirement na tignan kung sila ay legitimate business existing in a local government bago sila mabigyan ng advance na pera mula sa gobyerno or mula sa PhilHealth. Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Congresswoman, again, Uh, ang amin pong basis would be the accreditation and of course later on ay yun pong license as part as a requirement pagdating po sa accreditation. Well, that's why again, I would like to see um, that guideline or yung inyong listahan. May tanong po ako, sa pribadong um, institusyon, pag nagbigay tayo ng IRM, for example, sa isang dialysis center, ang assumption natin dito ay libre po ba nilang ibibigay ito sa mga 
binisit sa risk ng PhilHealth na nagpapadialysis? Paano po ba yung sistema? Please enlighten me. Opo, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, ganito po, yun pong ating uh, ibinibigay na IRM as a whole ay again as a prepositioned amount because of the pandemic. So ang mangyayari po noon, that is to make sure that the facilities are able and continuously able to provide the services. Uh, yun nga po, because brought about by the, because of the pandemic. So mangyayari po noon, yun pong mga serbisyo na ipinoprovide ng isang pasilidad, sila po ay magpa-file ng claim sa atin for all those services. At doon po naman, sa mga serbisyo po na yun, or doon sa claim, doon po natin ngayon ibabawas or ililiquidate yun pong amount na naibigay po natin. Pero is it supposed to be 100% free or may dinadagdag silang additional na presyo doon ah, sa kanilang singilin pagdating sa pribado? Ah, pagdating po sa pribado, ah, Mr. Chair, pagdating po sa pribado, maaari po talagang merong masisingil ang ating ah, ah, mga ospital Especially nga po kung ito'y above the uh, case rate. Pero kung ito po halimbawa, katulad sa probiso natin ngayon, doon sa ating COVID packages, yan po ay no co-payment. Kahit po sa gobyerno or sa pribado, yan po ay no co-payment. Especially po doon sa ating identified standards. May katulad to, gusto ko maintindihan. Kasi nakarating sa akin na ito palang Bibron na binigyan ng PhilHealth ng 45 million ay naniningil sa kanilang dialysis patients kahit PhilHealth members. So, ano ba dapat ang sistema doon sa bagay na yun? Pero nabigyan naman ng 45 million ng PhilHealth sila, pero nabalitaan namin na pinabayaran naman pala ng mga dialysis patients ang servisyo nila. Oh, um, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, Uh, the package po ng ating dialysis so far is at 2,600. So, um, although it is repetitive, so yun po, ngayon kung meron pong naniningil uh, in excess of the 2,600, um, ma Mr. Chair, Madam Kong, uh, I will just have to uh, check lang po uh, if the dialysis clinics in itself is a no balance billing facility. I will uh, get back to you po to, to technically respond on that. Oh, kasi gusto ko yung maintindihan eh. So you allow private facilities na sinasubsidize natin. Kung baga, hindi natin tinutulungan yung pasyente, sinasubsidize lang natin yung bayad nila, pero nagbabayad pa rin yung mga pasyente. Hanggang magkano ang ina-allow nyong singilin ng mga private clinics na to? Hanggang magkano? Kung sinasabi mo, allowed silang magpatong doon sa 2,600 na binibigay ng PhilHealth. Hanggang magkano? Kahit magkano, pwede lang ipatong? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, sa ngayon po, in general po, uh, ang atin pong polisiya doon sa merong fixed co-payment, ito po yung sinasabi natin na hanggang magkano lang yung pwedeng singilin, ay nakapaloob pa lamang po doon sa tinatawag natin na Uh, Z benefit packages. Uh, yun pong pagtatalaga ng fixed co-payment ay uh, atin pong uh, mailalagay kapag ka po nakuha na natin yung tamang costing ng services being provided. And it is not only for the private but also for the government. So yun pong fixed co-payment sa ngayon po ay uh, again dun pa lang sa Z benefit packages. Pagdating naman po And that is the time po that we can actually say na dapat ay ito lang yung pwedeng singilin. So sa ngayon po, wala pa rin po kaming regulasyon pagdating po doon sa magkano ang pwedeng ipatong or magkano ang pwedeng i-charge, uh, i especially ng mga private uh, healthcare providers. Uh, pagdating lang po doon sa dialysis, ma'am, again, I will check if it's a no-balance billing policy. So, Doc, hindi man lang ba natin naisip na isa sa mga kwalifikasyon ng bibigyan natin ng advance payment ay yung mga clinics at hospitals na willing magbigay na ng libre 
bakit pa natin papadagdagan sa kanila? Hindi ba pwedeng maging kasama yun sa kondisyones natin na, sige, kasama kayo sa bibigyan ng advance payment ng gobyerno kung sakasakali mang allow dito on the condition na hindi na kayo magpapataw ng additional. ba diba? Kasi yun ang dapat tinutulungan natin, yung mga ospital na willing tumulong sa mga kababayan natin. Hindi man lang ba sumagi sa ating isipan na mamili ng mga ospital on the basis of those who can give this service for free? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, tama po kayo and uh, we agree. Uh, however, sa kasulukuyan pong polisiya ay hindi nga po yan nasusulat pero tama po kayo na maaari po nating mapag-aralan pagdating po sa inyong uh, sa inyo pong suggestion. Well, medyo tagilid pa kasi yung ating legal legal basis nung ating IRM kaya hindi ko rin malaman ko ito isang bagay na pagpapatuloy pa natin dito sa gobyerno. Pero sa ngayon, gusto ko lang linawin na kahit nakatigil lahat ng IRM natin, tama? Doc, nakatigil naman po lahat, suspended lahat ng issuances ng IRM natin. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Chair, Dr. Uh, Vargas, tama po ba? You already have 14 billion. May na-release na na 14 billion. 14.9 billion po, Mr. Okay. Chair. Okay, 14.9 billion na uh, Congresswoman uh, BH ang nakarelease sa mga ospital. Opo, pero hindi na tayo nag-release pa as of now. Nakasuspend tayo kasi I think ang budget nila dyan is 37 billion. If I'm not mistaken, Mr. Chair, I'm just worried na baka mamaya nagtutuloy-tuloy pa rin, nagpa-facilitate at nag accredit ang PhilHealth ng bibigyan ng IRM. Uh, Dr. Vargas? Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, 27 billion po. Tapos sa ngayon nga po, gaya ng nabanggit natin, ay nag-scale down na po ang management with regard to the release of IRM, uh, especially for those uh, uh, facilities with uh, COVID patients. And ngayon po ay kasama sa requirement bago po makapag-release ng IRM ay yun pong report coming from the regions with regard Dr. Vargas, to the status of COVID oh, patients. Ang tanong po ni Congresswoman... Uh, ang tanong po... po, scale down, ibig sabihin, it's still continuing. Kailan yung huling release natin sa isang hospital, Mr. Chair? Through you, Mr. Chair. Gusto ko lang po nalaman, na-alarm lang po ako doon sa scaling down. Ibig sabihin, we are continuing to release... Dr. Vargas? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I'd like to check lang po if you would allow with our finance with regard to the kailan po yung huling release or disburse. Uh, ang una pong tanong ni Congresswoman uh, Bernadette uh, T. is tumutuloy-tuloy pa po ba? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, ang uh, last po na release ng IRM po natin sa tanda ko po ay July 23 po. And I think this will be raised to the Pill Health Board po ang tanong ni Congresswoman. Okay, so July 23 ang huling release uh -huh. at hindi muna tayo nagre-release. Uh, yes po, yung nang tanda ko, Mr. Chair. And I think this will be uh, raised to the Pill Health Board po. Uh, what would be the action of the board, instruction of the board, whether to continue or, or, or what action po ang kinilangang gawin, gawin po dito? Okay. Honorable uh, Congresswoman uh, B. Thank you. So yun lang, I would just like to make that clear that there will be no releases until the board um, takes action. And I think this committee also, Mr. Chair, maybe through you, we could also tell the board na until everything is sorted out, I don't think it's um, right to release, uh, to continue doing so. Dahil as nakita naman natin, hindi pa rin natin na establish yung legal basis nito. Dahil yun ang sinasabi pa ni Senator Ping that I'm still not clarified na nauna ang um, ano na una ang resolution or na una ang circular bago sa board resolution? I would like to be clarified on that one. I don't know if it was discussed kanina, Mr. Chair. Um, gusto ko lang pong malaman kung ano yung sinasabi nila. Kasi nung time na nagtanong ako, ang basis na ginagamit ni General sa akin was the RA. But apparently, there was a circular and a board resolution na tinutungtungan dapat ng IRM na ito. Na yes. Congress... Nga na nauna pa ang circular bago ang board resolution. Can ah, we be clarified on this yes. one? Congresswoman uh, BH uh, Herrera D, ang agreement po sana sa IRM is we take it, we take it after the all case rate issue. Ah, okay, uh, sorry, sorry Mr. Opo. Chair. Okay. 
Pero okay lang naman po. Uh, Congressman Beach, if you may wrap up your uh, line uh, questions, maraming salamat po. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, so I will wrap up na on the IRM. If I, I, also, I hope, Mr. Chair, na maka-question na po tungkol sa IRM on the next hearing. At sana po malaman po namin kung kailan yung term na, yung term namin, Mr. Chair, para naman po alam namin kung kami po ay may pagkakataong magsalita. Um, with regards to the all cases, so we are limited, as I understand, Mr. Chair, for this hearing, we are just limited on the all case rate issue. Ganun po ba yun? Uh, yes, uh, Congresswoman uh, D. Would we have another hearing on the computer issue naman po, on the IT? Yes, uh, yes, Congresswoman D. In fact, I just have, uh, ngayon lang po tayo nagkaroon ng confirmation, on Monday and Tuesday, uh, we will have a hybrid session on this, a continuing session. Uh, which will include yung pong IRM and the computerization. Congresswoman okay, BH. You. So I will wrap up because I, I, my, my concern is mostly on the IRM and the computerization. Siguro my last question na lang, dun lang sa all case rate, is that um, isa po sa nakikita kong naging problema ng all case rate and maybe it has been discussed a while ago is the upcasing of claims. Uh, marami po bang naging surges nito sa, sa inyong observasyon, Dok? Yung pagdating dun sa upcasing na Hanggang ngayon po kasi, like kahapon lang, ako po ay nakatanggap ng tawag mula po sa aking pinsan na pinipilit po sila ng ospital na i-declare na COVID patient yung pinsan ko um, kahit wala pa yung COVID results. And I think we know one of the reasons is because of this case rate system. Why is it still happening? Ang, with all these hearings, hindi pa pinagsasabihan ng PhilHealth or wala bang ginagawa yung PhilHealth? Kasi apparently, it's still very... Uh, it's still happening in all hospitals na pinipilit nilang patanggap o COVID, COVID patient yan kahit wala pa ang resulta ng COVID test result. Dr. Vargas? Chair, Chair, um, uh, Madam Congresswoman, yes, Madam, I think it is still happening. That's why nga po, uh, there are still cases uh, which are being uh, heard and uh, uh, investigated right now by the corporation. Yun pong tinatawag natin na upcasing. Uh, opo, maaaring nangyayari pa rin po ito sa ngayon. So ano kayang pwede nating solusyon doon agad-agad? Pwede ba silang hindi makapag-claim ng kanilang all case rates pag ganyan? Para nang sa ganun, matakot naman itong mga ospital na ito na pinipilit pa rin ipilit yung sakit dahil mas madaling kumulekta. Sana naman nakikita po ninyo yung nangyayari sa mga ospital ngayon. They want to make use of one sickness kahit hindi yun ang sakit ng isang tao just to be able to collect from you. Eh, pero hindi naman niya dinidiscountan yung kanyang mga pasyente. Yun yung pinakmasaklap doon. And these are very real instances. Yung hospital po na sinasabi ko ito ay Capital Medical Center. Yan po ay isang sinumbong sa akin na pinipilit nila na sabihin COVID patient na lang daw po ang aking pinsan kahit na wala pa ang kanyang COVID result. So oh. I would like you to take a look at that. Um, please get in touch with me. I'll be more than happy to supply you with information regarding this matter. These are very real situations and it's not just happening in Capital Medical Center. It happens in a lot of other hospitals as well. And this is because of this all-case rate system that you have in place right now in PhilHealth. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Congresswoman, we would be very happy to to uh, coordinate with you. And sa ngayon din nga po, maliban po dun sa inyong nai-report, ay meron na rin pong ilang lumalabas na report, katulad po dun sa nasa social media, na meron nga pong maaaring mga uh, nag a case na para makapag-claim ng covid and again, gaya po na uh, ginagawa namin sa ibang kaso, uh, pinag-aaralan na rin po natin na pagdating po dito sa COVID, meron din po tayong tinatawag na medical prepayment review para hindi po ito babayadan kaagad-agad but rather magkakaroon mismo ng medical evaluation para makita kung ang treatment na nangyari or management is really for the COVID. Kasama rin po sa ating maaring tingnan na ngayon ay yung nire-require po natin na itemized billing charges sa isang, ng isang uh, ospital sa isang pasyente para makita rin po natin kung ang sinisingil ng mga ospital na ito ay talagang naaangkop doon sa paggagamot ng isang COVID case as per guidelines. Uh, we will be uh, coordinating with your uh, office, Madam uh, Congresswoman, for this. 
Yeah, but through you, Mr. Chair, can we get a concrete um, step from PhilHealth as to how we can avoid these things already? I hope by the next hearing, meron na po kayong konkretong mga hakbangin kung paano, number one, hindi na dapat maiwan ang sukli sa mga pribadong ospital dahil hindi naman po ito nakakatulong sa mga miyembro ninyo. Tandaan po natin, mga miyembro po ang inyong pinagtatrabahuhan. Hindi naman po ang mga ospital. Ito po ay yung mga miyembro na pinaghihirapan po ang bayad. Kaya katulad ng sinabi kanina Deputy Speaker Marcoleta, that's technical malversation dahil hindi niya na ibabalik sa gobyerno yung perang ito. So number one, sana may konkreto kaagad kayo kung paano hindi kailangan maiwan ang sukulit sa mga ospital. At number two, kung paano hindi man mamaneobra o mamanipulate ang upcasing ng iba't ibang case, cases na nire-report nila just so they can take advantage of the rules of PhilHealth. I hope through you, Mr. Chair, on the next hearing, they will have, they can submit concrete steps on how they can address the situation. Maraming salamat, Honorable uh, B.H. Uh, Bernadette Congresswoman Bernadette Herrera D. Uh, for Mr. Chair, last na lang po, Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, Mr. Chair, for your next hearing um, next next week, I hope that we could, um, if pamarapatin po ng ating magandang chairman, sana po maipapost naman po natin sa, sa Secretariat kung ano po yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng interpolators so that all of us naman po are apprised kung pang ilan na po ba kami because I have been asking this morning pa kung pang ilan na ko, nasaan na ba ako sa listahan, kung ako po ay nalista na, um, ngunit wala po akong nakukuhang kasagutan. And I would appreciate it, Mr. Chair, for the transparency naman po para po sa amin nasa Zoom. Sana po mailista po natin sa ating chat group kung ano na po yung listahan ng interpellants po natin. Kung inyo pong mamarapatin, Mr. Chair, maraming maraming salamat po at marami pong gustong magsalita at makibahagi po dito sa ating committee hearing. Thank you, uh, Honorable BH. I apologize for that kasi po ang nangyari, initially it was just my committee. Naging joint po tayo eh. Kaya meron din po listahin yung kabilang committee that we had to integrate together. If you recall, nung una nating hearing, it was the public accountability. Pero tama po kayo nung pumasok na tong question ng hospitals, uh, nagtawag na po ng joint committee hearing. So I apologize for that. Uh, wag ko kayong maglala because I have here the list of those who will be asking questions. Ipopost ko po dun sa thread natin. So thank you, Honorable... Uh, Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much po. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Congresswoman uh, Bernadette Herrera D. We now proceed Mr. to... Uh, if Mr. I, if, Chair. Yes, if I may, kumari po sana, no? We, we have a, uh, a deadline. May curfew po tayo. I will limit the questions dun do sa ating mga kasama ng natitira. Congresswoman Dasa, Garin Kimbo, and Gasataya to 15 minutes. So with that, uh, yes, uh, PhilHealth, VP uh, Limsyako. Mr. Chair, uh, I stand corrected. The last uh, payment that released po natin sa IRM it was July 21 po. July 31 was the last payment of the IR, uh, IRM payment or IRM, IRM release. Release po ng IRM po. IRM release. So uh, this uh, last July. So now we proceed to... Thank you, Congresswoman uh, Bernadette Herrera D. Uh, Congressman Dasa is recognized. Congressman Paul Dasa is recognized. Okay, uh, we now proceed to the Honorable Janet Garin, who is still with us in plenary, our senior... Minority Floor Leader, Congresswoman Garin is recognized. Okay, while waiting for the Honorable Garin, may we call on the Honorable Kimbo, who is still with us in Zoom. Congresswoman Kimbo is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. Go ahead. Um, Dr. Ish, good evening po. Chair, good evening po, Madam Congresswoman. So, nabanggit mo kanina, Doc, na ang overpayment is 22% uh, of your case rates and then the underpayment naman is 78%. Tama po, no? Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, uh, yes po, as reported. All right, and which means uh, because 22 plus 78 equals 100, 
eh, zero po ang case rates na correctly computed. Tama? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Congresswoman, uh, may I refer po to our actuary who uh, uh, provided the data? Sorry. I guess, Doc Kish, I don't even need um, an answer for that because 22 plus 78 is 100. So, ibig sabihin nun, wala kang case rates na tama. So, balikan natin ang ibig sabihin ng uh, overpayment. Ibig sabihin na yung case rate exceeds the costs. Ibig sabihin, kung uh, hospital ako, ako po ay kumita. Tama po? May profit doon sa case rate na yun. Mr. Chair, uh, yes po. Pag sinabi naman underpayment, ako naman po ay nalugi. Ibig sabihin, yung natanggap ko sa PhilHealth, ay mas mababa sa aking costs. Tama po? Yes, Mr. Chair. So, ang ibig sabihin nun is the implication of your overpayment and underpayment is not really on the fund viability of PhilHealth, but rather on the profitability of the hospitals. Tama, di ba? Um, yes, Ms. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes po, uh, However po, of course, it is also a cost containment for the uh, health insurance uh, because again, uh, if it is being, uh, if the principles are uh, being followed, then uh, again, it's a cost, con pwede po siya maging cost containment as a provider payment mechanism. Tama po, but the cost containment is happening at the hospital side. Ito na nga po yung kanina po pong sinasabi nila Chairman Mike. Na ang implication is not on your fund, but rather on the hospital. Tama po? So anyway po, um, which means, di ba, na kapag public hospital, no, kapag may overpayment siya, kailangan niyang tipirin yun because 78% of the time naman siya ay lugi. And because there's a no balance billing policy, ibig sabihin hindi siya pwedeng uh, sumingil ng dagdag dun sa pasyente. Diba? So in other words, kailangan niyang punuan ang kanyang lugi doon sa underpayment na 78%, doon sa nakuha niyang overpayment na 22% of the time. Tama po? Mr. Chair, tama po. And in other words, kung kulang pa, eh, kailangan ng humingi ng subsidies ang hospital and usually that is from the MAIP, yung Medical Assistance for Indigent Patients. Tama po? Tama po. Pagdating naman sa private hospital, doon may problema kasi pwede kang mag-balance billing. So, ibig sabihin, kapag underpayment ang uh, nakuha mo from PhilHealth, pwede mong singilin yung kulang doon sa pasyente. Tama po? Tama po. In other words, sa private hospital, Panalo parate. Kasi 22% of the time may overpayment, which means may kita siya. Pagdating naman sa 78% of the time na underpaid siya, eh pwede naman po niyang singilin ang pasyente. So in other words, ang sistema na ganito always assures hospitals that they can make some profits. Tama po? Tama po. Except for when hindi siya makasingil sa pasyente. That's the only problem. ba? Kasi ibig sabihin, there are some situations na talagang uh, hindi naman makabayad ang uh, pasyente for those um, 78% uh, case rates na under ang payment. ba? So in yes. which case, lugi siya. Kailangan yes. niya i-absorb yung lugi. Tama, ba? Yes po, Mr. Chair. So, Ito sa tingin ko yung problema. Kasi kapag 78% of the time, lugi ang isang hospital, hindi pa maghahanap siya ng paraan para habulin yung kita. And uh, kapag mahina ang uh, controls of fraud ng PhilHealth at may opportunities to engage in that kind of fraudulent behavior, dito tayo nagkakaroon ng problema. Tama po? Tama po, Mr. Chair. So, yan sa tingin ko nga ang uh, aking frustration. No? Dahil ako po, ulit bilang isang health economist, eh, alam naman natin, Doc, is may advantages ang case rates 
kumpara sa fee-for-service. Because fee-for-service, in theory, if perfectly implemented, and ganun din ang case rates, if perfectly implemented, mas lamang ang case rates because it rewards the efficient. Diba? Meanwhile, ang uh, fee-for-service naman rewards the inefficient. Kaya pag nag-uusapan ng efficiency, eh maganda sana ang case rates. However, because mali-mali ang case rates ng PhilHealth. Diba? 0% of your case rates are correctly estimated. Nagkakaroon tayo ng napakalaking problema. And the big problem really is nagkakaroon talaga ng incentive na mag-engage in fraudulent behavior ang ating private hospitals. So, yan po ang uh, aking uh, uh, observation. Uh, Doc, is, is this something that, uh, would you share that kind of an assessment? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Congresswoman, uh, tama po kayo because for one, uh, we really need to make the proper costing of healthcare services in order to make sure for us now to one, uh, uh, provide a uh, policy that will actually, yun po, mas mapapasunod natin yung uh, magandang polisiya sana ng case rate because with that also, we can actually demand for the other, uh, for the fixed payments or the, we can not regulate, but we can provide all those other uh, uh, advantages na makukuha ng miyembro dapat kung tama po yung ating naging costing dun sa tinatawag nating case rate. Pero sa ngayon po, ang sinasabi nga po ay napakababa pa niya at kailangan po siyang ma-review. Which right now, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yan po ang ginagawa natin sa PhilHealth, yung pong pagkukost uh, and currently we have the costing framework and we are soon to uh, come out with the costing however uh, with the court costing exercise inintay lang po natin yung system para po magamit para dito so pero kanina niyo pa sinasabi doc ish na naniniwala kayo na may fraudulent behavior dito sa ating sistema tama no yes po Ano ba ang yung theory kung paano nangyayari itong fraud? Uh, well, for one po, katulad halimbawa ng mga nababanggit na merong upcasing. So, uh, pagdating po sa, sa ospital, uh, yung pong mga binabanggit ay uh, may mga maaaring ubo or sipon na ang mga ospital ay magkiklaim ng mas mataas na case rate para sa kanya. So, katulad po noon, uh, kung kaya po sa ngayon, uh, ang PhilHealth po pagdating halimbawa doon sa pulmonya na may pinakamalaking binabayaran ng PhilHealth, uh, kami po ay nagagawa ng tinatawag na prepayment review. Meron na po tayong ginagawa ngayon na medical evaluation for them. Uh, meron po tayong mga admissibility criteria. May sinusunod po po tayo dito. So ngayon po, pahabang, pagka po meron tayong nakikita na findings for those Ito po ay nire-refer natin to our legal kung ito po ay nakikita natin na may bahid na fraud and of course, the legal process will follow. So, so yun doc, is example. Ang pneumonia ba ay kasama dun sa 22% na overpayment? Um, I, um, Madam, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, I will have to ask uh, uh, our actuary, again, because the data came from them, uh, what are the cases uh, actually in, included in the uh, supposedly overpayment and even the underpayment. Ms. Ang gusto ko sanang uh, sabihin, Doc Ish, is because if 78% of the time, lugi ang isang hospital, at kailangan siyang habulin, at uh, hindi... Uh, at maluwag ang sistema ng PhilHealth at maraming opportunities for fraudulent behavior, eh baka naman bawiin po yan doon sa cases na may overpayment. Kaya gusto kong malaman po, no? Ano-ano ba ang cases dyan doon sa 22% na yan? Kasama po ba dyan ang pneumonia? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Congresswoman, uh, uh, we will um, get the details po kasi sa ngayon uh, what we have uh, as a summary 
eh yung po aggregated. So we'll we'll dig deeper into the overpayment and underpayment po, ma Madam Chair. Um, Madam uh, Congressman. Uh, Madam, actually, itong listahan po, ha? Um, Mr. Chair, is it possible for me to share a screen? What's that, uh, Honorable uh, Kimbo? Please share a screen, Mr. Chair. Ayan po. Um, Mr. Chair, gusto ko sanang dagdagan lang po yung sinabi ninyo kanina about um, uh, comparing the number of health claims for pneumonia with itong DOH data. Nabanggit niyo na po, Mr. Chair, kanina na um, in 2018, ang field health claims is 757,000. Pero ang uh, ayon sa DOH, ang tao lamang na may pneumonia noong 2018 ay 503,000. So itong difference po na 757,000 minus 503,000, which is about 253,000, baka ito na po yung tinatawag na ghost claims o di kaya upcasing. No, ibig sabihin po, ng ghost claims is wala naman pong uh, pasyente na may pneumonia pero for some reason ay uh, uh, pumasa sa sa claims processing ng PhilHealth ito at nasama po siya sa pagbayad ng claim. O di kaya hindi naman pneumonia ang sakit dahil lang sabi ni Doc Ish kanina chest, uh, chest x-ray lang ang kailangan but in many cases po pati CBC kailangan eh. Kailangan din ng blood test para malaman kung talaga may pneumonia ang isang pasyente. So ito po ba Doc Ish uh, is a possibility na ganito kalaki 253,000 ang excess claims and if we multiply that by the average value of ill health claims for pneumonia which is 14,445, ang value po niyan is 3.6 billion pesos. So meron po, um, in 2018, may posibilidad na nawalan po tayo ng 3.6 billion pesos ng dahil lamang sa pneumonia. And, uh, Honorable Kimbo? Yes? Yes. Dito po sa pinakita mo, ang sinasabi mo dyan, yung ghost, na talagang walang tao, ginawan lang nila ng claim, Pangalawa dyan, yung wala talagang pneumonia pero ginawan lang pneumonia. Tama po, Mr. Apo. Chair. Baka nauubo lang or may sipon pero Apo. klinasify na pneumonia. Apo. Dahil pero, kakahit nga kanina si Doc Ish, hindi niya malaman kung required ba ang chest x-ray. Pero matik yan sa mga doktor na mga mahuhusay na you need a chest x-ray and a blood test to determine kung may pneumonia ang isang tao. Yes. And at, Chair, if I may share, um, the Honorable we, Kimbo, yeah, dagdag lang ho. Congresswoman Kimbo? Yes, yes Mr. Chair. Yes. Doon sa 500,000 na maaari talagang pumasok sa field health, iba pa ho yung overpayment. So tatlo po yan, overpayment, ghost, and upcasing. Tama po yun. Pero dito po, uh, hindi ko na kinonsider ang overpayment as fraud. Pwede natin i-consider yun as inefficiency, pero sa tingin ko po, eh, baka hindi fraud ang tawag doon. Pero tama po kayo, Mr. Chair. That's also the third problem. Kaya ko tinatanong kanina kay Madam Actuary, kung ang pneumonia ba ay kasama doon sa 22% na overpayment po na case rates. Um, and Mr. Chair, if I also may share with you, pag, pag uh, titignan din natin ang data in the past, Ito na po ang aking computation, 2017, following the same method, 5.3 ang maaaring nawala. Noong 2016, kahit paano, um, tila walang nawala dyan. Ibig sabihin, yung number of claims would be less than the number of uh, supposed people na, na merong pneumonia. Pagdating ng 2015, may 5 billion na possibly nawala. Pagdating ng 2014, about 1.3. So pag susumahin natin itong uh, five years na to, that's about 15 billion pesos, uh, Mr. Chair. So yun lang pa, I wanted to share that. Um, ito po ang isa pang concern na gusto ko sanang erase uh, sa inyo. Um, when I was computing itong, itong uh, possible leaks, no, napansin ko po na Ang ginamit ko na number na PhilHealth claims is from the official report of PhilHealth. Ito pong tinatawag nilang stats and charts. 
So, Doc Ish, can you please confirm na tama naman ang aking uh, pinagkukuhaan ng datos pagdating sa claims, yung tinatawag na PhilHealth Stats and Charts. Tama po ba? Uh, Mr. Chair, yes po, yung pong Stats and Charts, yan din po ang nakalagay po sa ating website. Okay. Pero po, nung ako po ay sumulat sa PhilHealth at uh, sila po ay sumagot sa akin at binigyan po ako ng datos para sa pneumonia claims ng 2018, Doon po sa kanilang submitted data sa akin, ang total number of ill health claims ay 870,000 po. So, mas malaki. So, yan ang tanong ko sa inyo, Doc Ish. Uh, ano bang paliwanag dyan? Bakit magkaiba po? Dahil uh, malaki ang implication. Kung talagang 870,000 ang claims noong 2018, eh ang uh, possible fraud, ang possible overpayment dahil may ghost o kaya upcased claims, is 5.7 billion at hindi 3.6. And uh, again, sumulat na naman po ako at last night po, ay sorry, um, twice na kasi akong nag-request ng data sa PhilHealth. No? The first time was when they submitted to me noong 13 July. And then um, last night po, no, at 10 o'clock, nag-submit din sa akin. Makikita din natin may discrepancy na naman po for pneumonia claims um, for 2019. And uh, ito, makita natin, no, yung 13 July submission, 830,000 ang uh, claims for, for pneumonia. Kagabi naman, ang binigay sa akin na submission, 739,000 lang. So, ito yung sigurong concern na ni-raise kanina ni Congressman Marcoleta na paano naman natin lilinisin ang, uh, ang ating sistema kung napakasimpleng data lamang ay uh, may discrepancies pa tayo. May uh, comment ka ba dyan, Doc Ish? Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, Madam Congresswoman, uh, it, the data was provided by the core plan na sila rin po yung nag-extract and gumagawa po ng stats and charts. Uh, may I refer po the core plan to respond to this data? Uh, yes, please. Go ahead. Siguro, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Before you continue, Honorable Kimbo? No, she's here. She's here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the field is recognized, the core plan. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yung mga data po na ine-extract sa uh, stats and charts, depende po sa script na kin uh, ginagamit. Kung halimbawa po, based siya sa date of admissions o kaya sa uh, payment date o kaya po sa receive or refile date. Minsan po, depende rin ho yan kung kailan in-extract. Kasi everyday ho, gumagalaw ho ang database dahil po may pumapasok po na claims at meron pong nababayaran na claims. Pero ito po ay Mr. Chair is reported for the whole year. Um, na, maintindihan ko po yan kung yan ay interim report, pero uh, 2018 was a year and a half ago. So dapat, uh, by now, dapat malinis na po ang, uh, ang mga datos na yun. So, anyway po, nire-raise ko talaga to dahil napaka-importante po nito. As you can see, ang uh, discrepancy po na about 100,000 already means something like an additional 2 billion pesos na maaaring nawawala po sa fraudulent claims. So, um, Mr. Chair, siguro uh, hinga na lang po natin siguro ng report ang PhilHealth tungkol dito. Baka they need to to really look into this and explain to us ito pong discrepancy. Um, yes, uh, and, uh, we will do that. Uh, the, uh, the corporate uh, group of PhilHealth will be checking on it, uh, Honorable Kimbo. Uh, you, Honorable sir. Kingo, can we go to your last question? Um, yes, um, just give me like three minutes. Um, I have two more slides. Uh, ito po, tinignan ko po ang regional claims. no? And as you can see here, dinivide ko po yung number of claims sa bawat region by the population. And uh, as you can see, sa bawat region, ang laki po ng pagkakaiba. Halimbawa po sa NCR, merong 45 pneumonia claims per 10,000 population. Pagdating sa Mindanao naman, O pagdating sa Bicol, it's just 37. Pero pagdating po halimbawa sa Northern Mindanao, mataas, 140. 
o kaya sa Sok Sargent 149. So ang tanong ko dito is, um, is there any reason, Doc Ish, ikaw ay isang doktor, um, is there any reason for us to accept na dapat merong malaking pagkakaiba ng uh, pneumonia incidents across regions? Kasi po, ang pagkakaalam ko, ano ba ang risk factors, uh, Doc Ish, ng, ng uh, pneumonia? Well, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, one, since it's uh, the pneumonia is an infectious disease, so technically po, ako sa paningin ko po, ay uh, maaari pong dapat halos ay pare-pareho. Uh, or kung meron man pong variation sa regional uh, uh, data, ay uh, maaari po na konti lamang. Uh, however, pwede rin naman pong magkaroon ng uh, mas malaking variation sa isang lugar, especially po kung dito halimbawa ay uh, mas dikit-dikit ang mga tao, mas madali po silang ma magkakaroon ng pagkakahawahan. Maaari din po kung may epekto halimbawa ang vaccination, ay uh, sa isang lugar na mas mababa ang vaccination, ay maaari din pong mas mataas ang pagkakaroon. Ganon din po yung tinatawag na uh, sa, alimbawa po sa economic, uh, uh, um, economic situation, maaaring para doon po sa mga lugar na uh, hindi mas, mababa ang resistensya ng mga tao dahil hindi, uh, hindi nutritious sa mga pinakain, maaaring mas magkakaroon ng mas mataas Uh, na pagkakataon na magkakaroon sila ng hawahan or pagkahawa sa pagdating dito sa mga infectious diseases, katulad po ng pulmonya. Pero kayo na rin po mismo, Doc, is yung nagsasabi na there should be no reason for us to expect na napakalaki dapat ng regional variation. So ang aking pong, uh, kaya ko to pinapakita sa inyo, I didn't have time kasi nga last night po, 10.41 po ng gabi nyo binigay sa akin ng data na hiningi ko, um, hindi ko na po natapos ang the rest dito. Is this something that you can fill up for me? Um, ang point ko lang dito is if we are expecting a fraud of a magnitude of about 3.6 billion pesos, ang tanong is, Ano yung distribution ng 3.6 billion na yan sa mga regions? ba? Diba? Kung ang iniisip nga po natin ay yan po ay depende sa galing ng isang regional uh, vice president, eh, dito po natin makikita kung saan ba talaga, uh, sino ang magaling sa, fr sa fraud control uh, among our regional vice presidents. And uh, ito na lang pong last na gusto kong ipakita sa in inyo. No? Ano kaya nangyari noong 2015, Doc-ish? Um, 2014 claims for pneumonia, 573,000. Pagdating ng 2015, naging 791,000. No, ang laki naman po ng talon ng pneumonia. So ito ay, we're talking about the whole country, di ba? So lahat ng nabanggit niyo kanina na risk factors, yan po ay pwedeng magpaliwanag ng pagkakaiba-iba across regions. Pero ito po, ano kaya naging dahilan kung bakit biglang lumobo ng ganyan kalaki from 2014 to 2015? And uh, makikita po natin ang regions na to, regions 12, 11, and 10, ang siyang may pinakamalaking uh, jump or spike dito po sa pneumonia cases. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Congresswoman, uh, I will have to check on that po. Pero ang okay. point ko lang... Uh, okay. Honorable Lakimbo? Yes, let me just... I will wrap up, uh, Mr. Chair. Um... Ang dahilan po kung bakit ko pinapakita po sa inyo, it took me about three hours to look at your data. Kinailangan ko lang ng ball pen, paper, at Excel file. Uh, ito po ay nagkaroon po ako ng rapid assessment po on uh, possible uh, fraud. So ang sinasabi ninyo na hindi nyo makontrol ang fraud dahil wala po kayong IT system, ay sa aking palagay po, ay, ay, it's not a valid excuse. No, uh, you only need very simple indicators to find out na merong fraud na nangyayari. So, sana po I I I support you in in trying to migrate to a better IT system because that's going to help you with fraud fraud control. I support you on that, but it should not be an excuse na hindi niyo makakontrol ang ganto kalawak o ganto katalamak na fraud nang dahil wala kayo noon. And you also don't need a world-class IT consultant or 
health insurance consultant for you to find out. Ang uh, importante po na meron kayong um, mga dashboards na, di ba yung dashboard na, na inintroduce po ni Dr. Banso nung panahon po niya. I think you should use something like this for purposes of detecting fraud. So yun lang po, um, Doc Ish, ang aking mga suggestions. Um, of course, we want PhilHealth to succeed. Yung mga nagtanong, kanina pa po ako nakapila, eh, mukhang hindi po na-observe no? yung uh, minority-majority rule at yung oras po nung uh, ilang uh, minuto o ilang segundo, pwede magtanong yun ba? So if I may, Mr. Chair, may I be allowed to proceed to my line of questioning? Yes, the Honorable Garin. Tawagan kita, Kinga. Very prominent, Mr. Chair, sa mga narinig kong mga kasama natin kanina, ang katanungan po ng lahat is, how do we clean feel health? Pwede ko po bang marinig sa ating mga official ngayon kung sino po ang makakasagot dun sa tanong na how do we clean feel health? Yeah, Mr. Chair, if may we request Dr. Pargas, Dr. Ish, to answer the question of how do we clean field health? Uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, uh, well, for one po, <coughs> um, gaya po ng palaging nababanggit ng ating uh, uh, President and CEO, we need a robust information technology system because currently right now, our IT systems as uh, uh, identified is uh, not integrated, it is fragmented, and so we need our system so that our checks on this ay mas madali po dahil ito ay magiging kabit-kabit. Uh, may mga ganun pong pagkakataon na kinakailangan natin. Mr. Chair, natin. with due courtesy, if I may be allowed to interject, Ish, can you please give direct answers? Wag na po yung paikot-ikot kasi sayang po yung oras. So, uh, how do you intend to clean field health? First, uh, you said you need a robust IT. Next. Uh, we need to have policy changes po. What specific policy changes, Mr. Chair? Well, for one po, katulad nito, nakikita po natin yung sa provider payment mechanism na nagkakaroon po tayo ng mga issues. So we have to uh, go and uh, check what is the most appropriate provider payment mechanism that we can have. We also need to have a uh, review on our business processes so that we can have a... Uh, definite reorganization and organizational structural change para mo mas maging adaptable siya dun sa pangangailangan ng ating mga uh, ngayon, especially going towards UHC. And of course, in making sure that we have uh, people who are really uh, uh, capable on uh, providing the services. Third is, of course, cleansing the, the organization uh, because uh, as it is, uh, right now there are alleged uh, corruption and there are alleged uh, yeah, uh, wrongdoings, I suppose, happening as alleged again. And uh, uh, So Mr. Po, Chair, distinguished uh, resource person, by your statement alone, you are admitting that there are a lot of wrongdoings and corruption in PhilHealth. Uh, Mr. Chair, again, as I've said, those are alleged and... Uh, no, Mr. Chair, the answer was very direct. How do we clean field health? And Dr. Ish Vargas gave four answers. IT, policy changes, specifically on provider payment mechanism, review of business processes, and putting changes in the organization because of corruption, alleged corruption. If, if you are proposing, Mr. Chair, to clean field health by that way, therefore you're admitting that there has been corruption or there is corruption in field health. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Congresswoman, again, as I've said, there are alleged uh, corruption and so we have to really look into that. No, Mr. Chair, my point is this. Ang katanungan po, paano lilinisin ang field health? Ang sabi nyo, eh, magkaroon ng reorganization para mawala ang corruption at fraud sa field health. Are you saying that you were just speaking and giving us flowery words to jodorize 
the current status of PhilHealth. Congresswoman Garin, kanina nga po inamin na nga ni uh, Dr. Vargas, may tatlong bilyon, tatlong bilyon ang nawala. And if we go back to 2018, eh, may nawawalan pondo, period. As to sinong nagiging korap, hindi pa natin alam. Pero as to the allegation of corruption, meron. Honorable Garin, please continue. Yeah, may we ask that direct question to Dr. Vargas? Vargas. May nawawala po ba o hindi? Or wala? Uh, if it is due to uh, Madam Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, can Madam we request Congress. Dr. Pargas to answer with a yes or no? Kasi ang napapansin ko lang po, hindi lang po ngayon, sa ilang mga nakaraang hearings ng PhilHealth, masyado pong magaling si Ish sa paikot-ikot na mga sagot. And sometimes these indirect answers are actually geared towards diffusing the facts or misleading the investigators. So please answer the question. Is there corruption in PhilHealth or none? Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, I cannot confirm po. Ano po? I cannot confirm po. De, oh, so nagbabago ngayon? De, uh, ito, may kinoconfirm ka may nawawalang pera. Kino, opo. Okay, so may nawawalang pera. Hindi pa natin alam kung sino ang may gawa. Mr. Chair, at hindi ko rin po alam kung ito ay dahil sa korupsyon. Ah, so may, may nawawalang pera, baka nahulog sa bintana. Hindi po siya napunta sa korupsyon. Or baka nawala siya kasi merong ibang nagbit-bit. Ganun po ba? Chair, kaya nga po sa ngayon, nagkakaroon ng mga tinatawag na ganitong investigasyon. Kaya rin po may mga nakafile na kaso sa aming legal. Uh, para po patunayan kung talaga pong merong mga nawawala oh, sige. na nanggagawa okay. sa corruption. Susundan ko yung question ng Kong Galin. Ha? May nawawala ng pera. Umamin ka na. No? Sabi mo, may nawawala ng pera. Hindi natin alam kung kagagawan ng mga taga-PhilHealth o kagagawan ng hospital. Opo, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Okay. Congresswoman Mr. Chair, next question. Ilang taon ka nung po-ish sa PhilHealth? How many years have you been with PhilHealth? Uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, uh, ako po ay napunta sa PhilHealth nung 1999. How many years have you been so in PhilHealth? Roughly, Direct answer, uh, please. Isa, dalawa, lima, sampo. Less than 21 years po. How many years? Less than 21 years po. Approx uh, no, 20 or 21 years? 21 years. Yeah. May, may I request, Mr. Chair, distinguished resource person, please don't waste the time of this committee. Please give us direct answers. Wag na po tayo dun sa palaging palusot na paikot-ikot. Mawalang galang na po. No? So you have been in field health with 21 years. And earlier you mentioned that you are proposing changes in field health. Sa pananaw niyo po, in the 21 years that you have been with PhilHealth, why is it that you have not contributed to reforms in your institution? Please answer directly, uh, Mr. Vargas. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, in my own ways po, uh, tayo po ay nakatulong sa korporasyon. Unang-una, ako po ay nagsimula bilang uh, medical evaluator sa region sa claims processing. Pangalawa po, uh, nung po tayo ay nagkaroon ng pagkakataong maging manager ng benefits development, tayo po ay nakapagpalabas ng mga polisiya, uh, lalo kasama na po dito yung no balance billing, and initially we started with the 23 case rates. After that po, no, ako po ay nasa communications. Teka, pasensya na po. Let me interject. Mr. Chair, ulitin ko lang po. Malaki po ang naitulong nyo sa PhilHealth because number one, you proposed the no balance billing. Number two, you proposed the initial 23 case rates. Tama po ba ang naririnig ko? Kasama po kami dahil kami po yung nasa benefits during that time. Noon pong nagkaroon tayo ng... Uh, Okay. Mr. Cases, Chair, with no that, balance. may we request the Secretariat to request an itemized list of actions done by Dr. Ish Pargas on how he has contributed to cleansing the institution that has been connected for the past 21 years. Let uh, me move forward. 
the uh, committee uh, secretary is directed to uh, get all the uh, documents pertaining to uh, what uh, Congressman uh, Janet Garen is uh, asking, uh, pertaining to uh, all the uh, contribution of uh, Mr. Fargas and uh, thereby uh, uh, accordingly all these documents have been approved by the Peel Health Board as well. Uh, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Go ahead. Chair. Ayoko na po sanang magtanong. But then, uh, because I was here the whole day, and prior to coming here, I was on Zoom, listening to answers, to some of the answers, medyo nakaka-insulto po kasi, lalo na kapag may mga naririnig tayong mga jodorizer or mga kasinungalingan. Unang-una po, let me point earlier the statement of our chair. Our Honorable Chair mentioned that in 2014, bigla pong tumaas yung pneumonia, acute gastroenteritis, and there were a lot of other illnesses. The slides are actually in my office because I was listening from there. Mr. Chair, just for purposes of transparency, I became a chairman of the Board of PhilHealth for one year and four months, approximately. At ang una ko pong nakita na medyo nakakapagtaka, ito nga pong tinuro ng ating butihing chairman, congressman, Mike Defensor. And the and Congress and Senate has passed a lot of good laws. Simulan ko lang po yung pinakamalaking reason why there are a lot of fraudulent claims related to pneumonia, gastritis, hypertension, name it, you have it. Pwede ko po bang tanungin, Mr. Chair, ang ating butihing resource person, kailan po ba ipinasa ang senior citizen's law? Madam Congresswoman, uh, the effectivity date of RA number 10645 or the Senior Citizens Law Expansion is, uh, I, I will have to check on this, is November 2014. So the Senior Citizens Law was passed on November 2014. Mr. Chair, napaka importante po ng petsa na ito. Because this will display how laws with good intentions are actually abused by people who should have take, taken care, who should have taken care of the members of uh, PhilHealth's money. November 2014, ipinasa ang senior citizens law. Nakasaad po doon yung membership ng ating mga senior citizens para po sila maging miyembro ng PhilHealth, lalo na po yung mga walang trabaho. My next question, Mr. Chair, is this. Dr. Pargas, kailan po ito napirmahan ng Presidente ng Pilipinas? November 2014, was the approval in Congress or in Senate? Um, ma Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Congress ko po alam kung ano yung exact date. So, November 2014 is what? The approval in Congress or Senate or the approval of the Office of the President? Um, effectivity date po of RA number 10645. Meaning, effectivity date, this is the day that that proposed measure was signed into law. This was approved by Congress either September or October somewhere during that time. At dahil pinirmahan nga ng Pangulo, nakasaad po doon na bibigyan ng pondo para ma-enroll yung ating mga senior citizens. Kailan niyo po in-enroll sa PhilHealth yung ating mga senior citizens na hindi pa miyembro ng PhilHealth? Um...
I would think sometime in 2015, Dr. Vargas. 2015. I'm sorry. Uh, if it's November... 2016, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Para lang po sa kaalaman ng lahat, no? Uh, um, pagka tayo yung nagpapasa ng isang batas, dumadaan po siya sa Pangulo ng Republika ng Pilipinas, pinipirmahan, and after that law, it is funded. Because the law was passed in November, a point at which the budget for the next year and 2015 has already been made and approved, isinasama na siya dun sa pondo ng 2016. Mr. Chair, tama po ba ako? Yes, Madam uh, Honorable Green. You're correct. Kasi, dun po sa presentation mo kanina, isa lang po ang sagot doon. When Congress passed the law in October of 2014, right there and then, the next day, Dr. Ish Pargas immediately went on a press conference and informed all senior citizens to avail of many services. At yan po ang naging puno at simula ng paghahakot ng ating mga lolo at lola na akala nila e eh para sa kanilang kapakanan. And I was surprised because during this time I was somewhere in Mindanao and I saw a truck full of passengers. Una akala ko mamimiesta. Pangalawa akala ko may namatay. Sabi ko mahirap naman dun no, ang daming senior. It was only after a few weeks and a few months that I realized na ito pala inahakot sa iba't ibang mga clinic and the senior citizens law became an excuse for PhilHealth and their cohorts to rob the people's money. Can Dr. Ish Vargas affirm to that? Dr. Vargas? Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, uh, there was a board resolution in 2014 that the uh, entitlement to the identified programs for senior citizens shall commence on November 25, 2014, which is the effectivity date of RA 10645. Um, it was a board resolution 1922, series of 2014, and after that, po, a circular was issued also in 2014 uh, uh, as the implementing guidelines for the mandatory PhilHealth coverage of senior citizens. Okay, Mr. Again, Chair, to that. ang sinasagot po ng ating uh, resource person, ang sinasabi niyo po, dahil nung 2014, nagkaroon ng board resolution na i-implement na yung panukalang batas na ito. When did you come out in a press conference and announce to the whole country and inform all the hospitals and the regional vice presidents to let the senior citizens avail of um, a checkup that brings them to the hospital where they are given free food, but their field health availments are actually depleted? Um, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, I, I don't remember na po. I apologize. Pwede mo po bang ma-search? Bibigyan, may, pa, may Wi-Fi naman po dito. Di ba may date po doon kung kailan nyo in-announce yun? And this was the subject of several meetings we had-ish. And I even asked you several times, why did you have to announce in public lahat ng senior citizens Magpakonsulta kayo, magpa-check up kayo, magpa-admit kayo. Kasi libre na babayaran ang hospital nyo. And I asked you, why do you have to do that? You did it a day after Congress approved the bill on third reading. Even before the President signed the law. So Mr. Chair, let me move forward. Kasi hindi po mahirap hanapin yung date ng press ko na yon kapag ikaw yung nag-announce. Ibig sabihin, ginagawa pa lang yung batas. Nakaantabay na yung mga magnanakaw. 
dahil inannounce na kaagad at ready-ready na yung lahat na pagkapirma ng batas, naghakot na ng mga lolo at lola. Despite the fact, Mr. Chair, that DBM did not release the funds for the enrollment, I am not saying that we don't give them free services. We should. But what is glaring here, wala pang ang batas, wala pang IRR, hindi pa napopondohan ng DBM, in-implement nyo na. And PhilHealth recorded that as collectibles. Kaya nga po, ni-record nyo na may collectible kayo ng Senior Citizens Premium ng 2014, Senior Citizens Premium ng 2015, and noong 2016, kinokolekta nyo times three, the actual premium. That is the reason, Mr. Chair, kung pwede pong makuha ng komitiba yung mga datos at mga dokumento that will support what we found out because that will explain the graphs that you presented earlier. Let me move forward. Ang masakit po kasi, ilang announcement na ang narinig natin na yung frontliners o yung mga doktor, yung mga laboratory personnel, yung mga nagahandle ng hospitals at mga pasyente natin may COVID ay libre ang kanilang COVID tests. Do you affirm this? Um, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, ang polisiya po natin pagdating sa uh, COVID testing ay kung sino po yung nasa sulat sa DOH Department Memorandum for uh, the testing, sila po yung nakaka -avail. Yes, Mr. Chair, the frontliners, the direct, the healthcare workers na nag-aalaga sa ating mga pasyente are na, ay nasa DOH protocol po. At kaya nga po ang presumption ng lahat ay covered sila. Unfortunately, the laboratories that are testing them are now asking them to pay dahil hindi raw sila binabayaran ng PhilHealth. Kasi ang sagot daw po ng PhilHealth, in-announce yan, pero wala pa yung guidelines. Do you already have the guidelines? Whether frontliners, direct frontliners, and I mean medical workers, hospital workers, doctors, medtechs, nurses, people inside the hospital catering to our patients are already covered by PhilHealth. Uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, again, with our circular po doon sa testing, naka-attach po doon ang uh, guidelines ng DOH kung sino po yung covered. So effectively po, kasama po doon ang uh, ating mga frontline health workers, Mr. Chair. So doon po sa inyong guidelines, ang sinasabi po, pagkapag ikaw frontliner, bayad na ang testing mo. Again, kasama po yun doon sa guidelines. Uh, kung sila po ay What guidelines, Mr. Chair? Is it PhilHealth guidelines or DOH guidelines? Uh, Doon po sa kung sino po ang uh, i-cover for the testing, yun po ay nasa DOH guidelines. Doon naman po sa testing circular guidelines namin, uh, doon po nakasulat yung package kung magkano. And again, nakalagay din po doon na dapat ito po ay copy. Ano nakalagay doon na? No, na, no copay po. Okay. Mr. Chair, medyo may gray area po. Ish, can you answer us directly? If DOH issues a guideline or merong memorandum ang Department of Health, Mr. Chair, yan po ba e automatic na memorandum na rin ang PhilHealth or hindi? Be, yes or uh, no, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. Do you mean to say that if the Secretary of Health or an Undersecretary issues a memorandum, it's an automatic memorandum of PhilHealth? Uh, Madam, uh, Madam, uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, as I understand po, PhilHealth being an attached agency, and of course the chairperson is the Department of Health, then we will uh, follow uh, the... No, Mr. Chair, my question is direct. 
please give me a direct answer. Uh, Mr. Chair, as I understand, yes. So, pag merong memorandum ang DOH, automatic memorandum na ng FinHealth yun? Uh, no, Mr. Chair? You don't, issue, you don't issue a board resolution or guidelines for that matter because I can present to you all the requirements like Yolanda, no nagkaroon ng announcement ang Secretary of Health that all the patients will be covered. PhilHealth oh. convened the board and the board issued a resolution to support yes. the Secretary. Um, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, I, 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 I clarify, yes po, uh, all our policies would have to go through the uh, board resolution or through the board being the governing policy in order to adapt any uh, uh, policies of the government. Po. Because PhilHealth is a GOCC. It is not directly under the Department of Health, right? That's why the, the Secretary of Health sits as the chair of the board and many other people sits in the board representing other government agencies. So ulitin po natin, and please confirm this. Kapag meron pong direktiba ang Department of Health, hindi po yun automatic sa PhilHealth. The board convenes, issues a memorandum, and you come up with guidelines for the implementation. Tama o mali? Uh, Mr. Chair, tama po. That's why with the uh, circular guidelines okay. po natin, attached Kaya po, po siya. tama po. So, Mr. Chair, ang sinasabi at inuulit po ng ating PhilHealth officials ngayon, kapag merong memorandum ang Department of Health, kailangan ang PhilHealth mag-convene and they decide whether they accept it or not. After accepting it, they come up with guidelines so that it will be implemented. Klaro po tayo doon. Can I again get your confirmation on this? Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, as far as I know, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Kasi ang nakakapagtaka po, sinasabi niyong covered kasi nasa DOH algorithm, pero wala kayong ginawang guidelines. Kaya tuloy ngayon, gray area, sinasabi niyong covered, pero yung ating mga frontliners, yung mga doctors, nurses, nagkakamatayan na nga sila. And their testing is not covered. Sila pa ang nagbabayad. Pinapabayad sila dahil yung mga laboratories, hindi na nire-refund nyo dahil walang guidelines. Pero sa senior citizens law, mabilis pa sa kidlat na inimplementa nyo ito maski wala pang guidelines or wala pang IRR ang batas at wala pang pondo na binibigay sa inyo for enrollment. Nakikita niyo po ba ang diferensya? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, Madam Congresswoman, again po, uh, just to say lang po, uh, there was already a board resolution in November. Can you give me a copy of the board resolution? Yes po. We will uh, provide po the... the this is the a committee. board resolution on the frontliners for uh, COVID no, testing? No, no uh, this is on the uh, senior citizen. But for the testing po, we will provide also the uh, board so, resolution. Meron na ba talagang guidelines ang PhilHealth stating for a fact that testing of frontliners is covered or not? Because I will now move to the next question, whether it's tenable or untenable. Because you, you check the frontliners every three weeks. So you have to have a special fund for that. Anyway, Mr. Chair, just uh, so as not to waste time. Ang ibig po dito ang sabihin, may batas na ginawa para sa ating mga senior citizens para bigyan sila ng benepisyo Hindi pa man napipirmahan yung batas, wala pa mang IRR, wala pang pondo, hindi pa in-enroll, hinakot na. Ginawan ng sakit na lahat may high blood, lahat may pneumonia, lahat may acute gastroenteritis, yung iba may diarrhea, at inubos ang pondo ng PhilHealth. This explains, Mr. Chair, the second problem, yung admin cost. Kasi po, para po malaki ang magastos nila doon sa mga biyahe, mga meeting, at kung mga ano-anong activities, blinoblote 
yung income ng PhilHealth. So the law, like the senior citizen's law, was actually used to claim retroactive premiums. Is that allowed in the context of our laws, Mr. Chair? May I, may I ask anybody here who's handling the finance or the admin side of PhilHealth? Anyone can reply to the Honorable Garin? So, retroactive premiums. Ang nangyari po, pinag-uusapan pa lang sa Kongreso yung Senior Citizens Law na you don't have to be an indigent, automatic member ka na. Nag-announce na sila, in-implement na nila. Kaya hinakot yung mga lolo at lola, chinek up kunyari, pagkatapos sang katutak at bilyones ang siningil sa PhilHealth. When we found out about this, this triggered us to initiate classification of pneumonia. At ang nangyari po, dahil 2016 pa yung pondo na na-enroll sila, ginawa nilang retroactive. Kaya ang sinasabi nila, may collectible sila, maski wala naman. This 20, also... I'm sorry, Honorable Green, so 2016 yung pondo lumabas, pero inobligate nila sa 2014. Lumabas yung uh, 2014, hinahakot na. Basta mag-senior mag ka, mag-avail ka na. At ang ginawa naman, dun naman sa kanilang income, pinalabas nila na yung 2014, may binayad na premium. 2015, pinalabas din na collectible. Bakit? Kasi yung kanilang admin cost or yung gastusin sa mga biyahe at mga meeting is based on a certain percentage to the gross income. Siyempre, if you declare your income triple to what it is actually is, then you have a higher budget. Not only that, Mr. Chair, if we can also look at the issue of said premiums, there was also a time when they increased the premium of all the members. Honorable Green, yeah. Uh, since I understand, Dr. Bar uh, Vargas understands this, tama po ba yung sinasabi ni Congresswoman Green? Mr. Chair, uh, sorry, I will have to de uh, defer to the finance and to the... But I would assume that she knows what she's saying because she was there and she knew what happened. And she was the one who kept on announcing it and leading the program. Is this correct, uh, Dr. Pargas? Uh, again, Mr. Chair, I was the uh, spokesperson then of the corporation. No, no, no. I'm but not referring regards... to you directly. Ang tanong ko lang yung sinasabi ni, ni uh, Congresswoman Garin, na merong mga nag-early enrollment, tapos ginawa lang 2016, lumabas yung pondo, naging payable ng PhilHealth. Uh, po ako ang uh, responsible for... Uh, those uh, billings and collection, and on the finances po. Would Mr. You know Chair, pwede ko bang, can I rephrase my question? Sige po. Yeah. In the meetings that you were present in PhilHealth and in all the official and unofficial discussions, Dr. Pargas, did you ever encounter a discussion wherein it was being questioned why you already implemented the program pero hindi pa sila enrolled? At hindi pa nababayaran yung premium nila. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Congresswoman, uh, I will have to recall po. Mr. Chair. Uh, Congresswoman Garin, <laughs> may I know, sino po ba ang naghead ng uh, legal and uh, finance at that time? Maybe we can ask uh, Phil help, Mr. Chair. Would you know who was the head at that time of the legal and finance? Because these are all connected. Isa lang po ba yan o dalawang tao? Iba po ang sa finance during the time. Who was the head of finance at the time, uh, Dr. Vargas? Kung sino po may alam, wala naman pong problema. Simple question. Uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, I'm not sure po. Uh, baka po si uh, Mr. Greg Rulioda. Mr. To our finance. Sino po? Mr. Gregorio Rulioda. Mr. Gorio Rolyola. Rolyola. Sige, Comsec, can we invite the person at the time 2014 put on or 2015? Who was the head of legal at the time?
Mong Green, maybe baka po hindi They nila. would know the people there, Mr. Chair. They were, in, they were going to the same office every day. So who's the head of legal at the time? Nakakapagtaka naman po na hindi, hindi marami kayong hindi maricol. I didn't know, Mr. Chair, that temporary amnesia is now a trend. Yes, Dr. Uh, yes, Dr. Pargas. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, I am not sure for 2014-2015 if it is uh, um, Attorney Jermaine Lim. Jeremy. Uh, Asuncion. Sir Chair, um, Attorney Asuncion, Ed Asuncion. Attorney Asuncion. So, uh, Comsec, uh, kindly assist us in getting the name and if we can invite the persons mentioned. Uh, Sir, Mr. Relioda is in Zoom right now. Gregorio Relioda and Attorney Asuncion. Yan po yung dalawa. Um, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, I am not sure with the legal during that time. We can confirm and we can check for Okay, when uh, the president was President Alex Padilla, who was the head of legal? Attorney Ed Asuncion. Ed Asuncion. Okay. So, okay. so anyway, we'll just verify and we'll invite the person. Congressman Garin, kindly yes. continue. Mr. Chair, in addition to that, ito po kasing scheme ng senior citizens, um, yan po ang masakit eh, na kunyari, concerns sa senior citizens, pero ginamit sila to do fraudulent acts para po hakutin yung mga lolo at mga lola at maging rason para ilabas yung mga bilyon-bilyong pondo ng PhilHealth. There was also an instance where the collectibles that they are referring to nagtaas ng premium ang PhilHealth and they also retroactively implemented it. Ibig sabihin, nagtaas sila ng premium, inimplement kaagad ng private sector Pero dahil yung mga government offices that would entail a budget from the DBM, meron pong finance cover yan, it was implemented after, I think, a year or two. Again, ginawa nila yon na collectibles. Para pong ang nagiging attitude, pag merong board resolution, agad-agad dapat nandiyan na yung pera, even if there is no corresponding appropriation. Kapareho po ng scheme no, ng senior citizens. Again, this was added as part of the collectibles. Maybe if uh, G Greg Rolioda, the finance head, is on Zoom, he can answer that. Mr. Rolioda is uh, recognized. Yes, yes, ma'am, good evening. Uh, right now, I am now the current uh, regional vice president of NCR. Uh, the senior citizens uh, on is that because of the uh, <clears throat> board resolution uh, with regards that the program is now to be implemented. So that's the reason because of the enrollment of this uh, of these senior citizens. What is really the, the listed list of senior citizens is the one that was uh, uh, recorded as a receivable in the DBM because of the uh, uh, implementing uh, rules and regulation of that. So that was recorded and uh, Mr. we Chair? got an uh, a unqualified opinion for those years of when we book it up as receivable. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I clarify nga natin kay... Yes, go ahead. Right. Yeah, he mentioned that because there was a board resolution, they have to immediately implement the law. Tama po ba? Uh, yun po yung naging basis namin, ma'am, for uh, the... No, uh, yes or no? Because there was a board resolution, you have to immediately implement the law. Ta yung ba? Ang ibig niyong sabihin? Yeah, uh, that's the basis of our recording, ma'am. Okay. So, pagka merong board resolution maski hindi pa pirmado ang batas or maski wala pang IRR, you have to implement it. Question is this, how can you implement a law if there is no accompanying IRR yet? Uh, the legal department can uh, 
I cannot answer for that now, but I think our legal later on can answer for that. Okay. Greg, you were the finance head. Pagka sinabi ang i-implement nyo ito, titingnan mo ba kung bayad na yung premium or hindi pa? To laymanize it, whenever you consider a certain person or a certain family as member of an insurance company, can he or she be a member without payment of his or her premium? Uh, Ma'am, because uh, this is a mandate. Greg, uh, yes or no? You're a finance person. Ikaw ang finance head. Let's say, sasabihin ni Congressman Mike Defensor, i-enroll nyo si Janet. Bagay nyo sa kanya ang lahat ng benepisyo ng PhilHealth. Pero, ayaw pang bayaran ng Kongreso ang premium ko. Am I already a member or not yet? Uh, based on the uh, board resolution that the effectivity of the senior citizens law, I, uh, they are automatic members based on that uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, basis, uh, can so we request um, Mr. Greg Rolyoda to just come to Congress on the next hearing? Mahirap po kasi yung pinapaikot-ikot yung mga sagot eh. Napakasimple po ng tanong, kaya pong sagutin yun ng high school student. Kapag ikaw ba e eh gagawing miyembro ng insurance, kung hindi ka pa nagbabayad ng premium mo, miyembro ka na ba o hindi pa? The mere fact that there's an automatic membership of the, uh, the senior citizen based on that uh, board resolution, it uh, is presumed that they are members. But I am willing to be there in the next yeah. hearing. So that Mr. I can Chair, also I move that we request the presence of Mr. Greg Ulioda in the next hearing. And for the record, let us put it on record and check who are the people who are continuously twisting interpretations, legal interpretations. Kasi sa buong mundo, Mr. Spe Mr. Chairman, Ngayon lang po ako nakarinig ng insurance na maski hindi ka pa nagbayad ng premium, member ka na. Meaning, if we now deliberate on a law, because the board is a governing body, but supposed to be the day-to-day -day operations, including membership, will have to be provided by the career people inside the institution. Mr. Chair, if this is the way PhilHealth is operating, surely it's very obvious that they cannot continue existing. Kasi kung ang utak mo, miyembro ka na, maski hindi ka nagbabayad ng premium, edi eh ibig sabihin, talagang magko-collapse yan. So I would have uh, further questions on that, Mr. Chair. Kay, Gre kay Mr. Greg Yoda na lang, what was that instance where you also had a lot of collectibles pointing to the fact na nag-board resolution kayo, in-increase yung premium, pero wala pang pondo yung gobyerno, but you already considered it as added income, actual income. Can you also provide the documents for that? Uh, we provide the documents for that. Uh, so, Mr. Ilyoda, so in the next uh, hearing on Monday, we will resume on Monday, 9 a.m. We expect you to be here in the plenary uh, committee hearing, uh, Mr. Yoda. Yeah, yes. and that, Mr. Yes. Chair, is very important because that will also explain why there was a lot of wastage. Um, next, Mr. Chair, now, earlier again, Dr. Ish mentioned, paulit-ulit niya po kasing sinasabi yung USAID. Um, I am wondering, Mr. Chair, because USAID is a very prestigious organization, USAID na po ba pala ang gumagawa ng packages for PhilHealth? Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, hindi naman po, but uh, we sought their help, uh, especially with regard to the costing, and uh, we were provided with help by the uh, palladium of the USA, uh, USAID. Yeah, Mr. Chair, may I request that we request PhilHealth and you uh, to provide us a document when USAID is contributing or funding or estimating or crafting a cost of tests? Um, hmm. Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, 
uh, they are not funding po, but they provided the technical assistance. Technical so, assistance. So, me meron itong ano, there, there are documentary um, attachments regarding this. Yes, Mr. Chair, and in fact, uh, even during our board uh, presentation, uh, with regard to the uh, presentation on the costing and the cost elements, it was uh, the palladium uh, which actually presented. It was uh, the? The palladium po, which is under the USAID. So, sorry, Mr. Chair, hindi ko maintindihan. Okay, okay. So, can we have documents on that? Because I'm not sure if that is within the gambit of uh, the USAID. Kasi mahirap po yung ganun na it's very difficult for us to just follow hook, line, and sinker recommendations of uh, groups who do not have the expertise in so far as health financing is concerned. I am not aware of, uh, of experts on health financing that USAID is providing in terms of viability of uh, public health insurances. Um, uh, Honorable Garin, uh, just a quick interjection before you continue. Uh, I am in receipt of a letter signed by Attorney Makabato, Romeo Alberto, uh, Datu Alonto, Johnny C. Chichua and Dennis Adre sometime in uh, mid-2000 that they already wrote a letter. These are the Mindanao group about the all-case rate and they were already asking na tanggalin na to kasi nag-worry sila na mauubos ang pondo ng ating, uh, ng ating field health. If they are here right now, kung nasa Zoom po sila, kung pwede hong makakuha ng official submission yon o letter na to, and if there is a record in PhilHealth Central, if, if we may be provided with that. So, so I'm sorry, sorry, uh, Honorable Garin, please continue. Yeah, that's very good, Mr. Chair, because um, I uh, personally, together with the staff that I brought in to PhilHealth, initiated the review of the case rates. Kagaya po ng pneumonia, it was just blanket pneumonia. At ang una po namin tinanong doon, paano isang araw pneumonia ka na? Because there were a lot of admissions na isang araw lang. Yun nga eh, senior citizens, lo kunyari, hinahakot yung mga lolo at lola, ina-admit ng isang araw, lalagyan ng pneumonia, swak na kaagad. And this was very glaring. Kasi truck, truck eh. Jeep, jeep eh. Alam nung lahat ng mga barangay. And they were actually seekers. So, reviews were conducted. In fact, we required a minimum of at least Two to three days? Was it three days admission? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, 72 days, 96 days. 72 96, days uh, admission. 72 hours, 96 hours. Kasi ang naging trend po, makikita mo, magpapa-admit ng Saturday, lalabas ng Sunday. Parang nag one night na relax, relax ka lang. Pero yun naman, relax, relax din yung field health na ubos ang pondo. And it's very, scientifically speaking, it's impossible that you end up with pneumonia and you just get admitted for a day. So we requested exit results and all that. My question is this, Mr. Chair, why is it that the review of case rates stopped when I left PhilHealth? Bakit nyo hininto? Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Congresswoman, <clears throat> again, I, I, I was in corporate affairs uh, until 20, early 2018. So, uh, uh, I mean, during that time, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Congresswoman, I was not part of the okay. sector. Okay. Direct question again, Mr. Chair. Hinintu ba yung review ng case rates or hindi? Was it stopped or was it continued? Mr. Chair, I think it was con continued because, again, as stated by uh, Madam Congresswoman, uh, for example, in the pneumonia, uh, there was a uh, requirement of the length of stay together with other diseases. No, m Mr. Chair, pasensya na po, I think uh, he did not get my question. My, question, my statement earlier said that I initiated review of case rates. When I left, it suddenly stopped. So yung tanong ko, bakit 
hininto o bakit pinahinto? Again, Mr. Chair. No, not the, the not the not the case rates that were already adjusted. These were already implemented. Pero una lang yun eh. We only reviewed dialysis and pneumonia. There was supposed to be cesarean, AGE, pasunod-sunod na yun eh. Bakit huminto? Ay, again, Who made it stop? Again, Mr. Chair, um, uh, I I came back to the health finance policy sector only in uh, mid a. 2018, so I cannot answer for this stopping or uh, the question. Okay, of the answer, Mr. Chair, is he refused to answer dahil hindi siya kasama dun sa opisina. Next question. Another strategy that we embarked on to curb fraud was the stop payment mechanism. Because if you review the history in PhilHealth, and daming fraudulent claims wala kang laban kasi ang isasagot sa'yo palagi, hintayin na lang na matapos sa Supreme Court. And that will take several years. And while the case is taking its toll in the courts up to the Supreme Court, patuloy naman ang fraudulent activities. And our assessment during that time, if you have, let's say, Hospital A, Maraming fraudulent claims. Hindi mo a-actionan, sasabihin mo, hintayin ang Supreme Court. In the seven years or ten years that you are fighting for that case in the Supreme Court, millions and millions of funds are being suctioned into fraud again. So what did we do? We implemented the stop payment mechanism. Ibig sabihin, pag ikaw ay maraming kaso, at hindi mo yan pinapa-resolve at pinapatagal mo at pinapa-delay, go ahead, take your time. But you will not be able to get reimbursements from PhilHealth pending the resolution of your case. Mr. Chair, may I ask the people from PhilHealth if that was effective in curbing fraud? Anyone can reply? Bumababa yung fraud, specifically on cataract, dialysis, and pneumonia when the stop payment mechanism was instituted? Do I say, do I take it that silence means yes? Let me move, Mr. Chair, to my next question. Who overturned the stop payment mechanism? I'm sure someone knows who overturned the uh, stop payment policy. Kasi ang kagandahan kasi sana nun, Mr. Chair, dahil marami na ang nag at right and left na, at dahil puso ng bawat doktor at ospital, ang PhilHealth, the stop payment hurt them to the core. At marami ang lumapit, at ang kanilang sinabi, okay, we're going to negotiate, we are going to stop fraudulent claims, we are going to align with the mandate of the Philippine Health Insurance, basta ipagpatuloy nyo na kami. And then nagkaroon ng mga settlement na kumbaga may fines, wala ng kaso, hindi na gagamitin yung mga abogado para pahirapan yung PhilHealth. And that was good. So my question is, why would you overturn something that was helping your institution? And now you start talking about reforms, about cleansing PhilHealth, pretending that you can implement universal health care? My God, that's next to impossible. How can you implement universal health care if you insist and persist to be blind and deaf to what is happening around all of you? So, Mr. Chair, may I request that PhilHealth produce documents that overturned the reforms that I initiated with huge and extreme difficulty in PhilHealth. Napakahirap po, Mr. Chair. Wala po akong sinabi nung mga nakaraang panahon, but my experience as chairman of the board was very difficult. First, board resolutions were not being headed to. 
Minsan hindi pa pinapasa, nagiging bulag-bulagan at naiipit at pilit na winawala. It is not true na takot na takot sila sa board resolutions just like what they are saying and pointing to in the case of the senior citizens because our experience actually points to the fact that many of our decisions, lalong-lalo na yung mga resolution related to fraud being approved and passed by the board ay hindi po pinapasa. Hahalong katin mo pa yung bawat opisina, pupunta ka pa ba sa kababaan-babaang opisina at hahanapin mo only to find out na, oops, hindi pala in-implement ang isasagot sa iyo ay, ma'am, hindi po nakarating sa opisina namin ang resolusyon nyo. That can be proven, Mr. Chair, if you look at the reckoning dates by which board resolutions and reforms on field health were passed, approved by the board, but remained unimplemented. So my next question, Mr. Chair, nung pong inuodit na ang field health, Right and left po na sinasabi, yung pera ng PhilHealth at yung pera daw ng senior citizens na 10.6 billion was diverted to DOH. Nagulat po ako because it's a big lie. May I inquire from PhilHealth if indeed there was entry of 10.6 billion to the coffers of PhilHealth. Can somebody from the Finance Department of PhilHealth or somebody from the Legal Office answer the question? Mr. Lumisako, you can reply to that. Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, uh, good evening. Uh, based on record of PhilHealth, uh, Your Honor, Wala ho kaming uh, natanggap na sinasabi ni Congressman Gary na 10.6 billion, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, kung wala naman pala kayong natanggap, why is it that some of you here who are present here now kept on pointing to a 10.6 billion fund that was diverted from PhilHealth to DOH? Bakit pilit na gumagawa kayo ng mga kasinungalingan para pagtakpan ang mga pinaggagawa ng iilan? Honorable Garin, would you know in particular who uh, came out with a statement on that? Um, uh, Jan Basa, I also saw Ish in many of the meetings in Senate and even here. And um, I can, I'll, I'll, uh, in fact, they had presentations to the board, explaining to the board na kaya walang pondo yung PhilHealth kasi dinivert daw sa DOH. Naniwala naman yung presidente during that time, si Dr. De La Serna, and they were, their, their attention were diverted to issues that were actually non-existent. And that was so, why Dr. the real... Bar I'm sorry, Dr. Vargas was quoted as saying that the 10.6... He was present in those meetings and during the times that the allegations... And I think he was the one who was always at the side of Dr. De La Serna. But it was Dr. De La Serna talking uh, about it. Per the, infer the, the whole board was made to believe that it was inexistent. And um, during that time, I don't know, maybe like the people who were feeding the board wrong information ended up being promoted, Mr. Chair. Konsensya na po nila yun kung hindi nila aminin kasi makikita nun naman bakit yung iba dito ay nagkaroon ng mabilisan na promotion. And now some of them are senior vice presidents. Anyway, Mr. Chair, I just brought that out in the open because that is how strong the real mafia is. Kaya nilang gumawa ng kwento, kaya nilang magkunyari na may perang pumasok, kaya nilang magsabing may mga legal na basihan maski wala, at kaya nilang mag-implement ng batas maski hindi pa 
batas. Simply Gary, said, quick interjection. Magkano ho yung pondo ninyo for uh, media, for PR? We all have that. I was uh, in housing, I had that. Uh, in the other agencies, I had that. Magkano ho yung pondo ng, ng PhilHealth sa media? For PR. Mr. Dimsyako? Mr. Chair, Your Honor, sorry po, wala po akong figure dito. Uh, More or less? 300 million, 500 million, 1 billion? Mas maliit. Uh, uh, Your Honor? Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, who is talking? Can I, may I recognize? This is Vice President Shirley Domingo. Yes, I'm handling the Corporate Affairs Group at the moment. Yes, BP Domingo, go ahead. Yes, sir. For this year, uh, we have around 20 million for our uh, budget for uh, advertisements, prints, uh, around 20 million po for this year. 20 million? Yes, sir. Yun lang ho ang budget nyo for uh, advertising? Uh, yes, sir, for this year. For last year po, magkano po? Uh, I think it will be around... Uh, I think it will be around that, but uh, the year before that was around 70 plus million that would be around uh, two years ago, but this was uh, brought down uh, for several reasons. Therefore, it will be around uh, around 22 million last year and this year. Salamat po, uh, Vice President. I haven't had, uh, I'm sorry, sir. I, I haven't uh, the exact amount now, but it will be around that. Okay. Salamat po. Salamat po dun. Uh, okay, Congressman Garin. Mr. Chair, when Dr. Ish Pargas was the spokesperson, maybe he would know how much the budget was uh, allocated for uh, ads. Diba, meron ka pong TV program. You had a TV program before, you had ads and campaign. Magkano po ba yun? Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, uh, I don't remember po, but we can provide. Yeah. Kindly check if it reached around 400 million. Mr. Chair, Madam uh, Congresswoman, we will provide for the details. Okay. 400 million, Honorable Garin? Maybe we can. He was the spokesperson. He was having yes. his TV programs. And uh, siguro naman yung intention is... Uh, um, yes. uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, another question. Diba kasi paulit-ulit natin naririnig walang pondo yung PhilHealth. At paulit-ulit rin kaming nananawagan. Why is it that PhilHealth is renting expensive offices in malls? Kasi matagal ko nang pinapakiusap na baka pwedeng tanggalin na lang yon para makasave tayo yung pondo na yon itulong na lang sa mga mahihirap. I will always say, uh, hear a response, yes, yes, yes. Pero Mr. Chair, hanggang ngayon, tila nasa mall pa rin yung fill up. The reason that was given to us before, eh mas maganda daw po pag nasa mall, baka po merong mga walk-in na magpa-enroll sa fill health. Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, I would even appreciate it more if you have a clinic in the mall rather than an office in the malls. So is this still ongoing? Please answer. May mga opisina pa ba kayo sa mga rented buildings, sa mga malls? Kasi ang naging usapan natin, matagal na. In fact, I even volunteered and showed to you that it is possible by talking to to the town of Gimbal, my hometown, and requesting the LGU to a portion, a space in the covered course sa municipio, isang opisina doon na pinaayos namin, pinagamit sa PhilHealth, free of charge. And we had several meetings and we told you, why don't you ask for a free space or a free office in each provincial capital or in each City, uh, city Hall para wala na kayong rental and you will be near to the services because many people would go to these government offices. 
I don't know, Mr. Chair, bakit gustong mag-opisina sa mall? Honorable Green, can we go to the last question? Would there be a reply to Honorable Green, yung opisina sa mall? Go ahead, uh, VP uh, Dennis Mas, sir. Dennis Mas. Uh, nung na-assign ako sa Philhealth Region 6, nag-open ho kami doon, ma'am, ng, ano, ng office doon sa town of Gimbal. So, na-establish yung office na yon. So, hanggang ngayon, ay parang service desk siya. Yung May bayad po ba yun or wala? Uh, opera alam ko mang operational pa yun eh, hanggang ngayon. Yes. Sa, yes. sa likod ng, uh, ano ba yun, parang gymnasium yun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Malapit. Mr. Chair, my question to Dr. Dennis Mas, may rental ba yun or wala? Nung araw man parang pinag ano, rental ni Mayor ano, uh, Christine. Yun yung pagkaalala ko. Meron or wala? May, parang meron ma'am. Pagkakaalam ko kasi wala. Ah, uh, sige, sige. Check ko lang kasi medyo matagal na eh. 2011 o 2012 pa. So it is Masyado a matagal. replica, it is an example wherein you can actually hold offices yes, under yes. government offices at no cost Tama to the ma. members of Tama the Philippine ma. Health Insurance. And some LGUs are volunteering para palapit yung uh, services namin sa kanilang constituents. So nagpapalibre sila no, sa mga offices nila. Nandoon yung PhilHealth. Yung dinadala na lang natin yung uh, computers sa tao. Kasi gusto rin nila yun especially sa mga one-stop shop. Pero yung mga regional offices naman natin ngayon ay, ay naghahanap rin no, ng malipatan na mas maganda, uh, hindi binabaha, spacious, and then usually ground floor. And we are also updating our guidelines para maging responsive yeah, Mr. and Chair, convenient sa members. Mr. Chair, if I may, kasi wala pa po ako sa PhilHealth dati, nasa probinsya pa lang po ako, Paulit-ulit po kami nagtatanong kasi yung po ang sagot eh, kailangan ng spacious office, kailangan maraming tao, kaya dapat sa mall. Napakamahal po ng rental sa mall. Eh yung mga nagpapa-enroll naman Mr. Chair ng PhilHealth, wala naman sa mall eh. Kung ako ay magkakasakit at kailangan kong magpa-reimburse or meron akong katanungan sa PhilHealth, hindi ako pupunta sa mall. I'll go to the hospital. So my question, Mr. Chair, is this. For the past several decades na pinag-uusapan natin, stop renting expensive offices. Stop renting malls and buildings. Nag-offer na nga ang mga governors. They have spaces in the provincial capitals. City mayors are giving you offices. You can share the office of the DOH regional offices. You can also hold office in the LG. Bakit kailangan magbayad sa mall? So my question is this. Can you now commit under oath that all these offices will be terminated? Kasi sabi niyo, okay ma'am, next year, next year, next year. Honorable Green, maybe what we should do is ask the board as a matter of policy na gawin po nila yan so that this will be followed by the executive officers. Yes, uh, Mr. Mas. Sir, some info, no? Uh, kahit dito man ako na-assign before sa NCR, ang Robinson talaga nag-offer ng free space sa PhilHealth. Ang tawag dito, Lingkod Pinoy. Libri ho yun lahat. Dito sa NCR, dyan sa Taguig, binigyan tayo ng SM. Dito sa SM, SM, uh, yung doon sa ano, Aura, dito rin sa SM North. Mga libre ho yun. Pero totoo yun, may mga LGUs talaga na nag-offer doon sa... So, Mr. Chair, libre lahat ng Space pwesto ma sa malls? Oh, ma walang bayad kuryente? Walang bayad oh, except tubig? Except kung ganun kalaki talaga ng Region 6, napakalaki talaga ng regional office na yun eh. Pero kung mga ano lang... Sir, sir ma sorry ha. Clarify ko lang. Yung Region 6, libre rin yun? Ah, may bayad yun talaga, ma'am, kasi napakalaki ah, may bayad talaga yun. yan. Napakalaki oh. na talaga yun. So, minsan yun eh. may bayad, minsan walang bayad. Oh. Or pwedeng libre yung maliit na pwesto, pero may bayad yung malaking pwesto. Yung maliliit, ma'am, na sa malls, libre yun talaga. Pero kung regional offices talaga ng mga 2,000 square meters, mga 3,000, hindi na talaga kaya. May bayad uh, talaga Chair, yun. At saka din just to clarify, public I'm not referring to promotional boots. Bumabalik po kasi tayo, sir, eh. Ang nangyayari kasi, pagka may problema, either hindi natin tinatanggap na may problema 
or naghahanap tayo ng palusot. Kasi yung sinasabi nyo ngayon, libre siya. These are promotional booths. Yung nandudung ka sa gitna ng mall or meron kang pwesto doon or sa mga hallway and you promote feel health. Sinong gustong magpa-enroll? Yung po ang libre. Pero yung mga malalaking opisina, may bayad yun. It's in your budget. Ang point ni Honorable Garim po, hindi po yung promotional booth nga, uh, kundi yung opisina talaga. At any rate, Honorable Garim, maybe we can ask the board uh, na kasama natin ngayon, nagawin na nila yung policy so that the executive can also follow. At wag na po magkaroon ng maging problema tong Because it's a very good suggestion na magamit talaga natin yung mga public offices for that. So, if we may have the commitment of the board to assist us on this as part of our cost-saving measure for field health. Yes, ma'am. Uh, on my part, uh, Mr. Chairman, naisip ko lang yung advantage of being in the mall. Kasi hindi, ngayon ko lang din naman narinig yan, being uh, new in the board. Pero hindi kaya, gusto ko lang munang tignan ha, the advantage of going to the mall Kasi maraming tao doon sa mall. Kaya iniisip ko, it is accessible to people. Kaya baka yun ang reason. Yeah. Okay, baka, ma at saka hindi rin lang, kung malayong office, hindi pupuntahan ng tao yon. Okay, Pero kung sa mall doon, even churches now, they go to the mall. Ma yeah. let's do Mr. this. Mr. Chair. Ha? Parang yun lang yung nakikita ko lang ha. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, but, madam. This is not the, uh, the venue to debate on this. Pero yung point po ni Honorable Garin, pag-aralan po natin yan because ang intent natin is bawasan yung cost ng ating uh, ng Mr. Chair. health. So maybe if you can look at this as a policy because you are yeah. part of the board. Honorable Garin? Yeah. Mr. Uh, Chair, if I may. Ma'am, tama po kayo na yung mall maganda siya kasi maraming tao. But we're talking about feel health here. Yung transaction po ng feel health, online yon. Kapag ikaw empleyado, kinakaltasan yung sahod mo, niriremit ng iyong employer papunta sa PhilHealth through the bank. Am I right? Pagka naman yung PhilHealth magbabayad, online naman, pinapadala naman dun sa account ng hospital or sa account ng mga clinics or doctors. In other words, the foot traffic, while it is high in malls, is not conducive for PhilHealth Kasi wala naman talagang walk-in na nagpapa-enroll sa PhilHealth. Napaka-konti. Yung mga nagpapa-enroll ng PhilHealth, either employee ka yeah. or grupo kayo. And if you look at the pros and cons, vis-a-vis -vis the rental, do, walang yeah. pumupunta ng PhilHealth na magpa-reimburse ng gastusin. Honorable you Green. do it in the oh, hospital. Oh, Ma'am, Honorable Green, I don't think this is the time to debate on the rental policy of PhilHealth. You would have your own time in the board to discuss that. Uh, and Honorable Green, may I remind you of the time? Uh, maybe we can go to the last question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my last question is uh, this. Paulit-ulit po kasi, nung inaudit ang PhilHealth, paulit-ulit pong rason ng ginawa na ninakawan ko raw ng 10.6 billion ang PhilHealth at nilipat sa DOH. For the record, Mr. Chair, that is a big lie. But this lie was made because there was collusion during that time. Because the officers of PhilHealth told me na uubos ang pondo dahil hindi sila binabayaran ng DBM. So I went to DBM very proud, asking for the payment. Nagagalit na nga ako, sabi ko, bayaran niyo yung PhilHealth. To my surprise, on the third meeting, para po akong binuhusan ng boiling water. Nanliit po ako at nahiya ako sa sarili ko. Because DBM told me front, Ma'am, pwede ka naming makausap. Wala kang mga kasama dito sa maliit na kwarto. And they showed me, Gustuhin man naming bayaran yung sinasabing 10 points. Uh, malaki po yun, eh, I think 30 billion. Itong mga iba, hindi ito totoong miyembro. At ito yung pinapabayaran ng miyembro para i-justify yung 10.6 billion because it's there as a program fund. Laking gulat ko nung makita ko that the list of members there are existing members. 
Ipig sabihin, miyembro na, ginawa pa ulit na miyembro. Binago-bago lang yung mga pangalan. This is the worst thing. They carve out the names of the dependents of PhilHealth members. Ibig sabihin, kung si Congressman Mike Defensor, meron siyang akasawa, Mrs. Danica Fernandez, example lang po yan. Ay hindi, Defensor mag-asawa pala, dapat pareho yung apelido, sorry. So, yung mag-asawa, meron yung mga anak. At yung mga anak, miyembro ng PhilHealth kasi anak nila. Tinang kinuha yung mga pangalan ng mga anak o kinuha yung mga pangalan ng mga asawa at nire-enroll. Ano po ang direksyon nun? Gusto lang kunin ang pera sa DBM, but there will be no new enrollments, no new members, because they just want to get the money para pagtakpan yung mga nawawalang pera sa PhilHealth. Honorable Green. And lastly, Mr. Chair, I would very much like to initiate again reforms in PhilHealth. So if the Honorable Officers of PhilHealth here can bring out all the reforms we did, put it back, do not deceive the members of the board, do not deceive the PhilHealth President. Dahil paulit-ulit po ito na nangyayari. This is worse than a pandemic because the pandemic comes every 100 years. Sa inyo, every time may bagong na-appoint, dinideceive nyo. Mr. Chair, I had two very important proposals to cleanse PhilHealth. And almost all of you here are aware of that. First, individual enrollment. Pagkapanganak, miyembro. Pag namatay, tanggal sa lista. Meron naman tayong National Statistic Authority eh. Pwedeng mas mababa ang premium. That's why we incorporated that in the 2017 proposed budget. I was the one who defended the PhilHealth budget for 2017. Kaya yan lumaki. Because computed doon individual membership. When I left, they pretended it was forgotten. Kasi ang totoo lang, there is a study in PhilHealth, marami yung hindi enrolled. Kasi kapag ikaw e minor at naging sobra ka na at 21 years old, natatanggal ka na dun sa membership ng magulang mo. Pagka ako e member dahil dependent ako ng asawa ko, nawalan ng trabaho yung asawa ko, wala na rin akong membership. So let's do it individual para mawala yung mga pangalan dyan na hindi totoong tao. Or mga totoong tao pero ginawan ng pangalan dalawang beses, tatlong beses, limang beses. Next, you have to outsource your legal office and your finance department should be independently seen. IT? Yes. It has been always a problem. But most of it is intentional. When we tried to automate feel health, kaliwat kana na bugbog ang suntat suntok ang natanggap ko. Bottom line is this: since 2001, I was not yet in Congress. I stood up and fought against cataract fraud, citing the collusion between Philippine Postal Office and some officers of feel health. Nagkaroon ng Seacrest Report. It is a Bible indicating how fraud is being done. Unfortunately, all of the copies are missing up to this point of time. That study was commissioned by DOH in the early 2000s. Nagkaroon ng reforms noong 2004, nawala ulit. Binalik yung reforms ng 2006, nawala ulit. Binalik ng reforms ng 2014 and 15, nawala ulit. It will always be a repeated cycle. Talking about universal health care law, Mr. Chair, napakaganda ng batas na ito. But that will lead us to nowhere. If the people who has been continuously deceiving the minds of those who does not understand health financing, wala tayong mapupuntahan. Kaya ang tanong ko, Dr. Ish, you Formal have been Green. in PhilHealth for May 21 I years. You, we have a curfew. Yes, Mr. Chair. Did you ever do cash advance refund for Yolanda? Kasi yan ang palagi niyong reason.
Okay. May cash Carison. advance po ba sa Yolanda? Yung ginagawa natin ngayon sa IRM. COVID, sa IRM. May IRM din po in 2013 for the Yolanda. May cash advance po. How did we... Ang sinasabi nyo kasi, nag-IRM kayo kasi ginaganawa na yan dati pa. By the term alone, interim reimbursement mechanism. Cash advance is never a mode of payment in any insurance facility. It is not a mechanism of payment in field health. I am 2,000% sure of that. So ngayon, ba't nyo sinasabi na meron ng IRM dati? Nagkaroon ba ng precedence? Was there ever a cash advance released during calamities? Mr. Chair, I don't think we will get the right answers. I just do hope that we will all have the conscience to cleanse Phil Health. I rest my case. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Honorable Garin. I think it's very clear yung pinapoint out nyo dun sa cash advance. Uh, wala naman ganun. But it's called the IRM dati. But it was not a cash advance. So, uh, we just have a manifestation from our members in Zoom. The, our Deputy Speaker, uh, Ferdi Hernandez, Deputy Speaker Hernandez, is recognized. Nandiyan pa ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, go ahead, Deputy Speaker yes, Hernandez. Uh, Maganda gabi po, Mr. Chair. Uh, just, I would like to make a short mani uh, manifestation. Because earlier during uh, the hearing, medyo lumabas yung name ng uh, SPMC, no? yung Southern Philippines Medical Center. And uh, parang it created an impression that uh, it's getting preferential treatment. No? May favoritism. At bakit yung SPMC located in Davao City, Region 11, eh, nagkaroon ng isa sa pinakamalaking claims no, sa PhilHealth. Parang lumalabas, uh, napapabura nito, and uh, bakit uh, SPMC is getting that amount compared to other hospitals that are popular in name? Siguro for the information of everyone, no, kailangan lang natin makorrect yung impression. That uh, SPMC located in Davao, uh, at saka yung Tagum Medical in, in Tagum City, our major hospital, government hospitals po ito, no? Yung SPMC, eh, I think it's one of the biggest government hospitals in the country. May bed capacity ito ng 1,500 and uh, more than 3,600 ang personal nito. And not only general hospital ito, Marami ditong uh, specialty uh, healthcare services that they offer. No, meron ditong um, the Heart Institute, Cancer Institute, Intensive uh, Care Complex, yung uh, Women and Newborn Institute, Orthopedic uh, Intensive Care Complex. In fact, it has the biggest uh, hemodialysis center with 65 chairs, no? So I'm from Region 11, and most of the Mindanaoans really rely on SPMC because uh, they cater to uh, yung mga medyo complicated na sakit at uh, they provide good service, no? Um, uh, very, very accommodating yung SPMC, especially Mindanaoans. So hindi lang ako nag-cater yan sa Region 12. Ako from Region 11, we rely on SPMC na as a regional hospital. Although hindi namin regional hospital, but most of the people in Region 12 na nangangailangan ng tulong, uh, health services go to SPMC. And the same, siguro I can speak with other regions na malapit sa, sa Davao, eh, talagang very reliable yung SPMC. You know, Deputy people Speaker cannot afford to go to Manila Hernandez. if you have cancer. Deputy Speaker Hernandez. You can do heart surgery in SPMC. No? Deputy so, Speaker Hernandez. Mr. Chair. Yeah, mabilis lang po. Dagdag ko lang sa sinabi nyo, nung nagsimula po ang COVID, limang hospital po ang designated. Vicente Soto for the Visayas, Southern Philippines for Mindanao, in fact for Luzon and NCR, PGH, Lung Center, and National Kidney. 
Kaya isa lang po sa Mindanao ang binigyan ng uh, parang sub-laboratory for COVID, yan pong Southern Philippines. And I agree with you. Uh, in fact, sa Visayas, Vicente Soto lang po ang nabigyan nila. Uh, Deputy Speaker Hernandez. Tama po yan. In fact, yung, kung, kung, kung titignan mo, uh, in one year, ang patients na pupunta sa SPM, SPMC, more than 76,000. Hindi kasama dyan yung 500,000 na outpatient. So, you could just imagine, uh, dahil ito ay sa Davao, ay talagang pinupuntahan ito ng karamihan, gusto humingi ng tulong, and very accommodating sila. In fact, kung titignan mo sa PhilHealth, isa sa pinakamalaking income yung SPMC, amounting to more than 1.2 billion ang, in, ang income niyan. Kaya if you look at the average ng uh, IR, IRM niya, eh, talagang mataas dahil talagang one of the most reliable government hospital in Mindanao. And uh, they cater to all Mindanaoans. So yun lang Mr. Chair, para kasi parang nagkakaroon ng malisya dahil kung located sa Davao eh. Para kasi nila napapaburan. Hindi po, ako, I'm not from Davao, but uh, most of the officials from LGUs and uh, yung mga kongresista pagdating sa pasyente na talagang complicated at saka talagang kailangan ng special treatment, we always refer it to SPMC. Ganun po kalaki ang tulong na SPMC, pati yung tagong medical sa mga Mindanawan. So, that's all, Mr. Mr. Chair. Chair. Maraming salamat po. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so Chair. much, uh, Depu mm. Deputy Speaker Ferdinand Hernandez, may Mr. I first Chair, recognize sentence, uh, uh, Deputy Speaker uh, Dan Mr. Fernandez. Mr. Chairman, that's the reason why parang uh, itong computation po ninyo, no, on how do you uh, arrive para doon sa distribution po natin sa IRM, parang hindi po siya nagbabalance, eh. Ano? Uh, ito pong uh, average reimbursement per day nyo na minumultiply nyo sa number of days covered. Pag binalansi po natin dito kanina, I was listening to uh, Congresswoman Kim Boy. And now, ngayon nga, ngayon ko lang na-realize, Mr. Chairman, that sa Visayas at Mindanao ay tigisa rin lang. So, parang yung computation ninyo ay mali. And that's the reason why, Mr. Chairman, we need a further um, computation para makita natin kung itong ginawa nilang formulasyon on how to arrive on the IRM fund is really correct or meron silang pinapaboran ng mga ospital. So, if we find out na ang computation ito na binigay po ninyo sa amin base sa submission ninyo dito sa mga nakareceive ng IRM at ginamit natin tong computation na to, eh, talaga niloloko tayo ng pill health, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, I think, Mr. Chair, uh, we need a further um, analysis on this uh, computation in relation doon sa mga ospital na nakareceive ng IRM. And in that case, Mr. Chairman, malalaman po natin kung tama yung distribution nila according sa formulation. Thank you, Deputy Speaker Fernandez. Honorable Garin. Mr. Chair, in relation to the Southern Philippines Medical Center, I was Secretary of Health for one year and five months. Sa experience ko po, one of the most efficient organized hospitals in our country is Southern Philippines Medical Center. It is highly comparable to many private institutions in Metro Manila. Bakit po marami silang pasyente? Dahil ito po ang naging mukha ng ideal government hospital wherein even the private patients and even the private hospitals all over Mindanao refers to that hospital. So in fairness, Mr. Chair, I would agree that we have to look at IRM as a mechanism that can be abused. But if you look at SPMC or the Southern Philippines Medical Center, they have been a consistent top-notcher in field health funds because they have exemplified and perfected the mandate by which they actually get their earnings from field health, reinvest it for further services, and make it a premier hospital in the whole of Mindanao. They have PET scan, they have all the services that every Mindawanon would always aspire, unlike before that they have to fly to Manila. Bottom line is, SPMC made possible every health service available in Manila, 
has been made available in Mindanao because of SPMC. And in my one year with PhilHealth, I have never encountered any, any, any suspicion or report related to fraud and related to SPMC. That's for the record, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, uh, our Senior Deputy Minority Floor Leader, the Honorable Garin. Uh, may I now recognize the Honorable... The Honorable Gasataya is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, at sa lahat ng mga kasama natin. Uh, Mr. Chair, I know it's uh, quite late, no? so instead of uh, asking some questions to feel health, may I just make a very brief uh, manifestation, uh, Mr. Chair, in line with the uh, IRM, uh, just bring to the attention of uh, the central office. Uh, in Bacolod City, uh, Honorable Chair, we have a regional hospital. No? This is the Corazon Luxin Muntilibano Memorial Regional Hospital, uh, Honorable Chair. Since uh, March up to the present, uh, this hospital caters to moderate as well as severe cases of uh, COVID-19. Last March 18, Honorable Chair, they signed a they sent a letter of intent addressed to the Central Office of PhilHealth, and last July 7 signed a memorandum of agreement no, uh, between PhilHealth and uh, the said regional hospital. This was endorsed by the regional office to the central office. But uh, when I look at the records of PhilHealth from their website, medyo nahirapan po akong hanapin yung pangalan ng hospital na nabigyan ng, na, na release ng uh, IRM last July 31. At present, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, just today, no, uh, the hospital has uh, 32 uh, cases uh, in its COVID ward, 20 are positive and 12 are waiting for results. Uh, the hospital has 29 uh, health personnel who became positive with COVID-19, 8 doctors, 4 nurses, and 17 non-medical staff. Since March until July 11, they already handled 118 uh, COVID-19 patients, uh, Honorable Chair. So dito makikita natin that this uh, government hospital uh, kailangan ng tulong uh, in terms of uh, IRM. So we don't understand no, uh, the central office of uh, PhilHealth kung bakit sa lahat ng mga hospitals sa buong Western Visayas, isa lang yung nabigyan nila at the rest hindi po nakatanggap kasama na po dito yung regional hospital po dito sa lungsod ng Bacolod. So I hope that uh, in the next uh, hearing, uh, Honorable Chair, PhilHealth can come up with a clear policy kung sino ba yung dapat unahin. We have to understand that in the first phase, uh, there are a lot of cases in MCR. But right now, mataas na rin po yung cases namin dito sa Western Visayas. And just a brief manifestation, Honorable Chair, earlier in the hearing, the Honorable Chair Alvarado mentioned that uh, the said hospital has a collectibles to fill out about 134.6 million pesos. Last Monday, I was informed because I wrote a letter to PhilHealth that they are now reconciling the claims between PhilHealth and the uh, Corazon Luxin Montilibano Memorial Juno Hospital. So hopefully that can be addressed because this uh, government hospital in Bacolod City, this regional hospital, really needs the funding to continue its operation as well as its molecular laboratory, Mr. Chair. So maraming salamat po at magandang gabi sa lahat. Uh, Dr. Vargas, I joined the Honorable Gasataya with this demand. Hindi to request, it is a demand. Kasi po ang sabi ninyo, nakita ko kayo sa Senate hearing, ang sinasabi ninyo, eh hindi kasi nag-submit yung uh, director sa Region 6. Tama po ba? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I think that was the statement of our uh, president then. Okay, so General Morales was the one who said that. Ngayon po, kung ang criteria lang naman is yung services plus the days, no, minultiply ninyo, eh bakit po ang Region 6, particularly ang Iloilo, ay eh na-deprive, which is my home province, ay eh na-deprive din ng pondo kung hindi pala favoritism to at may formula tayo? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, I will check on what happened to the uh, 
MOA or I mean the requests sent, especially for a Region 6 and uh, retail report on this. Thank you so much. Uh, on Monday, uh, uh, Dr. Vargas, kindly please give us an update on this. I joined the Honorable Gasataya on his demand that Region 6 should be given its proper uh, attention as regards COVID. Kailangan po naman, kung ang sabi natin may formula, wala po sanang palakasan kung sino yung magsasubmit, kung sino yung gagawa. Kung hindi, immediately, lahat ng ospital merong kagad recognition based particularly po ah, ang public hospitals na mabigyan ng pagtulong dito sa problema ng COVID. So, Honorable Dan? Mr. Chair, uh, itong in, ano lang, ah, in relation to what uh, you have said, no? <clears throat> yung average reimbursement per day ng hospital, di ba? Correct, uh, Mr. Pargas? Historical claims po. Ito po yung kinukuha natin sa mga hospital, di ba? Yung average reimbursement per day. Ang uh, nag-i-issue nitong uh, AR... PD ay binibase nyo doon sa hospital. Is that right? Base po natin doon sa data po natin. Data na nanggaling sa hospital? Uh, ito po ay uh, doon binibase po natin especially po doon sa amount ng ibinayad po natin. Plus yun po mga... Have you submitted that uh, Mr. Fargas sa uh, committee na ito? Yung pong mga ARPD? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Meron tayo. Uh, we have, Mr. Chairman. Deputy Speaker Fernandez, yung pong uh, circular nila ng IRM, meron pong sinabmit. But as to the particular hospital, wala po. Well, uh, what I'm trying to say, Mr. Chairman, para makompute natin kung tama yung uh, ginagawa nilang formulasyon, we need to find out the specific uh, average uh, reimbursement per day ng bawat uh, HEIs. At doon sa rap, at i-multiply natin to doon sa number of days covered. Para makita natin kung yung distribution niyo ng uh, IRM na nakalagay dito sa inyong uh, pinadala. Actually ito galing to sa Senado eh. Kinunan ko lang sa t sa TV to eh. Para makita ko yung mga distribution kahapon. Di ba copy of, of this yung um, sinasabi ni uh, Mr. Lim siya ako kanina that uh, as of July 21 Nakaka-almost how much na tayo sa release ng IRM? Ilan na? As of July 21, ilan na nare-release natin sa IRM? 14, 14, 14 billion. 97 billion, Your Honor. 14 billion. Tapos ang, uh, so ngayon, atong uh, 14 billion ito is scattered to how many hospitals? Uh, that is, uh, Your Honor, 711 hospitals, Your Honor. 700, Facilities. 711 hospitals. Facilities, Your Honor. No, no, no. What's that? Facilities, facilities. Facilities, okay. Can you give us, and, andyan pa yung copy nyo? Can you give us now yung copy nung uh, 14 billion tapos uh, 700 plus facilities na nakatanggap ng, I, ng IRM? At based dito sa ginagawa po ninyong computation, we will try to compute kung talagang tama yung distribution nyo or meron kayong ginawang uh, favoritism. Kasi kung sa formulation nyo, hindi nagtama yung pagre-release nyo ng IRM, eh, kitang-kita na, Mr. Chairman, that meron kayong pinapaboran. Can you kindly give us, Mr. Chairman? Kasi you have submitted this to uh, the Senate, eh. Ito yung ginawa nyong presentation, eh. I saw it yesterday, eh. So I just... Mr. Took the Chair, picture. Mr. Chair, Your Honor, naibigay na daw ng ating uh, liaison sa, uh, sa committee po. Meron ba tayo? Uh, listahan po ng nabigyan ng IRM po. No, no, no. It's not the list, I think. It's not the list that uh, there, uh, Mr. Ang hinihingi ko, Mr. Chairman, ha, yung list ng mga... Uh, Mas lang siguro top uh, hospitals? Per... Hindi, kasi Mr. Chairman, para makita po natin kung yung uh, distribution na sinasabi po nila sa lahat ng mga facilities is nagtatama dun sa formulation nila. Kasi nga, katulad niyan, sa Visaya, sa Mindanao, tigitigisa lamang pala, ah, nabigyan. Tapos, meron dito, ang dami sa NCR. Anda well, hindi natin kinu-question na NCR malaki. But, unfortunately, kung hindi tama yung, yung uh, pagdidistribute according sa inyong formulation, ibig sabihin, there's something wrong. Mr. Chairman. Kaya nga, gusto ko sana makuha ngayon yung as of July 21, na sinabmit ninyo sa Senado 
at uh, wala pa po kaming kopya with corresponding amount. Ayan, oh, makikita nyo, yung nga kanina sinasabi ko na level 1, binigyan nyo ng mga 45 million. Yung panay... Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think dito makikita natin kung talagang uh, niloloko nila ang, uh, ang uh, committee na to with regards dun sa formulation in relation to the releases sa IRM. Meron po uh, ba? Deputy, Fern Deputy Speaker uh, Fernandez, meron po silang binigay sa atin ang listahan, level 1, level 2, and level 3. Uh, no, it's a long list. Meron po silang mahabang listahan, level 1, level 2, level 3, nakalagay po doon yung pondo. Pero as to the formula for each hospital, wala na po doon. So, may we know in particular ano po yung gusto nyo? Ang hinihingi ko po, Mr. Chairman, aside from that, is the uh, average reimbursement per day. Of all the hospitals? Of all the hospitals. How many hospitals are part of the IRM? For example, for example lang, uh, medical city, o magkano yung average reimbursement per day doon? Then, multiply mo doon sa number ng days covered. Eh, tama po, tama po, Honorable uh, Deputy mm. Speaker Fernandez. Pero ang ibig ko sabihin yan, how many hospitals do we have in IRM? 700? Sir Chair, the, the released IRM... No, no, no. How many hospitals identified under IRM? Uh, 5,000 plus, I think, po. For all the facilities. Yes, you have 5,000, but you have released only 729, if I'm not mistaken. 700 what? As to date, 711. 711. 14 billion na i-distribute natin doon sa 711. Yes po. At ang computation ninyo billion. is based on the average reimbursement per day multiply sa number, days of co the number, day, number of days covered. So yun ang gusto namin makita. Yung average reimbursement per day sa bawat hospital para ma para malaman po natin kung tama itong ginawa niyong formulation. So, meron ba kayong kopya ngayon ng average reimbursement per day? Can you kindly submit it to us, uh, Mr. Chairman? At uh, nasa ganun po ay makompute natin pagdating po ng Monday, mabalansi po natin to kung tama po yung ginawa nila, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Phil Health is uh, requested to submit uh, those. Ito nga, Mr. Chairman, ha, yung average reimbursement per day ng bawat hospital at saka yung number of days covered. Okay. Okay. So, may I continue, Mr. Chairman? May I continue? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, tapos na po ba tayo sa case rate, Mr. Chairman? Tapos na. Well, uh, technically we are, uh, pero siguro pwede pang ituloy sa, kasi ang ano ko, Deputy Speaker Fernandez, yung curfew natin, uh, mayroon din mga nasa Zoom yeah. na maaaring maipit. I, so, I Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, I know, napagod na rin ang Chairman. Hindi pa tayo kumakain at tayo mga resource speakers na nandito po natin. Gusto niyo po bang ituloy o pagod na po kayo? Gusto niyo po bang magpahinga na? You can take a leave of absence kung uh, gusto po ninyo. <laughs> kung gusto nyo. Uh, well, anyway, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, sige, I will not uh, continue anymore my interpolation on the second issue that we are going to tackle sana. No? Ang susunod po natin sana itatakel ay tungkol na po sa IRM, sa IT, sa okay. financial management, which I'll be uh, tackling on the next uh, hearing. Deputy so, Speaker Fernandez, in, on Monday, our next hearing, you will be the first one. Nine okay. o'clock. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chairman. And I waited like seven hours staying here with you. And I don't regret it. Dahil nga po, marami po tayong nadiskubre. At uh, sana po lamang uh, yung mga iimbita natin sa susunod, uh, Mr. Chairman, ay uh, please uh, put a strong uh, words on the invitation para na sa ganun po ay uh, hindi sila magdadahilan. Kung meron pa dah silang dahilan, pakita po yung medical certificate and we will validate na yung kanilang med med medical certificate is really true. Para na sa ganun, hindi po nagdadahilan yung iba natin iniimbitahan. So, yun lamang po, Mr. Chairman, at um, maraming maraming po salamat sa lahat ng ating mga resource speaker at sa iyo po, Mr. Chairman, maraming po salamat sa pagbibigay mo ng pagkakataon na maliwanagan kahit uh, sa ngayon po ay malabo pa ang mga sitwasyon na dapat po natin karapin. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman, at magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Thank you so much, Deputy Speaker Fernandez. Uh, una po sa lahat, nais ko magpasalamat sa lahat ng guests natin dito. Uh, para po sa akin, no, isang malaking indikasyon na kahit pa paano yung pagpunta nyo dito ay pagpapakita ng pagpapatotoo ninyo dun sa sitwasyon ng PhilHealth 
at yung sinasabi yung mga naging problema nung nakaraan. In fact, kanina ho, nung nagsabi kayo na pipirma kayo ng waiver doon sa AMLAC, ay napakalaking bagay po yan. At I think uh, very well appreciated, hindi lamang namin, kundi ng buong bansa. Uh, in the next hearing ho, uh, Dr. Pargas, if I may request, uh, or Mr. Limsyako, yung record po ng Cardinal Santos doon sa compromise agreement ninyo, hindi po ito yung recent, sometime I think in 2011, at saka po yung perpetual socor. etong perpetual socor, may kaso pa rin ito hanggang sa ngayon at nakasama rin siya sa IRM. Uh, I just want to get the documents on this uh, for our next hearing on the all-case rates issue also. Uh, sa susunod po na hearing, ang itetake up po natin ay yung interim reimbursement mechanism, yung fillet finance, yung pondo po ng fillet which is related at pwede na po din natin pumasok doon sa IT, yung tatlong topics na yon on Monday. Uh, we would like to thank the members of the board, ma'am. Thank you po sa pagpunta nyo dito. And also our officers who are here right now, uh, nandito po sa plenary at nung nandito sa atin din sa Zoom. I'd like to thank also the members of this committee, the Public uh, Accounts Committee, and the members of the Good Government and Public Accountability. And of course, our Deputy Speaker, Dan Fernandez, for staying with us tonight. Ang uh, susunod po nating hearing Monday, 9 a.m. And we will proceed with the topic of IRM, uh, Philat Finance, and the IT uh, procurement. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. And we will temporarily suspend the session until Monday, 9 a.m.